just let me ask you one thing. What? Well, have you ever thought about taking in a lodger before? Well, no. Then why now? Carmel's different. I mean, we know the girl. She gets on well with the kids. And she makes herself very useful about the house. So she's done a bit of babysitting for you now and again. I take it you think I'm out of my mind even thinking about it. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it's going to take a fair bit of getting used to. I mean, your house isn't going to be your own again for a start. Well, it won't be forever, will it? Just till Carmel finds herself somewhere else. Look, I'm not saying that you're doing the wrong thing. I mean, I don't even know the girl. I mean, I'm just acting as devil's advocate. Just make sure you've thought about it before you take the plunge. I have. I reckon it's got a lot going for it. And Martin? He's thinking about it. Oh, so it's not just me you're trying to convince. If you're going through to it back, you could knock kettle on. Oh, right. You'll not be in for your tea tonight, right? Right, yeah. I'm going out with Wayne. He's picking me up about four. We'll probably go for a pizza. Oh, and uh, then there's a bit of a do on at the supporters club later. Well, he certainly knows how to treat a girl. Oh, yeah, he does. Do you know when he's really looking forward to tonight and all? He always likes meeting the fans when he's had a good game. He scored twice on Saturday. Did he now? Doesn't surprise me. He's not a bad-looking lad. No. <laughs> well, there. I'll go and see it at Kettle. Yes, Jacko? I think we're Raquel we're looking for. She'll be back through in a minute. You don't know if she's got out special on tonight, do you? You see, we me babysitting our Tom the other night. I missed my night off and I was wondering whether she might do us a swap. No chance. She's off out with God's gift of football. Oh, great. What she sees in him, you know, I'll never know. Well, I'm not complaining. Just the mention of his name and her face lights up like the sun's just come out. Now, that's good for business. Punters like to be greeted by a set of gleaming teeth when they walk through that front door. Oh, well, if that's all I've got to do to get in the boss's good boots, I'll put mine in a pipe pot and stick them on the bar, come on, return. This is a pleasant surprise. I'm not here to see you. Oh? Mark, I'm taking him to the dentist. It's the only time I could get an appointment. Oh, yes, yes, he did mention it, in case he's a few minutes late getting by. I'm, uh, I'm glad I bumped into you, though. It'll save me a phone call. Oh? Look, about last night. I don't want you to get the idea it, it was anything you'd said or done. Sorry? Not wanting to go to the rover's return. No? Honestly, it was a lovely meal. Great evening. Um, and when you suggested that we uh, we call in on the way home, well, that sounded fine. But but then I thought, well, that's not what the evening was about, really. Not for me. It was about you and me, just the two of us. That's the way I wanted it to end. I'm sorry if that sounds ridiculous. Ridiculous? No, I'm flattered, but... Um... I had hoped you might have felt the same. Well, yes, of course I did. Well, now it's my turn. Sorry, not with you. Have you anything planned for tomorrow evening? Tomorrow? Uh, no, no, I haven't. Good. Then perhaps you'll let me do the entertaining. Oh, there's no need, really. I'm not that bad a cook, honestly. Your place, you mean? About seven. Oh, it'll be very nice. I look forward to it. <laughs> oh, hello, Mark. Sure. But don't look so miserable. It's just a check-up. No. About seven. Okay. Of Bye. No, there we are. Do you want, lads? Thanks very much. Okay, though. No. How much do I owe you? Oh, don't worry about it, mate. You've got the beer and like not you'll be getting another one in a minute. Unless, of course, you're planning making that last all lunchtime. No, but honest to God, Dougie, I mean, I can't complain. You know, a few months ago, things were awful bad, so they were desperate. I mean, now I'm working, Steve's working, Andy's away at university. You know? How's it going on? Has it settled then? Sorry, look. Young Andy. I mean, he's bound to find it a shock to his system. He's got nobody around fetching and carrying for him now. Pally, don't you worry about Andy. He's managing. He'll be having the time of his life through him. Well. Also keeps in touch, then, does he? Not at all. We've had one phone call in a month. He's obviously found better things to do and worry about his own mind. Uh, <laughs> and who can blame him? <laughs> right, Blue Eyes, when you're ready. Who are you talking to me? Two pints, please, love. Stop looking at me like that. Like what? I was only admiring two of Newton and Ridley's best assets. <laughs> I'm not having any of that, you mucky devil. Hey, now, come on. Don't tell me no one's ever told you what beautiful eyes you've got. Oh, see? <laughs> well, how was it happened? There was uh, this photographer fella. First thing he noticed about me. Yeah, I bet. Fancy you notice anything like that. Uh... Yes, Sammy! That was too pretty. Too icy 
the first one on the line. Uh, now, come on, you two. Calm down, will you? Oh, come on, then. Give us a ball while I'm here. Oh, what a player, eh? Can you go in? I can't, can I? I've told you I've got some work to do. Oh, I've just come out to tell you I'm nipping over the road to the shop. All right? Go on, five minutes. I haven't got time, have I? I'll see you. Nicky reckons you're a big mate of Wayne Farrell. <laughs> oh, does he now? Oh, go on, tell him. You drink from the Rovers, don't you? Go on, tell him, Martin. Wayne Farrell, me and him are like that. I mean, you know, who do you think taught him everything he knows? Right, I'll see you. We you get me his autograph next time you see him, please? Yeah, of course we will, won't you, Martin? It's all right, no problem. Now, can I go? See, he told you. Yes! That was two! She'll not be a minute, she's just getting ready. Oh, thanks. I've, uh, I've just brewed, if you fancy a cup. Uh, no, thanks, I'm fine. Don't suppose there'd be much point in offering you anything stronger? Well, not just yet. But, you know, thanks all the same. Been training? Yeah, this morning. Then I spent the last hour with the physio. Problem? Oh, no, no, no. She uh, always does a session on Monday afternoons. You know, iron out the aches. She? Debbie. She's very good, you know. I bet she is. Want a hand, does she? Beats pulling pints any day of the week. Yeah. She knows what she's doing, does Debbie? I'd know what I was doing and all. Believe you, Miko. Well, she's got a degree, you know. Degree? I knew more about fellas' bodies by the time I was 18 than she'll ever know in her lifetime. Bye, I talk about a Bobby's job. <laughs> I don't think she sees it that way. Nor are you. You spend an hour and a half on Saturday afternoon running round a football field. And then you spend the rest of the week getting the treatment from the likes of Debbie. Well, it is a bit more demanding than that. Oh, I was forgetting. Raquel. Oh, somebody talking about me. No, love. Oh, yeah. I'm just saying what a cushy number crack shot Charlie has got. Well, it's not that cushy. It's a very physical game, you know. You should see them when they come off the field. The black and blue they are. Spend more time on a treatment table than they do on the field these days. Yeah, so I've been hearing. Oh, you won't believe the time I've had to give him a rub down of a Saturday night. <laughs> Any road, how do I look? Oh, yeah, great. Not planning on coming back tonight, then? Yeah, of course I am. I'm just taking a few things, just in case. Oh, uh... Well, in case it goes on a bit, you know, supporters club do. I mean, I could miss my last bus or something. Well, we'll not be fetching you back, then. Well, he might have a drink, you know. Yeah, I know. I think I've got the picture. Anyway, enjoy yourself, lad. Yeah, we will. Right, then. Yep, yeah, ready when you are. Right. La, la, la. See you later. I'm in the morning. Oh. Have a kill. Oh, hiya, Martin. All right. Yeah? <laughs> well, it wasn't you I wanted, really. It was Wayne. What, me? Yeah. Uh, you could do us a favour, could you? It'll only take you a minute. Yeah, OK, no problem. Yeah? All right. Won't be long. Oh, you might as well come. Right. Have you noticed that old one sticks? Yeah, it's a bit of a nuisance. Oh! Hello. Now, what can we do for you? Now, there's an invitation, if ever I heard one. But for now, I'll just make do with a box of tea bags. Over there. I'll get them. Ta. So what time do you finish? Six. Not that it's out to you. Yeah, it must be fate. So do I. Oh, good for you. The offer's still open if you fancy a drink, you know. Well, you know where to get hold of me if you change your mind. Ta-da. Ta-da. See ya. I know where I'd like to get hold of Hey, you're a married woman, remember? Oh, come on. Listen, I'm skint, but it doesn't stop me looking in shop windows, does it, eh? Anyway, you're not. What? A married woman. D he's not my type. He is mine. I don't mind telling you. Well, I can see that. I mean, he's a fella, isn't he? Oh, <laughs> Deirdre! <laughs> um, hold it, lads. What? I've brought someone to meet you, haven't I? Me? Yeah. Oh, Wayne Farrell! Right, <laughs> come on, then, if you want his autograph. Yeah, there's a pad and, yeah, there's a pad and pen there. Come on, come on, hurry up, he's a busy lad. There you are. Oh, <laughs> you'll get yourself filthy. We're supposed to be off out. All right, I'm coming. Yes, <laughs> there you go. You're welcome. Put it down. Come on, I'm having a game of football. Not every Ray. day you see him, is it? Come on. Come on. Come on. 
Come on, then. Come on, where's your energy? Come on. Oh, he's easy now. Grown ups are playing now. Oh, Wayne, careful. You'll be filthy. Now, come on, that was completely unintentional. It can't be. Oh, Martin. Get him up. Get him up. It's all right. It's all right. Oh, well, just stand on it. Oh, stand this is all your fault, isn't it? Wayne, let's just have a look at it, will you? I am a nurse. Look, it'll be all right. I'll get the club doctor to have a look at yeah, it. Yeah, but I might be able to do something temporary for you. Don't you think you've done enough for one afternoon, eh? <laughs> We're supposed to be going to a disco tonight. All right, suit yourself, Raquel. Is it bad? Oh, he'll get over it, won't he? They're all the same, just a bunch of big soft kids. Now, if you two don't mind, I've got some work to do. Come on, chop, chop. There we are, Lou. Thanks very much. Thank you. Here we are. Bye. You can go if you want. I can finish off here. Yeah, it's all right. Ted, it won't be home for another hour yet. Oh, well, suit yourself. I just thought you might want to go and get him something special for his tea. Try and bring a smile back to them chubby chops of his. <sighs> Look, if you're under the impression that Derek doesn't like this job... Oh, come on, Mavis. I've seen what he's like when he comes home. Well, it's not the job that's getting him down. It's this awful council of pots that he's working for. I mean, you can't tell me that he didn't know before last night that Derek was going to have to work late. No. But don't worry, love. I mean, it's early days. I'm sure when Derek finds his feet, he'll be more than a match for Councillor Potts. Ah, there you are, Mr Wilton. Look, are you finished in here? I have finished in here. What about this lot? What about it? Well, it all needs clearing out, doesn't it? These are wall charts. I still know what they are, Mr Wilton. Well, they might be needed. And where would they be if they were? On the wall. Well, they have been for several weeks. Look, you can see where they've been. You'll have to get that lot down. What, tonight? When do you propose to do it? Tomorrow, in the middle of the first period? Right, I'm off. I'll leave you to lock up. There's just the rest of this corridor to finish. I thought you were doing that. Oh, now, come on, Mr Wilton. What do you take me for, Superman? I've got a council meeting at half past seven. I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Good night. Uh, I thought someone not a million miles away was going to set this table. Well, it doesn't look like it to me. Okay. That's a good girl. You put them out the right, right way. All right. Hi. Hiya. You all right? Oh, yes. Mm. That's a nice surprise. Yeah. Get on the table when I get in. Finish it in the time, did you? Yeah. I don't suppose you've given any more thought to come. Uh, you? well, no, I haven't. Well, I've not had time. I've been up to my eyes in it. Oh. We'll talk about it later. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. Come on. Yes, love. Told you was here before. Uh, not now, Mickey. Your mum's had a hard day. Oh, who was here before? Only Wayne Farrell. Wayne Farrell? County striker. I know who he is. What was he doing here? Uh, he just called in to give uh, to give Mark, Mickey's mate, his uh, autograph. Yeah, we had a bit of a kick about, Farrell. You had a busy day. No, it was only for a couple of minutes. <laughs> clattered him. Uh, no, I didn't clatter him. He just went a bit of a knock, that's all. How much of a knock? Well, you know, these footballers are like good, and if you breathe on them, don't they? Uh, he'll be out there, sat this, slugging it out with the rest of them. <laughs> Better I'd be. Thanks a lot. How are you? So much. Feeling better than I Hey. Well, according to Beck, you're in the right mood this morning. Well, she didn't notice then, did she? Notice? She was thinking of putting bars up to stop you biting customers. Well, what do you expect? <laughs> I'm stood here working my fingers to the bone. Poor Betty there, bless her, in, in the back. He's, he's up to her eyes in it. While Madam, Madam, is swanning about like Lady Muck doing the washing. She is the boss, Jack. Not Bet, Raquel. She puts her hands in. Eh? Oh, she does that. Standing behind here looking like a Christmas tree, flashing her eyelashes. <laughs> Feel the drop down Bessie Street. What's brought this on all of a sudden? It's lost me £50 today. That's what's brought this on. How come? Well, oh, there's that bitty round here. I couldn't put my bet on, could I? Ten to one. Dead, sir. Romped up. I see. I didn't realise it was that serious. Go on. Mine's a pint if you're buying. Ben! How are you doing? Can't complain. When you're ready, Jack. Uh, bitter? 
Thanks. Hi, please, Jack. Well, I never thought I'd see you again. I thought you were going to Australia when you finished college. Australia? We'll have to wait. Something came up. Oh, I. Yeah, I'm in the music business now. Music? What the heck do you know about music? Oh, sight more now than I did when I first started. <coughs> Cheers. There you go. Uh, yeah, I'm running a group. Heard them at a university gig. Got talking to them. I reckon they might just have what it takes. I've had nothing better to do. And you looked me up to tell me that? No. We're playing uh, support at the electronic concert this month. And you're flogging tickets well. Thanks, Ben. If you would just shut up and listen for a minute, there might be something in it for you. Hey. We're running off some T-shirts to sell on the night. I'm all right for T-shirts and all. I'm not trying to sell them. I'm looking for someone to design them. Interested? I just said I'd go to the Rovers with Kev for an hour. Mm. All right, for some. It's only for an hour. Martin, we've got to talk. Hey. Carmel! <laughs> oh, aye, Carmel. We could manage. I know we could. And the extra money would come in useful. Well, I'm not saying it wouldn't. It takes a bit of getting used to, though, doesn't it? Idea of a lodger. Yeah, be forever, would it? Just till Carmel found herself somewhere more suitable. Oh, yeah, I know that. There's a big difference, you know, between her babysitting for us, stopping the odd night and being here all the time, fitting into our way of life. I mean, she needs some space for herself. And so do we. So you think it's a daft idea? No, no, I'm not saying that. I just reckon we should think very carefully about what we're letting ourselves in for. For all our sakes. Right, I'll see you. <laughs> and I'll not be late. <laughs> Sorry, Mavis, I really am. I thought I'd be home an hour ago. Oh, that's all right. Nothing's spoiled. Well, what kind of a day have you had? Don't ask. Oh, no, not again. Worse. He walked out again tonight, left me to it. Oh. Said he had another council meeting to attend to. And when he's there, all he does is criticise. Well, there. Oh, thank you. <laughs> mm. I know it doesn't sound much. Assistant caretaker, but... It's a very responsible job, and I feel I've got a lot to contribute. But the man won't listen to me. All he seems to do is to put me down. Well, perhaps if you tried to see things from his point of view. His point of well, view? Well, because yeah, he has been there a long number of years doing things his way, and you arrive on the scene full of enthusiasm, a fresh approach, new ideas. Well, there are plenty of those, but it's like talking to a brick wall. We're supposed to work as a team. Yeah, well, I'm sure you will, but he's probably just trying to make it clear who's top dog. Trying? <laughs> he succeeded in doing that from day one. The man's a bully. Well, all the more reason why you shouldn't let it get you down. Oh, you'll soon tire of his little game. It's just a question of time. <laughs> I'll go and get you tea. I thought you didn't fancy it. What? Coming in here tonight, or is there something you're keeping from me? If you must know, I've come in here to keep out of Tracy's way. Tracy? Yeah, Tracy. She's off out at eight. Till then, I thought it best to keep my head well down. Oh, dear. Now, what have you done to upset her? Me? Nothing. But if there's one thing worse than having a teenage daughter, it's having a teenage daughter in love, especially if it's a one-way traffic. Oh, dear. Oh, she'll get over it. But I just don't seem to be able to say the right thing at the moment. <laughs> so what do you reckon? You've got a deal. So when do you want it? Well, it's only in a couple of weeks. And there's a printing to organise. Like yesterday? Sooner, if you can. So who's doing your printing? That's something we've got to get sorted. Have you now? What does that mean? Well, I might just be able to do your deal there and all. Small Oh! Don't look now. So? So if you want me to make myself scarce? But you know, he looks even more tasty out of his bones. Look, you stay there. He won't bother me with you here. Ladies, so you've had the temptation <coughs> to irresistible after all, eh? Don't flatter yourself. Yes, Doc. Pipe, please, Jack. All right, so. And whatever those two are on. All right. Jim not showing his face tonight, then? No chance. A couple of pints, love. That's all we had, I swear. He can't stand the pace. <laughs> oh, I believe you. No, the trouble is, he's had no sleep for nearly 24 hours. They were out like a light when I left. If you are thinking of giving him a knock, just leave it for a couple of hours, eh? Oh, I'll not bother him tonight. I'll not be short of company. Oh, aye. Right. Very buggy. <laughs> and yourself, Jack. Oh, sorry, I'll bring him over. You don't mind, do you? It doesn't look as if we've got any choice, does it? 
Kom on, Martin. Put me out my misery. What is it? No. 12? No, 16. Double eight. Well, I hope you're very pleased with yourself. Hey. Been having a laugh with your mates, have you? Telling them all how Rambo Platt put Wayne Farrell in hospital. Uh, hospital? Raquel, what's up? He knows, showing off in front of them kids. Uh, hang on, Raquel. What's all this hospital business, eh? It was never a hospital case. Oh, no. Well, where do you think I've been all night? A furry land. What has happened? Well, Wayne went to see the club doctor, didn't he? Yeah. Sent him to the hospital for a checkup. Well, he's done something to a ligament or something. He could be out of the game for weeks. Well, I hope you're very proud of yourself. Raquel! <coughs> Aren't they? What are you doing here, son? What does it look like I'm doing here? Oh. Well, it's nice to see you. Oh, sorry, I'm a bit groggy. Having a bit of a kip. I've been working nights. Listen, sit down. I put the kettle on, make yourself at home. Your mum will be dead pleased to see you, so she will. Will she? Yeah, of course she will. Why didn't you give me a ring? I'd have come down to the station to pick you up. What time do you have to be back? Uh, I'm not going back, Dad. I've had that university up to here, all right? I'm not going back. There's nothing you can do that's going to make me, so do us a favour, Ian. Don't even try. Andy? Well, take care of yourself, won't you? Keep it rested. Oh, I'm sorry. But I feel responsible, though. I mean, it happened round here, didn't it? I mean, if you haven't come to see me... No. <laughs> no, I, I understand, honest. Yeah, but, well, look after yourself. <laughs> yeah, try. Ligaments. It's torn and spent all last night getting them strapped up. Did for my career, did that. Bondage? Ligaments. On your night's books, you know. Oh, well, it would happen now, wouldn't it? Just as me and Wayne were coming to an understanding. Well, there goes my love life up the swan, eh? <laughs> Again. How far do these ligaments stretch? Well, it's his manager, isn't it? It's confined Wayne to his digs, no visitors. Oh, blow that. Go and see him. Why, his manager, well, he won't want to see me, will he? Not after what's happened. No, love, what that meant was go and see Wayne, didn't you? Oh. I think I did. Yeah, well, how can I? Godzilla's on guard, isn't she? Uh, oh, I mean, I'm fed up. Godzilla? Wayne's landlady. Oh, I see. How come you know this lingo? What lingo? Raquel speak. Money to Vera. Dinner. Hi, Michelle. It's Andy. Is Paul about? No. No, I thought not. Um, no chance of contact in the college then. No. Right. Well, uh, what time are you going to be expecting her back? OK, well, tell her, give us a ring as soon as she gets in. <sighs> no, I'm back in Weatherfield now. She knows the number. All right, then. Cheers, Michelle. <coughs> Thanks a lot. Bye. Michelle, Paul was flat, mate. Andy, I've been working all night. I know. Do you know where Mum is, Dad? She's out, so I can get some shut eye. Only I've got a load of dirty washing here. <sighs> tell you what, you've a nerve, son. Why? What's up? I'm up. I was lying down. Yeah, I know, I'm sorry. But you'll sleep better in bed anyway, won't you? Alright, alright. I'll do that. Listen, are you serious about moving calmly? Well, I haven't asked her yet, but yes, I'm serious. Oh. Do you know, I never thought a daughter of mine would be employing a maid. Will she sleep below stairs? Under them, probably. <laughs> Look, it's not funny. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, lovely. It's chaos in our house in the morning. I mean, she'd be helping us and we'd be helping her. Unhappy at the nurse's home, you said. Was that because she couldn't take fellas back? No, oh, well, that would depress me, you know. No, look, forget I said anything. 
the woman in the house. What do you think, Audrey? Oh, she's hardly a woman now. Well, what is she then? She's a very nice girl. No, she's... She's more like a nun, really. She might be better off lodging with Ivy, then. <laughs> don't. 55, Mr Sutton. What price it is? I wasn't singling your fellow out, you know. He's no softer than the rest. Wayne was kicked, Mr Sugden. You'd be soft if Martin Platt kicked you. That's a feature of your modern athlete, you know. They never fit. Wayne's not an athlete, clever old. He's a footballer. Footballers run as jumpers. It makes no difference. A load of demics. Collection of pulled hamstrings and Hackley's tendons. You what? When was the last time this country fielded its best team for anything? You don't know, do you? No. No, because the best team is either in traction or it's got its arm in a sling. So, you run this place on your own then, Mrs Gilroy? I guess Elle. There's Jack O. And Raquel. Oh, Raquel, aye. No, I mean your name above the door, you know. Not many women have pubs. You'd be surprised what women get up to nowadays, Cock, since fellas have taught them how to read and add up. Hey, I'm not one of them chauvinists, you know. Good. You wouldn't last long round here if you were. No. Anyway, duty calls. I'll get back, Kev. Finish that cavalier. All right. I'll be over in a sec, Doug. I didn't buy him a drink for a very good reason. I don't agree with boozy lunch. <laughs> You've had plenty, haven't you? Uh, uh, working lunches, there is a difference. Fancies himself, I know that. Yeah. Oh, I get it. Knives out for Doug already, eh? No, he's got ladies' man written all over him. As long as it doesn't start interfering with his job, I don't care. Never interfered with yours, did it, man? <laughs> hey, let's have a bit of respect <laughs> from you. I mean, what would a new boy think if he hears you undermining the boss? Oh, no danger. I'm putting wise, don't worry. <laughs> Put the wind up him, you mean? Yeah, well, sort of. Well, don't. I want respect, not fear. Contrary to what people think, I like to be liked. <laughs> Why don't you go home, Dad? You look knackered. I'll tell you what, Steve. I felt like kicking him the whole way back to Sheffield, so I did. Yeah, yeah my mum wouldn't like that. I mean, he's no thought, no consideration. The radio is blurring. I mean, he's using the phone like his name was in the bill. Ringing Paul. I'm not trying to. Listen, I thought you were going to get your old man another pint. Yeah, well, I'd rather you went. Uh, yeah, well, it's better for Andy if I stay here, believe you me, because if I go home, I'll just lose my temper. Ah, <laughs> pint when you're ready, Pat. I'd rather you didn't. You what? I'm only advising you, so I'm not telling you. I'd rather you did it. Some kind of bother here, Stephen, or what? No. Settle down, Jim. Fancies it, look. Please. Just you remember, Michael. You employ him. He belongs to me, so he does. Jim. Leave it out, Dad. How long will he belong to you if he falls in the machinery this afternoon? And like I said, I was advising him. Someone's got to... No, wait a minute, Mike. Hey, go easy, Jim. Actually, uh, the pound was for me dad, Mr Baldwin. Oh, now you tell me. Yeah, well, you didn't ask. Clever, that, Steve. I'll remember it. Ready to blind it there, Jim? Yeah, thanks for going, Stan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, your man, I ought to watch his mouth. Sixty's a quid, and two makes five. Thanks, Rita. Jim was snoring his head off, so I took myself into town. Hey, there's not many about, so it's so near Christmas. People haven't got the money, have they? I oh, know the feeling. I've only been window shopping myself. Yeah. How are you coping with night shift? It's Jim that's on now, it's not Liz. It affects her, doesn't it? Does it? Take no notice she's being smutty. Am I? Yes, of course you are. You wanted to know if Liz's nights are cold and lonely. Do you? Do I, Eric? <laughs> are they? The one thing I never am in that house, Rita, is lonely. Worse luck. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it, love. No. Well, our Andy turned up last night. Oh. oh, you must be very proud of him making it to university. I was. I'm not so chuffed now he's made it back home. Had enough of it, he reckons. He's going back, though, isn't he? Oh, not according to him. We'll just have to wait and see, though, won't we? Ta ra. Oh. Ta ra, love. Bye. Oh, it'll be homesickness. A lot of young people have that problem when they leave the nest. Talking of problems, how's your Derek going on? And then to school. Well, he's got problems, hasn't he? Ah, thank heavens you're here. Uh, classroom four. Uh, don't tell me. Um, second year English. <laughs> yes, four miles, four miles. The chart. The display on the side by the wall. Display? No, 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 no. You finish your lunch. Just tell me where it might be and I'll go find it. Mr. Bellow. Oh, uh, hello, hello. Well, oh, top, top, Derek. I've got a class waiting. Uh, I cleared room four's notice board last night. No bother, is there? No, 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 no. Yes, no, you cleared it. Just tell me where it might be. So it's all in the bin. Bin man came this morning. Oh, dear. The bin? 
They've been working on that for four weeks. Told you, Mr. Wilton, check with me if you're unsure. I did check with you. You what told was it, me Mr. to Barlow? clear the 90s. English literature is most significant decade. Graphs, pictures, Theorist, essays. Theorist, you say, I In the bin! So much for Shakespeare's plays, eh, Derek? Who told you went around when he was writing them? No, I can. Very popular today, are we, Mr. Wilton? Clear it, you said. I, I, I was merely obeying instructions. Oh, and another thing, don't call staff by the first names. Sets a bad example to the kids. Leave you sleeping and come home to this fighting in a pub. I wasn't fighting. Oh, so Steve's a liar, is he? Oh, no, of course he's not a liar, but like he said, I was nearly fighting, all right? I mean, there's a difference. You said to me I was sleeping, I wasn't, I was nearly sleeping. That uh, denim shirt's missing out my wardrobe. Well, you never liked that denim shirt. Yeah, well, I might change my mind, and it was there before I went to Sheffield. Oh, well, perhaps it's in our wardrobe I'll look after. <laughs> You'll do no such thing, Liz. Are you thinking of changing your mind or what? What's up with you? He's talking about a shirt, Jim. I know he's talking about a shirt. What about the man inside the shirt, eh? Can we talk about him for a while, please? I don't want this. Look, I won't lose my temper. It is no big deal, Dad. It might not be a big deal to you, son. But it might come as a shock to you to realise that other people have opinions too, like us. Like, why are you leaving Sheffield? Jim! Look, I'm really sorry if I've upset you both. Honestly, I am. And I don't want you worrying. Oh, well, that's great for your mum and me. We're not the worry now, are we? Dad, I'm 18 years old, for God's sake. An adult, and it's my decision. Well, if it's your decision... Leave it, Jim! Well, in that case, you're old enough to do your own washing and go and find your own shirt. Stop expecting your mother to do everything for you. Oh, well, it suits me. I'm sorry, but I didn't want another row. We've had plenty of them and they achieved nothing. Yeah, well, I bet it was his fault I had a row with Baldwin in the first place. Oh, God, why did I have a row with Mike Baldwin? I know. Just... Be patient, eh? Hey, it's a grand day, this, eh? Hey? No sleep, row I didn't want. What a good thing it is I've got me job to look forward to, eh? <sighs> OK. I can't apologise enough. Well, accidents happen, Derek. That was no accident, Ken. Councillor Potts engineered it. Surely not. He's warped, Ken. Malicious. Grudge against Shakespeare, isn't he? It takes all sorts. Don't congregate on the stairs, you create a hazard. Well, this grudge is against me. He wastes no opportunity to humiliate and degrade me. Well, stand up to him. Don't back down. Which is what Malcolm was doing to Macbeth, incidentally, before the bin men carted him away. Did you broach it with Carmel? Not about moving in. Not yet, no. I just asked her if she'd babysit tonight. What was she like when you asked her? Well, she just said, yeah. I don't want her to think we're taking advantage, Martin. Well, I offered her money. She refused. I'll find some other way to make it up to her. I don't want people to think we're using her. Mm. Like who? Like you, for one. Like me mother, for another. Uh, come on, Alma, now. What have you been saying? <laughs> hey? No, no, no. Just a joke. They think I want Carmel as a maid. <laughs> Take something about me. Oh, look, I wouldn't upset you for the world, girl. You know that. <laughs> oh, no. And I certainly wouldn't want to upset Martin, would I? Better not, no. No, I know. He might kick me. Help yourself to the sugar. Hey! these for tonight? Uh, later tonight, yes. Only some keep better than others, if you know what I mean. Uh, really? Mm. We've got bigger boxes. Of course, it depends what sort of impression you want to make. Start fishing, Rita. They're for a friend, yes, but she's just a friend. Wrapping paper's a dead giveaway. Do you want some wrapping paper? That'll do just fine. Oh, well, if you're sure. Hello. Hello, Mavis. Don't suppose you've seen anything of Derek today. I saw him, yes. Oh. Thank you. Well, it's nice when you start a new job to have a friend at court, so to speak. <laughs> Derek fitting in, is he? Well, uh... Well, of course it's different from anything he's ever done before. I mean, it's a far cry from recycling paper, isn't it? <laughs> Not as far as you might think, actually, Mavis. Uh, Moustache. Bye. 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 Forgive me if I'm wrong, Mavis, but Derek's friend at court doesn't seem so friendly. Oh, I thought you'd gone out. I thought you were coming with me. Can't start, mate. Sorry. Studies. Oh, no, you don't do that anymore, do you? Don't start, Steve. So what are you going to do with the rest of your life, eh? Cos you can't spend it waiting for Paula to get in touch, you know? Nothing wrong with wanting to talk to someone that you love, Steve. I mean, you talk to yourself all the time, don't you? Oh, ho, ho, ho. Can Sheffield afford to lose such wit we ask ourselves? Well, get a job round here, Steve. If you can do it, anybody can do it. Which reminds me, I'm a fix for a couple of T-shirts. Yeah? 
Who I am around Sheffield. You're starting again, Steve. And I don't want any rubbish either, just because the freebies. <sighs> no can do. Well, you don't waste me to pay for them, do you? Well, you wouldn't pay me anyway, would you? You'd be paying Baldwin. I can't believe I'm hearing this. Oh, it's just so they know they're not knockoffs. Look, Andy is on me back. And thanks to me dad, put one foot wrong and I'll be unemployed, just like you. I'll give my love to uh, Paula, won't you? <laughs> Hello? Yeah, hiya. Well, I left enough messages. You were about to get one of them, weren't you? Look, I'll tell you when you get round here, OK? And it'll better be soon. All right. Look, never mind food. There's a guy here at the end of his rope. All right. OK, then half an hour. Can't wait. See you soon. Hi, Hi Angie. Hello, Gabe. Oh. I hope you don't mind. I got here early and I fed everybody. Uh, yeah, except me. I meant the kids. Oh. Hmm. He's the biggest kid of the lot. Mm. What can I say? Thank you. So, uh, what say we leave about seven? Have a few drinks before we go on the flicks? Sounds got good. We've a secret. Um, hush you. I've told you about that. <laughs> I know this one. She can't keep a secret for two mm. minutes. Come <sighs> on, then. I think you'd better tell me. Well, uh, not only has Carmel cut the kids' teas for him, but she's also agreed to be around to cook the breakfast as well. He's asked you to move in. <laughs> if I'm welcome, then I'm grateful, Gail. I'd still be looking for a place. Oh, actually. I am glad. I'm really pleased. Well done. So, hey, at last. At last, I'm a success. <laughs> so... Mum and Dad are at work and uh, Steve's gone out. So what's wrong with you? I didn't come round for a fumble, Andy. A f what do you mean, a fumble? Well, according to Michelle, it was a crisis. I just wanted to see you, that's all. It's what you wanted to see me for that worries I'm me. not like that, poor, all right. Something's changed, hasn't it? No, apart from you studying in Sheffield and now you're not. Couldn't hack it, I've just told you. Blamed everything. The work, the tutors, the food. Was it me? Yeah. Oh, you're a fool, Andy. Don't do this to me, please. Do what? Well, they'll blame me, won't they, your mum and dad? No. Yes. If you care for me, you'll see it won't happen. It won't happen. Well, then go back to Sheffield. Now it sounds as though you're trying to get rid of me. Oh. I've missed you. Live for the odd weekend, I see you. It's just something we've got to put up with for now. For now? We're talking three years here, Paula. Go back. Give it another try. If you can't do it for yourself, do it for me. Well, I'll have to be next week, then. That's better. Come here. Look, you know how pathetic I am. I need you around me all the time, reassuring me and that. Like every minute of every day? Yeah. Oh. Oh, what? Except this weekend. I'm going away. You're doing what? Well, I've promised I can't get out of it. Well, where are you going? Wales, with the girls. Well, cancel it then. Tell them you can't go. Well, they're relying on me for transport. It's just this weekend, Andy. Something has changed, hasn't it? Oh, you're being stupid again. Yeah, and I know. Stupid enough to think you'd listen and understand. What's so important about Wales? Michelle's got relatives there. Look, I've chatted my dad up and I'm borrowing his car. They're relying on me, Andy. Every minute of every day, you just said. Wasn't true, though, was it? Oh. So why should I believe you're going to Wales with the girls? Ask Michelle. Oh, and I. She's going to tell me the truth, isn't she? Well, don't be so childish. This isn't even worth discussing. Well, whatever you're doing, it obviously doesn't include me, does it? Yeah, well, I didn't know you were going to run away from Sheffield, did well, I? It might be as well that I did. I didn't come for a row, Andy. I came to help. As I can't, I may as well go. Right, look, I'm sorry. Go to Wales next weekend. I can't. You've obviously got something else planned for then, haven't you? Oh, sort your own life out, Andy. I can manage my own, thanks. Not too early, am I? I can always get around the block again. Oh, don't be silly. Dinner's a bit delayed, actually. I haven't yet worked out the timer on the cooker. It's new. <laughs> These are for you, by the way. Oh. Well, I can hardly bring flowers, could I? <laughs> I can recommend the plong, but chocolates aren't quite my line, I'm afraid. Well, that's very sweet of you, thanks. If you'd like to go through, Mark's in there. Hello, Mark. How's tricks? Hello. Was that you I saw at football practice this morning? Hot footing it down the left wing? But you, uh, you do play football, don't you, Mark? I mean, uh, I have seen you, uh, now, no need for introductions with you two, so I won't bother. Put that comic down, Mark. Now, I want you to play host while I save the dinner. <laughs> Sorry about this, Ken. Make yourself comfortable. Ah, a lovely house. I've always admired this area. Park nearby, handy for the shops. You must spend hours in that park, Mark. I'll be in the better weather, I mean. 
Good fishing in that pond, they tell me. Do you fish? No. Lad I was at university where they used to live just at the back here. His father was a vet, I remember. Well, all's well so far. Can I get you a drink, Ken? Well, I wouldn't say no to a sherry. Well, I hope mine's dry enough for you. We're in the presence of a real wine connoisseur here, Mark. Oh, hardly. I've attended a few night classes, that's all. Well, or night glasses, as the joke went amongst the students. <laughs> oh, dear, sorry. Back in a tick. New cooker. Your mother tells me it's proving quite a handful. Oh, you reckon Ken Barlow had a date there? Well, he gave very strong hints. Oh, he said the chocolates were for a friend, Rita. Well, you don't go out with an enemy, do you? <gasps> there are friends and friends. You do jump to conclusions sometimes. Someone at school, is there? It's Eric. Sorry? Ken Barlow, is he caught in someone at school? How should I know? What's up with Oh, he's not very well, are you, Derek? Tummy upset. My tummy's fine. Something's gone wrong at that school. Ken hinted at that as well. What did he say? Oh, he didn't say anything. Don't get so touchy. Anyway, I'm sure Rita and Audrey are not interested. I'm interested. And I could be if pushed. Oh, dear. Is life so dull that we have to sit here discussing caretaking? And Ken Barlow. Look, whatever's gone on between Ken and Derek, that's private, surely. It's public, unfortunately. Derek, you don't owe anybody any explanation. It's all over the school. <laughs> Derek the Destroyer has chucked Mr Barlow's precious display on the scrap heap. I was the victim of a cruelly contrived circumstance. That council of pots is the devil incarnate. Oh, Alf's never liked it. I'm sure of Audrey. Go on, Derek. Well... Injured in training, it said in tonight's paper. Oh, well, papers, innit? You always get it wrong. Martin should have got a mention, though, shouldn't he? What for? Well, then Fort could point him out in the street. The man who banjoed Wayne Farrell. <laughs> it's a bit like, you know, the man who shot Liberty the Lamb. Where's your sympathy, eh? <laughs> yes, Alma. <laughs> oh, uh, can I have a scotch, please? Oh, yeah, um, Alma, love. I'll, I'll get, get these, these best. No, listen, Mike's with me. He's parking the car. Oh, go on, then. Uh, scotch and, uh, and a tomato juice. Right. Oh, no. Come on, have some proper drink. <laughs> you know, I'll be doing the driving, won't I? Oh, that's what? Eric Wilton. Just wait till I tell you. What's he done? New cooker or no, that was delicious. Well, I can admit it now. I was terrified of a disaster. It's been ages since I've entertained. <laughs> you didn't eat much, Mark. I wasn't hungry. Well, he's not much of a one for steaks, are you, Mark? I'll make some more coffee. Can I go to bed, Mum? Well, a few minutes more won't hurt. I was hoping you'd help me clear the table. I'm tired. Well, I'm a, I'm a very willing dishwasher, also a very good one. Mum's got a dishwasher. Ah. All mod cons. <laughs> Mum! Well, he has got school tomorrow, Ken. Of course, yes. Good night, Mark. Mark, say good night to Ken. Good night, Mr. Barlow. Good night, Mum. Mr. Barlow, once a school teacher, always a school teacher. It was awful, I'm sorry. No, no, no. I mean, what else could the poor lad call me? He's probably terrified I was going to ask to see his homework. Yeah, that's just all it is. How do you mean? There's only ever been one man in his life, Ken. That was his father. They were very close. Why, even inviting a man here for a meal... Oh, this isn't making sense. Yes, it is. It was very crass of me not to have been aware of it and come bowling in here with all my stupid conversation. I'm sorry. Seems like it's our day for apologising to each other. Well, I promise I'll do better next time. We haven't put you off, then. <laughs> as well as being crass, I'm also very persistent. I'm glad. Coffee. Just let me bring a bag up and then I'll be with you. Oh, it's OK, Carmel. I'll bring you back so. I think you'll have to mark them. I'm not the old master here. Come on, then. Oh, that's so good. Have you seen this one? Well, she's living here, Martin. You can't expect a suitcase. Well, you guys miss a camel train either. I mean... Where are we going to put this lot? Do you not want her to move it? Uh, once well, not in it. She's here now, isn't she? So why are you complaining? Because it's ten past eight. That's oh. why I'm complaining. But she don't make our bit of early morning cheerful. <gasps> well, I hope she does. You look like death warmed up in the morning. Oh, thank you very thank much. Thank you, pardon. What's going to you this morning? 
You promised us fireworks. Uh, you had fireworks last night down the pub. What was wrong with that? Ha, they were useless. We can only get near them. You're not sir. supposed to get near them. They're dangerous. We need to get near them oh. to see them. Anyway, Sarah hardly saw a thing. Oh, you? poor deprived kids, eh? Doesn't your heart bleed? Yes, yeah, so it should. Hey, watch yourself, you. <laughs> okay, then. Carmel? Yeah? Fireworks tonight, okay? Yeah! Partly by way of a welcome and partly to stop the kids from whining. Uh, you'll never manage that. So it's fireworks and spuds, but no bonfire. All right. Well, I'm sorry. That's the way it is. <laughs> I was only asking whether you saw her last night, and in fact, no, I'm not asking, cos I know Paula was here last night. I'm just trying to make a conversation. How do you know? Ah, oh, thank you. Thought so. Oh, you think you're very clever, don't you? Yeah, well, I'll try. Well, don't try, cos I haven't got anything to say, all right? Yeah, well, I'm sure Dad's got something to say, and I'm sure he's going to say it as soon as Mum lets him off the leash. Shut up, Steve. Something like, so what are you going to do with the rest of your life, cos you can't spend it lying on your back in Coronation Street? Said shut up, Steve. Of course, you could always go and work for better buys again. They're always looking for failed academics to stack shelves. All right, you two, just stop it now, will you? Steve, out to work. Go! Oh, of course, of course, the golden boy's back. Do you want me to wash his pots, clean his shoes, oil his feet? Stephen. Right, I'm off to work. And that's spelt W-O-R-K, Andy. Just go! I haven't asked you any questions. I haven't wanted any explanations. I haven't demanded you go back to Sheffield. But I am demanding you behave yourself and you don't quarrel in my house. Sorry. How was it with Paula? It was lousy with Paula, Mum. I mean, what does she want from me? What does she expect? Well, she'll be going through it as well. She'll be finding it just as difficult. Oh, aye. She's having the best time of her life and can't get enough of it. Steve! Oh, yeah? How are you fixed? When? Now. Well, I'm busy. When, then? Well, I'm busy all day. You'll have to do it next week. Steve, you owe me. I know I owe you, but you can't expect me to put your work in front of Baldwin's. It's only 50 T-shirts. Yeah, only? By the time I've set up and printed, that's, that's three hours. What time do you finish work? Ah, oh, five, six. Right, I'll be with you at six. Hey, hey, shut your ears, Carmel. It's an assignation. <laughs> I bet you can't spell that. Spell it? I can hardly say it. Uh. She's obviously moved in. A oh, funny time of day to move in. No, but she's a trainee nurse. So? So she's up early. Oh, no, we, we're low on cornflakes, but I, uh, I am. Oh, hi, Martin. Right. Hello. Uh, you know Carmel, do you? Yes, but we've met before, Hello, Carmel. Uh, do you know Deirdre? Hello, Deirdre. Hello, love. Hi. I happened to see a lot of bag and baggage going in this morning, ah, Martin. Oh, yes, that's right, Audrey. We have ourselves a lodger. Oh, fancy. Mm. You've only got three bedrooms. Well, oh, three's plenty when you're all good friends, Audrey. <laughs> Oh, I uh, got any baking spuds? <laughs> yeah, I'll sort you some out. Uh, about oh. ten, dozen. Oh, you're not bonfiring, uh, are you? Fireworks, but no bonfire. <laughs> so where will you be sleeping, Carmel? They're not putting you on that sofa, I hope. I'm in with Sir Louise. <laughs> oh, well, you'll have your hands full. I'm used to children. I'll enjoy it. <laughs> you'll need to be. I don't think I'd fancy that much, would you, Deirdre? I don't think I'd be invited. <laughs> I don't think you would either. <laughs> now, I'm wanting to make some bonfire toffee for tonight. Do you have any black treacle at all? Right, so, I want at least 200 words on what you think of the BFG as a book and why you like Roald Dahl, if you like Roald Dahl, and why not if you don't. OK, OK. Uh, Mark? Oh, thanks. Hi, thanks. Good. I uh, hope I didn't camp your style the other day. No. Oh, good, good. Must be a funny situation for you, just when you think you got rid of me for the day and I suddenly turn up at your home. How's your mother? She's OK. Well, it's a very nice meal. Will you tell her? Yeah. Right, go on, off you go, then. Oh, Mark, by the way, I'm only Mr Barlow in school, OK? Out of school, I'm, uh, well, I'm just me, all right? See you soon. So, uh, what did he want? Oh, it was just something about the homework. That's all. Is this all you carry on? Photography, love? Photography? Do you know you're the fourth this morning? I think we've sold out. Well, just what's there. Never mind. I'll enjoy this one. Well, I bet you will, eh? <laughs> Interested in photography, then, are you? Photography? No, not a lot. Some of the photographs, well, red-blooded male, you know. Did you want something, Mr Duckworth? Maybe. So you're missing a lot of trade, you know. You want to get yourself a decent top section. Because the nearest you sell to what this lad's looking for is darty pics in photograph magazines. But you want to get yourself down to three things. Any decent newspaper shop will sell what you want, lad. 
Do you know what he's talking about? I know very well what he's talking about. Oh, come on. You can't tell me you buy this for reading about cameras and stuff. Why not? Look, come here. Give it to me. Here. That's what you buy it for, over there. Hey, look at that there, eh? Make your eyes water, that one. <laughs> Shot into the light, look. On a fast speed to get that silhouette effect. Probably a bit of an orange filter as well. It's a good shot, that. Oh, come on, that's just easy what you buy it for. You don't buy it for, for cameras and lenses and things like that. You buy it for the girl. I buy it for the information. What are you, some kind of weirdo? There's more to me than makes the eye old son. Oh, I'm sure there is. Oh, why, isn't there to all of us? Doesn't mean I can't appreciate a decent picture when I see one. Well, what exactly in your case, Mr Duckworth? What? What more is there to you than meets the eye? Well, you'd be surprised. Yes, I would. I'd be very surprised. If there's any more to you than an elderly teenager with the mind of a repressed juvenile, I'd be absolutely flabbergasted. So, you're still here then, are you, eh? Well, where did you expect me to be? Ah, oh, Sheffield University, Andrew. Where the hell do you think? Look, I told you that. I've left. Ah, right, fine. OK. I've kept out of this up until now because of your mother, right? And she doesn't know what I'm going to say. So I'm going to say it, right? You've a weak sonny boy. If you're not back in Sheffield, you're at that front door and you'll not be back in. Do I make myself clear, Andrew? Well, thanks, Dad. That's exactly the sort of sympathy I'd expect from you. Sympathy? Sympathy, eh? You don't need sympathy, Andrew. You need a belt round the ear hold, son. Oh, and that's the answer to all my problems, that is, isn't it? Look, Andy, you've let us down. Me, your mother, Steve, all we've done for you. Hey, such as? Such as? Such as? Such as your mother and I were practically witnessed you through your A-levels. Then you had us pussyfooting round this house so your studies wouldn't be disturbed. You that's mean, what. You mean you did the washing up a couple of times? Look, I'm just warning you, Andrew. Well, that's big of you. But what did you do it for, Dad? Come on, why did you do it? For you to pass your exams, that's why. But that's what you reckon, is it? Yes, that's what I reckon. Do you know any different? Yeah, I'll tell you why you pussyfooted around, shall I? Because you like the idea of a son at university. Oh, rough. Yeah, because the only thing you could manage was some crappy backstreet garage, but at least your son would be a graduate. So there you were, made me get me head in my books night after night. And it was, uh, shut up, Steve, your brother's working. Or, come on, Liz, let's leave the professor to his studies. Or, I wish I had your brains, son. Do you know what it's like being set up as a genius when all I am is an ordinary bloke with a couple more brain cells than you've got? So, I'm not meant to be proud of you, is that it? Hey? It's, it's not me that you're proud of, Dad. You're proud of this idea you've got of me. So you get a little bit more respect round here if I stayed on at Sheffield. And what you can't take is that I'm just like you, Dad. You're a failed bike mechanic, Dad, and I'm a failed student. Andrew! You're not a failure, yes, son. Yes, I am. I'm just a failure like you, Dad. The only difference is I'm not going up like some crypto fascist in a uniform. Yeah. Well, at least I don't sit in my backside. At least I get out there and I bloody work. If you look to yourself in the mirror, Dad, you look a right jerk. Where's your jack boots, eh? Right. Oh, yeah, that's right. Go on. Hit me. But you'll be your own son. You got the uniform for it. Oh, shut up. Mark of a failure, Dad. Someone who hits out just because he can't speak. And don't blame failure on me either, because it runs in the family. I think arson's on the curriculum these days. You know what's in here? Amaze me. Dead fireworks. The place was clearly a battleground last night. Fireworks and bonfire remains wherever you look. I hope you've cleared it all up, then. I'm working my way through it. You know, something really should be done to secure this place properly. Kids can break in here willy-nilly. Before we know where we are, this building could be razed to the ground. Is that an official complaint? No, it's a comment. You must know yourself a child of six could break in here. And they probably do. No one's ever complained before. A bit of a Jeremiah, are we, Derek? I'm just stating the obvious. I wouldn't go on about the lack of security if I were you. If there is a break-in, Mr Plod won't take too kindly to you having told half of Weatherfield how to do it. Oh, well, all right then. Don't expect me to bother about it either. Waiting for something? No. I should get rid of your fireworks then, Derek. Are they light bulbs? Looks like it, doesn't it? They're school property, aren't they? 
And? Well, why are you putting them in your car? Well, why, eh? Why am I? Have to figure that one out, won't you, Derek? Well, uh, it seems clear to what me. What does? Are you saying I'm taking school property? Is that what you're saying, Derek? Well, no. I'm just very I mean... careful what you're saying. And a general word of warning, whatever it is, light bulbs, fireworks, security, you keep this out. <laughs> Uh, come in, Lisa. Thank Welcome you. to Platt Palace. Right, so, uh, sit yourself down. Uh, sit your bag down. I'll get you a drink. What do you want? Oh, um, well, what is that? Uh, well, we've got some beer. We've got some white wine. Oh, if you're into the art stuff, I can steal some of David's black currant cordial for you. Uh, I think I'll pass on that one. Yeah? Um, White wine, please. Chicken. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Sally. We'll miss you. Well, she's better soon. Yeah, Lisa's just here with Tom. Yeah, do you want some more, mate? Yeah, you are right. Yeah, it's better that we don't come into contact. All right, then. I'll see you tomorrow. See you then, Sal. Bye. Oh, Rosie's got a snuffle. Oh, that's a shame. Hello, you. Are you going to enjoy the fireworks? Well, I'm so hoping he stays asleep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, Carmel. Have you met Lisa? Yeah, yeah we Lisa. have. Hi. Carmel <laughs> is our new lodger. Oh, oh. For their sins. I wouldn't wish me on anyone. <laughs> oh, isn't he just beautiful? Uh, sometimes. Mm. No, I don't mean that. He's good. He's there you brilliant. go, Lisa. Oh, lovely. Thanks. Right. And your, mm. your husband, will he come along later when he's back from work? Uh, no, no. Uh-oh, you're not giving him the evening off? Uh, Carmel, would you fancy giving his hand with uh, this buds yeah. in, the, in the oven? Yeah? We'll do, yeah. Right, cheers. They are, love, and uh, don't have too many of them, will you? It's only a tree. I know, but it's early yet. Don't worry, all right. Do you know, I'm glad you're in, Ken, because, well, I hate being on my own. I always feel I get looks from men. <laughs> Audrey, any time you need a chaperone, just call on me. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Am I interrupting something? Are you two together? Oh, no, no, I'm quite alone. Hi. Let me buy you a drink. Don't have a gin and tonic, please, Hans. Ken? Uh, well, I'll just have a half. It's very kind of you. So it's uh, half a bit uh, sure gin and tonic. And a pint for me, please, love. Right. Hey. Is into photography of me now. Yeah, there's a lot like that. I think it's something they pour in the water. No, proper lenses and cameras and that. Oh, you mean he takes photos? Oh, I play your cards right. Could do your career the world of good. I bet he don't even know I'm a model. I'll tell him. No, I'd seem posh. <laughs> oh, What's yours a half, Ken? Half a Ken. Pipe for me and a G&T. Oh, yeah, that's it. Three drinks. <laughs> Fits a lot to take in. Like us models. <laughs> Hi, Andy. Oh, great. And let me just get your drink, all right? <laughs> Whoa! Look at that go! <laughs> Woo! I've got to learn to keep my mouth shut. I was just asking the girl with the baby where her husband was. Martin whisked me off and told me he was in prison. Oh, yeah? Me and my mouth. I felt such a fool. Yeah, well, it can't be easy for Lisa either, can it? Brilliant, that one, eh? Hey, 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 look who's here. Hi, hey. I thought you wouldn't mind a gate crasher who brought his own fireworks. Great, what have you got? Most of me rockets, big ones, I'm afraid. Yeah, yeah, flash devil. Some people got all the money to burn, uh -huh. haven't they, eh? Potatoes! Come and get them! Ooh, oh, potatoes! Okay. Keep your eye on potatoes. the fireworks, Nicky. Keep them away from there. Come on. All right. Keep away. It was just you saying you were going away for the weekend. I felt like a bit of a kick in the teeth, you know. But I'd arranged it, Andy. I know you had. And I wanted you to break the arrangement. I don't now, that's just how I felt. I needed a shoulder to cry on, and, well, I shouldn't have asked. Well, I don't know what I'm feeling at the moment. I can't really help. I'd like to, but... Other things? Yeah. I'm just so lonely. Well... Have you joined anything? Oh, shut up a bye, Paul. You can't really help. I shouldn't have asked. I shouldn't have even come back. Well, all I know is it's up to you. And all I know is you don't want me around. I didn't say that. True, though, innit? 
I mean, miserable, depressed, washed up. Who would want me around? And I don't blame you. It's written all over you. All right, well, I do blame you then. But I know I shouldn't. Is that any better? Not much. Yeah, a bit. You're entitled to go out with your mates whenever you want. Go away for the weekend. I know that. I've no right to resent it. But you do. I just want you to feel as miserable as me, I think. Thanks. But I've realised that now. It takes some doing. Give me a bit of credit. It takes some doing saying it as well. I was a jerk to leave Sheffield. And I'm going to go back. Good. We'll keep in touch that way. Yeah, of course. But it doesn't last. What doesn't last? Uh, oh, sorry, I was thinking how happy things looked in Gail and Martin's. Kids taking such simple delight in the fireworks. And then I thought, sick transit, Gloria Mundi. Well, that was an odd thing to think. No, oh, in a few years, Nicky and Sarah Louise will be part of some marauding gang terrorising the neighbourhood. They'll be poking bangers into people's letterboxes, breaking into schools at night, giving caretakers hours of extra work. Well, that's the way of the world, Mavis, the way of all flesh. But I think they're very nice children. They're being properly brought up. I don't know why you're so pessimistic. Pots. Harry Potts today. That's why I'm pessimistic. What, what's happened? Well, it was a carton of light bulbs he was putting into the boot of his car. When I challenged him, he... Well, he was practically abusive. Do you mean he was stealing them? I can't tell. He told me to mind my own business. He's brazen. He could be innocent, but I'll bet he's not. Well, that's difficult, isn't it? I mean, that's not a good example to set the children. I tell you, Mavis, that school's a bear pit. It's pervaded with every kind of vice. Oh, they were the good days, weren't they? When we were working happily together in the cabin. Yes, but like you said yourself, <laughs> well, everything has to change. But have you noticed how it always changes for the worst? Why can't things sometimes change for the better? Well, sometimes they do. <laughs> mm. Oh, look, there's another one. Can I get you a drink? Oh, no, thanks. You enjoying yourself? Yeah, yeah. I, I just didn't want to wake him up. Oh, well, give him to me while you go and watch the fireworks, if you like. Oh, I can live without fireworks, honestly. Oh, surely not. Yeah, I'm funny like that. Yeah, well... I suppose, uh, once you've seen them one, you've seen them all. Yeah, but you've paid for most of them. Yeah, but what's money? <laughs> I'd rather be here. Lisa? Yeah, I heard you. No, come along, you two. We can't have you stuck in here. Give me the little one while you get yourselves out and party. Oh, thanks, Carmel. Right. Yeah. It's her. Well, give me a shout if he wakes up. Sure. Thanks ever so much. Well, I'm destroying the evidence because I don't use these sort of designs when it's worked for Baldwin. I'm pleased. What do you reckon? They're good. Nice job. Oh, well. It could have piece, got the wrong. Oh, yeah. And how much do I get out of it, eh? Well, come on in. How much? Well, nothing. You what? My shirts, my inks. It's my premises, my equipment, my electricity and my stuff. Now then, how much a shirt did you say you're getting? Eight quid? Right, I'll have uh, four pound a piece. Uh, that's a rent of the place. And another two or three is a penalty for not having the decency to ask me in the first place. That's not fair. Not fair? You come in here and feel free to use all of my equipment and talk about not being fair? We didn't start work till six. I couldn't care less. What do you think this is, a cooperative? You work for me, this is a business. You work for nobody else, do you get it? Yeah. How many shirts have you done? Fifty. Oh, fifty, right. That's uh, six by five. That's uh, 300 pounds you owe me. Let's have it. I can't afford that. Can't you? Well, you've been ripping me off, girl, and I don't like it. I didn't mean to rip you off, honestly. I didn't see the harm anyway. It's not cost you anything, apart from maybe a bit of electricity, but that's all. You have just dried 50 shirts. That is a hell of a lot of electricity. I'll pay you for that. Yes, you will. And the rest. Can't afford it. Can't you? Well, you should have thought about that. If you can't afford the overhead, you shouldn't be in business, and I am not in business to pay for you. Now, have you finished? Yes. Right, get out. I'll have 20 quid for the electricity. If I see you in here again, I'll sue you for the rest of that 300. 
Thanks. Okay, I'll get you the 20. And you, you're lucky to still be in work. I mean that. And I, uh, I want you to forgive me. No, it was, it was me. I didn't mean what I said. You see, uh... I want more than anything else in the world that... Uh, I want, uh, that you do well. And you're right, I, uh... I, I pushed you into this because, uh... Well... I don't want, I don't want, I don't want to see you turn out like me, so... I mean... Look, if you can be happy, Andy, doing, well, anything... I don't mind what. And there'll always be a home here for you, son. Uh, there'll, there'll always be a bed here for you. I'm ashamed of what I said. No. I know you were, but you were probably right. No, I wasn't right at all, Dad. You're not a failure. You've worked your butt off, for God's sake. You're certainly not a fascist. No. No, I'm, I'm not a fascist. And maybe I don't look so good in uniform anymore now I've filled out anyway. <laughs> Listen, um, I want to get myself back to Sheffield, Dad. You know, the pride of my life, so you are. My mother always used to give us some barn brack to take to school. Mind you, we'd to walk three miles each way. That, yeah, that. This one, Mum's if he's got to walk three yards. I don't. You do. You're not going to give us a lift. That's not fair. It's your theme tune, that. What's barn brack? <laughs> barn brack. It's a kind of fruitcake. I'll make you some if you like. She says I have to take an apple to school. She says it's good for my teeth. Uh, who's she? Your mum says it's good for your teeth. So do I come to that, huh? Well, Carmel's mum made a cake and her teeth are OK. Show him. I'm sure Carmel's teeth are perfect, Nicky. That's not the point, is it? <laughs> I tell you what, you take your apple to school and I'll bake you some barn brack to have after your tea. How's that? Well, Carmel's going to make some barn brack cake. <laughs> barn brack, stupid. Look. Carmel's got quite enough to do with the study, and she's not here to be a slave to you lot. Jordan, it's no bother, Gail. I, I want to be part of the family. Oh, well, in that case, you can do the breakfast pots, can't you? Martin! <laughs> He's kidding. It's his turn. No, I'd be happy to do it. Really, I would. You've both been so kind to me. I want to help in any way I can. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Curl, you wake up in the morning with a little glow of anticipation. You're probing sore points there, aren't you? Think of it as therapy. There's not many people we can bear our souls to. True. I mean, on the one hand, I've got a good job with prospects. I've got a house, a car, a company pension scheme. And on the other? Well, if you're talking about stimulation and challenge on a scale of one to ten, I'd give it minus five. Well, now you've got that out, are you going to sit there and gloat? Hardly. I'm in the same boat. But you? The creative genius with a radical chic who's moving round in different circles? Don't be snotty. It's just not working out the way I thought it would. I mean, I know I should be grateful to have a job. But where have happened to the impossible dream, Curly? I don't know. When you find it, kid, let me know. Oh, I'll get it. Hi! Kim, everything all right? Yes! Daddy saw the specialist yesterday, and he says with any luck, they'll do his operation at the beginning of January. Happy new hernia to you. Oh, I'm sure he's very relieved, but why have you come round and told me in person? Because we can set the date for the wedding now, silly. Well, Mummy and me think Kate will be perfect. Harry, I've got to run. I just wanted to see your little face when I told you. I'll come round tonight and we can start making plans, OK? I'm so excited, aren't you? Bye! Bye. -bye.
And you thought you had nothing to look forward to. Doc, early. Something reminded me of you yesterday. Now, what was it? Don't tell me. You've, uh, you've run out of bog roll. That's what people usually associate me with. That or frozen chickens. But to think, eh? I used to write poetry. That's it. Wasn't astronomy once a hobby of yours? Oh, yeah. In the days when I had a hobby. Now I just make rugs. <laughs> well, there's a total eclipse of the moon next month. The School Astronomy Society are planning a get-together to go and watch it. 9th of December. That's right, that's right. I'm trying to encourage Tracy to go, but it's an uphill battle. Oh, well, uh, tell her to give us a knock, you know, if she needs any gen. I've still got me books somewhere. Right, right. Well, the only stars she's interested in at the moment are those in black leather and with dirty hair, unfortunately, but uh, I'll pass on your offer, thanks. Bye. Good morning, Phyllis. Good morning, Ken. What happened, love? Are you all right? I think so. I think I must have tripped over one of them flags. Would you help me up, love? Oh, How did the party go last night? Oh, it was only a kid's firework. Oh, oh I used to love them. I was sorry when Tracy grew up in a way and I didn't have an excuse anymore. <laughs> Were there many there? Just Dale and Martin and the kids. Oh, that new girl they've got lodging with them. Des Barnes popped in for a bit as well. Oh, with or without a girlfriend? Oh, without. <laughs> oh, Phyllis, look, whatever's happened. She took a bit of a tumble. Oh, dear. Listen, I've got some antiseptic in the first aid kit. Come through the back, I'll get you fixed up. <laughs> Lisa, would you mind keeping an eye on the till oh, for yeah, a minute? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Oh, dear. Are you sure you're all right, Phyllis? Oh, I take more than that to finish me off. Oh, don't doubt some of them on the same a bottle. Oh. Hey, you refer them to me and I'll thump them. I'll give us a shout when she feels up to it and I'll run her home. Oh, thanks. That's kind. Seems you've got yourself a chauffeur. I have good looking on to boot. There's some benefits in being clumsy in your old age after all. Cool. Oh, yeah. New job? No, I'm just keeping an eye while Deirdre's in the back. I wouldn't mind if it was, though. At least it'd get me out of the house. Another one cheesed off. Oh, I can't tell you. You know, Tom's the only thing that's keeping me sane at the moment. Are you around at dinner time? I'm always around me. Permanent fixture. Come and have a bite to eat at our place. And he won't mind if I take an extra half hour for lunch. Too bad if he does. You don't want to listen to my moans. No, I want you to listen to mine. Oh, well, in that case, you're on. At least yours will be interesting. Oh, don't count on it. <laughs> Splendid morning, Mr. Wilton. Bright, sharp. Cold. We can hardly expect a tropical heat wave in November, can we? Well, I don't know. According to an article I read on the greenhouse effect... Drains. Drains? On the agenda. Couldn't have picked a better day to remove all the gunge. Can't take risks with our young charges. Smelly drains lead to all sorts of unpleasantnesses. Cholera, typhoid, rats. Don't they have specialist firms for that kind of thing? Not since the cuts, I'm afraid. But somebody's got to do it, so our little department bears the brunt, as ever. I suppose so. Where do we start? Oh, don't look so worried, man. It's a doddle. I'll show you the ropes before I go. Go? Go where? Believe me, I'd much rather be outside in the fresh air with you, Mr Wilton. But I have another all-day council meeting for my sins. Shall we proceed? A packet of brown envelopes, please, Reed. And a box of peppermint cream. Oh, are they your weakness to her? We all have our guilty secrets, Reginald. Do you have to say it so loud? <laughs> Why do you girls always feel you have to punish yourselves for indulging in the more pleasant things in life? I don't. It's me gobby friends I'd like to punish. But I expect in your case that it's called comfort eating with you being on your own now. Thank you for that diagnosis, Mavis. No, no, I can empathise with that. I, too, know the loneliness of the empty armchair on the other side of the hearth. Do you know, come to think of it, you two have a lot in common. I mean, your husband's in Southampton, your wife in New Zealand. Ex-wife Bambino. I'm now at liberty to offer certain unattached members of the fairer sex a little light-hearted company. Or anything else that might be required. <sighs> well, I've got a pub full of customers and Luby Lou, my lively lodger, to keep me occupied, thank you. Rita hasn't, though. Ah, but I don't like peppermint creams. Mrs Gilroy, please. I'm afraid she's out, Mr Wilmore. Out? 
She's just popped across to the shop. She'll be back any minute. Can I get you something? Drink? Cup of tea? No, I can't wait. I have other calls to make. Tell her I'll be back this evening, and I'd be grateful if she's around. Mm. Right. Here's the stuff suit. Front brewery. Trust him to come when Bet's not here. This came in the post this morning. I take my test in two weeks. Oh, well, Order chuffed. Uh, hang on, have I missed something here? Don't you have to have such a thing as lessons first? Mum, I've known how to drive since I was about four. Us McDonald's don't have blood in our veins. We have engine oil. <laughs> Martin's living room. Well, he must have done something to get you so worked up. He didn't. It was me. I, I just looked at him and... Well, it was hardly romantic. I mean, we were sitting there with Tom, kids shrieking all over the place, fireworks going off, but... I, I don't know, suddenly... I, I just... I just felt... Randy? No. Well... Not exactly. What exactly? Attracted to him. Randy. Well, don't look like that. It happens to the best of us. Des is a very attractive bloke. <clears throat> as I can testify. Do you still have feelings for him? No, not like that. But yeah, I still like him. It's hard to dislike. That's the problem. He can be so sweet and funny and... Caring. He's been brilliant to me and Tom. And he makes me laugh. Hard combination to resist when you're lonely. Yeah, but I just feel so ashamed. Why? Any girl would feel lonely in your shoes. Yeah, but it's not right, Angie. I'm married to Terry. And I, I do love him. But sometimes it's just really hard to remember how we were together. It's a bit like an old photo that's fading away. I mean, I can't let it. I just can't. I can't because of Tom. He needs his dad. Well, he doesn't even know him. Yeah, but he will. When Terry comes out. It won't be that long. So what are you going to do? Keep away from Des. Vera was right all along. It's far too dangerous. Don't you think I'm doing the right thing? Well, it's not for me to say. But here's me, frustrated at work and in my social life, mm. and there's you planning to live like a nun. <laughs> There's Des Barnes floating around all on his lonesome while Curly chains himself to Miss Draylon for life. And the beggar <laughs> of it is none of it makes much sense. No. <laughs> Is missing Alec. In the same way you miss tight corsets when you take them off. Oh, Rita, that's not very kind. I mean, well, for all his faults, they did have a very strong bond. Aye. I can't say he was the love of her life, but he was probably the most consistent. We've not had much luck in marriage stakes, me and Bet, have we? I don't know. You've had two happy marriages. Well, first was like the curate's egg, good in parts, and the second was too short. Funny, isn't it? Me and Bet were the ravers, and yet yours is the only marriage that lasted. Must be a lesson in there somewhere. Yeah, but me and Derek have been having our ups and downs recently. But I must admit, things seem to have settled down now, Bet. Oh, good. Ah. Oh, oh Derek, what on earth? Oh, babies. Every man has his limits, and I've reached mine. I don't care if I go back to swelling the ranks of the unemployed. Tomorrow morning, first thing, I hand him my notice. Here he comes. Get basket ready for me, Ed. Stop worrying. Besides, you've put your damage limitation plan into operation. I just hope it works out, chicken. Mr Wilmore, I'm so sorry to have missed you this morning. I just nipped out to the florist. We always like to make a feature of having fresh flowers on the top of the bar. Mrs Gilroy doesn't believe in those naff plastic ones so many other establishments favour. We may only be a small house, but we go for quality every time. Now then, what's your pleasure? On me, of course. Well, from the state of your trade, it doesn't look as though you can afford to give drinks away tonight, let alone import half of Kew Gardens. 
It is early yet. Really? It wasn't appreciably better at lunchtime. Can we go inside? What's all this about? Passion. You mean dirty books? No, 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 no. All the stuff we were talking about this morning. I never said anything about passion. Not the sort of thing I talk about at breakfast. Well, not to you, anyway. Dreams, stimulation, challenge. All the things that have been missing out of our lives. And will we find it all in there? Well, I don't think you will, but I will. Magic in these books, magic. You're not going to come over old Paul Daniels on me, are you? What have you brought that thing down again for? That is not a thing. That is a window to another world. Silently, one by one, in the infinite meadows of heaven, the stars blossom, the forget-me-nots of the angels. I think I prefer you taking ping-pong balls out my ears. Oh, all right, all right, I won't bother. But remember, you're the one that said there's not many people can bear our souls to. I know, I'm sorry. It's just that sometimes you're very teasable, curly tops. So if you're so keen on astronomy, why'd you pack it in? I don't know. Life moves on, doesn't it? Got a job, got engaged. Got yourself grounded. In a manner of speaking. But it used to give me a real buzz on a dark, clear night. It's like you could, you could leave the Earth and get up there amongst it all, sailing through solar systems into other universes. And you can see all that through that? Well, no, not, not this one. If I'm going to take it up again, seriously, I'll have to get myself a more powerful one. Probably a, a six-inch motorised reflector. Sounds impressive. So where are you going to do all this stargazing from, anyway? Your bedroom window? No, no. In the observatory I'm going to build in the attic. You weren't serious about that. Of course, yeah. Move a few slates, put a window in, piece of cake. You're right, Angie. There's got to be more to life than nine-to-five drudgery. We have to erase our sights from the gutter. And if we don't do that, well, we've only got ourselves to blame. Well, as a pastime, it certainly beats knitting rugs. And just hope Kimberly shares your enthusiasm. Some women might not be too keen on a mini jodrell bank in the roof space. It's my roof space. No, when she married, darling, becomes connubial roof space then. The house, the car, even the budgie, if you had one. Everything, 50-50. Right down the line. The Newton and Wrigley what? Super Quiz Challenge Trophy. Our PR people felt that it lent a touch of class. They don't go in much for quizzes round here, with or without class. Nonsense. All our other establishments are entering. Everyone likes a chance to pit his wits against the next man, or woman, as the case may be. Depends if they've got any wits to pit. Nobody's expecting to discover the brain of Britain. It's all done in a very light-hearted mode. But if, in the process, we boost the takings, who can afford to sniff at that? Certainly not you, Mrs Gilroy. Trade will pick up as we get nearer Christmas. <laughs> My dear lady, a public house can't afford to drift along, waiting for high days and holidays to rescue it from being stranded by the economic tide. The whole flaming country is going through a tough time. It's not just me. Precisely. Which means the bottom line is that no business can afford passengers. So, I'll leave it with you. Unless, of course, you feel that organising a quiz team is beyond your capabilities. I could organise the Manchester Flaming Olympics if I had to, Sunshine. Splendid. I'll be in touch. Ooh. Oh, dear. Here you go. Oh, you look tired, Gail. I'll, I'll bath the baby for you. Carmel, we cannot keep taking advantage of your good nature. I like doing it. And we don't want you getting ankle edema. Huh? <laughs> it's um, when they swell up with fluid. So they can when you're on your feet all day. Well, it's a cheerful prospect. Mm -hmm. Serves me right for sharing me home with a medical profession. Go on, then, you've talked me into it. Fat so's all yours. Ah, he's not fat, are you, Poppet? You're uh, just cuddly. Oh, right, I'll just run to the corner and post me letter, and then I'll take him off. It's to Michael. She's going to marry him. I'm a bridesmaid. You don't be cheeky, madam. <laughs> I'd be very happy for you all to dance at me wedding, but it's a long time off yet. I've all my exams to pass first. Right, who wants to come with me to the letterbox? Me, me. Come on, then, come on, then. <laughs> oh, Kenneth, yeah, yeah. just no the man I want. Yeah. Just get your own. She never yeah. says that to me. I'm under orders <laughs> to form a pub quiz team, and I need some kind, cool-headed, <laughs> educated <laughs> person to organise it. Well, that's you out there. Oh, you're not going in for all those you. gimmicks, are you? It'll be karaoke nights next. Oh, it's not my decision, Flower, I can assure you. So, can I count on you? I'm afraid not, no. I don't have a lot of free time these days. In fact, uh... 
just on my way out now. Sorry. Not lad. Uh, Cheers, Ken. See you, Ken. Judging from his get-up, it's not going to mark kids' exercise books, is it? Guess what? What? I bought this today. <laughs> Mummy says the secret to a perfect wedding is advanced planning. Oh, well, she'll get on well with Rudge Holdsworth, then. I mean, he's got everything down in his personal organiser to the day he cuts his toenails. Do you have to be disgusting? It's not obligatory, no, but when you work with Reg all the time, it kind of rubs off. Well, come on, then, what do we have to do? Well, we've got to book the church and the reception, sort out the people that we're going to invite and get the invitations printed, and then decide on what wedding presents we want. <laughs> I know what the bridegroom wants. A telescope. A what? Ah, oh, nothing. It's just one of Angie's eccentric little jokes. Oh, just an oddball bohemian weirdo, that's me. I sometimes wish I could be a bit more daring like you, fashion-wise, but, well, all I ever wanted to do was just float down the aisle in a, a long white dress with a, with a long train. Sounds fine to me. Honestly? I thought your ideal would have been something punky with studs. You're the bride. On a wedding day, every girl should wear the dress of her dreams. Probably the only chance she'll get. Right, I shall leave you two lovebirds alone. I'll uh, make us a cup of tea, Curly. Mm. Then we can get down to it. <laughs> Making lists, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to tell them about you know what? Not at this moment in time, no. What no. moment in time? Well, frankly, I don't think it's any of your business. You're putting it off, aren't you? You know what you are now? A hundred percent copper bottomed wimp. My treat. Is it a celebration? Uh, not your birthday, is it? A birthday is no longer a cause for celebration. <laughs> no, it's it's by way of a thank you for helping me get back to the person I used to be. When Harry died, I rather fell apart. You must have loved him very much. Well, to be perfectly honest, it was it was never a passionate, in love sort of love. We both knew that. I was very fond of him, though. And as time went on, became very dependent on him. I can't imagine you being dependent on anybody. <laughs> oh, I used to be very self-sufficient, but as you get older, you, you get more vulnerable. Well, yeah, that's certainly true in my case. I uh, need all the support I can get. Was your wife not supportive? Uh, Deirdre? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, till I blew it. Another story I'm very proud of. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to pry. Oh, that's all right, that's right. I'm uh, only too happy to talk about it. In fact, I'd like uh, everything between us to be out in the open. No secrets. Everyone has their skeletons in their own particular cupboards, Ken. So what happened? Well, looking back on it, I suppose it was all rather commonplace, really. I felt something of a failure and it needed my ego boosting. The series of wrong decisions you made once. Yeah. Only I didn't think that at the time. I actually believed I was in love. I'm sure you did. You're not the kind of man to have a superficial affair. Who was she? Oh, just a girl I worked with. Didn't last. I was even weedy enough to hope for my wife's forgiveness. That was weedy. Anyone can make a mistake. Certainly made mine. Wow. Be unrealistic to expect, at our age, a totally clean slate. But the important thing is not to let the past overshadow our future. Our future? Well, I'm sorry. Uh, did that sound presumptuous? No. It sounded nice. To friendship. I'm not sure I should serve you, lady. I am over 18. Do you want to see my birth certificate? You mean it's not in the National Archives, along with all our other historic treasures? Oh, I love it when you two get your clothes now. So what have I done now, apart from being lovelier and thinner than you? You two have got a lot in common. Your hub is in Southampton, his wife's in New Zealand. It was a statement of fact. What's wrong with that? Listen, your loveliness, next time you try to drop me in it with Reg Holdsworth, you won't be quite so lovely. Valkyrie tonics. <laughs> I know it must have been a terrible job to do, but well, it's not as if you're going to have to clean the drains every week. That's a consolation. Oh, Deirdre, 
You must be another one lumbered with the entire day today as well. Me? What way? Well, all the work. Well, your boss swanned off to a council meeting. Alf? No, he was only gone for a couple of hours this morning. Couple? But he and Harry Potts sit on the same committee, don't they? Yeah, even so, he was back for elevenses. So, the little weasel lied to me. Right, now we know exactly where we stand. I suppose this means you're definitely going to give in your notice. Oh, on the contrary, maybe. I'm going to stay put. I'll show Potts when it comes to being devious which one of us is the better man. <laughs> your ex let me down today. Do you know I was counting on him to help me organise this flaming pub quiz I've got to do, but he says he's no time. Oh, he's doing a spot of heavy courting again. What's all this about the pub quiz? Ah, the Newton and Ridley Super Quiz Challenge trophy, no less. Oh, it's not important. We don't have to enter. It's not Tush. obligatory. Tush, tush. Of course, the Rovers must have a team, and you're looking for the man to organise it. <gasps> you and I, my dear Mrs Gilroy, we must collaborate closely on this one to organise what is known as a game plan. So might I suggest we get together later this evening, your place or mine. You see, your quiz, Norman, it satisfies an age-old human instinct, the thirst for knowledge. Now, picture to yourself. Ancient Britons sat round some fire in a damp, nasty cave. Now, they've no television to watch, have they? No. No. So they are asking each other's teasers, you see. Sort of, um, how many teeth does a saber-toothed tiger? Name three methods of skinning a rat. And they... Where are you going now? I'm trying to educate you. Here. Just a minute. There you are. Hiya. What are you doing around here? Yeah, just a bit of shopping in. Shopping up soon. Yeah, it's going to be a hairdresser's of her. Yeah. Your window's going on. I'm not falling out yet. <laughs> no, not yet. Uh, listen, the thing is, I might have another job for you. Uh, will you be around tonight? Mr. Well, Watt, can be. We do have a store to open, you know. Uh, pop round about sixes, will you? Yeah. Okay. Great. See you then. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. Go on then. How many teeth has a saber-toothed tiger got? Get the car out, will you? I discovered something about Councillor Potts last night, Rita. Uh -huh. He was not at an all-day council meeting as he purported to be. The meeting was over by lunchtime. In other words, the man is a flagrant liar. Oh, now, Derek, do be careful. I mean, he is a councillor. Yes, I know, but it doesn't entitle him to, to loaf around while I do his work as well as mine. No, but he'll have pals in the right places. Strings he can pull. Yes, I've no doubt, but I refuse to be a puppet dancing to Councillor Potts's tune, as he will find out. But, no, don't, don't worry, uh, Mavis. I don't intend to tackle him head on. Oh, when I think of yesterday, all that struggling and sweating and straining to clear those drains while Potts was lolling around somewhere with his cronies. No, no, I'm going to bring that man to heel. I shall study him, I shall seek out his weaknesses, and then when I am ready and not before, I shall strike. Yes, but... Right, time I was off. Don't want to be late. That's exactly what Potts would want. Oh, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Mm. Bye-bye, Rita. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Derek. Do you know, it's been a... God send this feud with Councillor Potts, oh, hasn't it? Rita, how can you say a thing like that? Well, it's given him an incentive to stick to his job. What more do you want? It's going to be very hard work, you know, getting this quiz night at the Rovers up off the ground and running. Well, I don't know why you got yourself into this. The Times, you said to me, don't volunteer for anything. True? But to every rule, Norman, there is an exception. Mrs. Gilroy is a handsome woman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you mean by uh, Well, now I know what you're hoping to get out of this. Well, I won't deny Norman. There could be certain, uh, what shall we say, fringe benefits out of uh, helping Mrs. Gilroy with this one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, just be careful, that's all. Careful? What are you going on about, careful? Well, you know, she's a lot of woman. True. There are certain people in the world who can testify that Reg Holdsworth is a whole lot of man. Don't get me wrong, Norman. My main motive for taking over the squiz business, purely intellectual. Oh, I see. So you're just showing off. Well, if that is how the common citizenry see my actions, so be it. I mean, I can't tell... Yeah, what well, what happens if you can't answer any of the questions? Highly unlikely, Norman, that isn't it. All right. When did Columbus discover America? I know this one. Uh, who, who invented the steam engine? Name the captain of the English football team. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Anybody can pull a couple of twisters out the bank, can't they? Well, give me the yeah, but that's the kind of thing they're going to ask you, Reg. You better be careful here, eh? you know. We might oh. not let yourself down here. You might be letting down better by. Shh! That's a good point, is that, actually, don't I? Hey, oh. just to tell you, we're willing, me and our jar. Well, then. Well, then for what? Well, for your quiz team, you know, Rovers. Yeah, you can put our names down. It'd be great, won't it? Talk about mastermind. <laughs> you know, you can't be serious, can't you? Can't you? <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, good morning, Councillor Potts. It is still morning, isn't it? Oh, yes. Still 20 minutes to go. Don't come the acid with me. Acid? Aye. I have wider duties than to this school, as you well know. Duties to the community. Oh, I realise that. As Deputy Chair of Special Purposes, I was lending weight to a delegation this AM. Didn't I tell you yesterday? All you told me yesterday was that you were going to an all-day council meeting. I assumed you were away this morning to recuperate after your marathon session. I know it was a marathon, because you never came back to school. Aye, we're a lengthy meeting. Still, if you have it to do... They must like the sound of their own voices, some of your fellow councillors. I take exception to that. The public doesn't know what we put in. Or take out. No, I'm full of admiration. It's people like you, councillor, that make local government, as we know it here in England, the envy of the world. Are we going to be all right for chips, Gail? Oh, yeah, there's another bag out the back. Right. Hey, is Mike still away? Yeah, he won't be back for a few more days. Yes, he rang me last night. You know, I don't know, Gail. I think in my next life I'm going to be a businessman. You know, trips here, trips there. Beats worrying about whether you've got enough chips, doesn't it? <laughs> Cheer up. I'll take you out for a drink tonight. OK, right, you're on. Hey, you're a pair of gadabouts these days, aren't you, you and Martin? Why do you, I suppose, when you've got your very own au pair in the house, you never stop for a babysitter, are you? Well, tonight I've got two. Martin won't be coming with us because he's got to stay at home and work. Oh. And if he thinks I'm sitting in all night with no telly so he and Carmel can concentrate, he's got another thing coming. Right, then we'll have a girls' outing. Yeah. You know, I'm amazed the way that Martin sticks at this nurse's training. I mean, he really works at it, doesn't he? Well, it's another of Carmel's little uses. She keeps him at it. If ever he feels like skiving, she gives him a little pep talk. Reminds him how dedicated they have to be. Oh, you're out at Florence Nightingale. <laughs> hey. She's a bit prissy, though, isn't she, this Carmel? Uh, no, she is not. She's a very nice girl. I will not have a word said against her. She allows you and me to go to the pub, doesn't she? All right, all right. Take it all back. Is it quite right what you said this morning, Norman? That's a better by top executive. I can't go putting my public image in jeopardy with all this pub quiz biz. Yeah, quite right, it'd be madness. Yes, yes, so after mature consideration, I've decided not only not to be in it at all, but not even captain. No, mm. that will be your function. Me? Team captain? No way. Yes, yes, you'll be ideal. Two pints, please, darling. Because you are young, you are bright, and you have no reputation to lose. But I'm no good at quizzes. Oh, you are too modest, you. Well-educated intellectual. Only compared to you. Listen, listen, Reg. Hmm? When I was at school, do you know what my nickname was, you know, in the playground? Yes, yeah, Curly. So I've always believed. Why? What's that? No, 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 no. That's, that's recent. They used to call me... 40. 40? 40 watts. You see, the reckoned I was a bit dim. And some of the kids, well, they thought my head was the same shape as a light bulb. Yes. There's nothing crueler than one school fellows. Or more perceptive. So you see, I'd be no use in the quiz. No, 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 no. Thank you very much. Lord. Look, don't you see? This is your chance to prove the schoolyard scoffers wrong. There you go. Cheers, Norman. Cheers. I have every confidence in you, you know. You sit down, Deirdre. I'll get the drinks. <laughs> morning, Liz. Oh, morning, I'm like. I'm glad I've seen you. Oh, I'm uh, with Emily. She's just getting the drinks. I know, I'm not stopping. I, I've got to get back to work. I just wonder what you were doing on uh, on Friday night, you know. Shyness. That's your problem, you know. I am shy. Underneath. Well, you hide it really well. Anyway, you haven't answered me question. What are you doing on Friday? Because I'd like to take you out. You know, go for a nice meal somewhere. I don't think so, Doug. Now, there's progress. At least you know what my name is. Of course, if you've got other plans for Friday, then... Uh, I've no plans between now and Christmas. Well, go on, then. I won't bite. Neither will I. Well, how about a drink? In here, if you like. Now, that's safe enough, isn't it? Oh. All right, then. I'll meet you in here for a drink. Great. About eight o'clock. I'm going to take it from there. Right. I'm looking forward to it. Was he making a nuisance of himself? No. Well, not really. Ah, he's a nice enough bloke. Thinks he's God's gift to women, I suppose. But then don't they all? Even the ones who keep it quiet. Cheers. Ah, Mrs Gilroy. Just the lady I came to see. Um, might I have a few words, really? Quiz night arrangements, etc. Just organise it, Reg, however you want. Yes, yes, but um, there are one or two things I'd like to discuss. Go on, then, if you must. In private. Well, good lad. Well, uh, go and get some dinner now, eh? You're looking pleased with yourself, aren't you? I am. I finally managed to get my foot in the door with drop-dead Deirdre. Deirdre? 
you do Barlow? She's been giving me drop dead looks up to now. I'm taking her out on Friday night. I say this, Doug. You're a real worker. You're not just the motors either. You get on with that Montego. I'll see you later, all right? Will do. Privilege, Mrs. Gilroy, being admitted to the inner sanctum. And it is appreciated, oh yes. So come on. What's so delicate about these arrangements that they've got to be discussed in private? Well, mm -hmm. See, it's a mistake, in my opinion, to discuss, well, management plans in front of the uh, rank and file. I mean, generally, it doesn't discuss his plans of battle in front of the troops, does it? The cannon fodder is going to chuck over Oh, you, the come on. I've got a pub to run. I should be behind that bar. Oh, yes, of course. And may I say, Mrs. Gilroy, in all sincerity, I admire the way you do it. I mean, a woman on her own, running a, running a business all by herself. Wonderful. I've had plenty of practice, Cocker. Yes. Well, if there is any advice, uh, professional or otherwise, that I can give, I mean, feel free, you know, I really, really mean that. Well, I can honestly promise you, if the occasion ever arises, I will definitely not hesitate. Not for a moment will I hesitate. Now, if that's all you wanted... No. <coughs> No, I, uh, I wanted to speak to you in private because it concerns one of your staff, young Raquel. I just thought I should warn you that I shall, uh, I shall be asking her to be my uh, mistress. Pardon? Of ceremonies. <laughs> hey, I had to wobble in there for a minute, didn't I? Go on, I did. No. No, well, uh, I mean, seriously, though, she will be very, very good for the quiz night. I mean, you know, your hostess, as it were, be very uh, decorative. Feel free. It's all right with her, it's all right with me. Oh, thanks very much. Yeah, no, um, if I was looking for a, uh, a mistress of the other variety, <sighs> Raquel would not be my choice because she's too callow or too immature. No, I would be looking for a more, more mature sort of, more womanly sort of woman. Bring your drink. Where are we going? Back in bar. What I can do for you? Well, I hope so. I'm looking for somebody. A Dave Matthews. Thought he was a customer. What in his car seen to then? No, I'm afraid not. Who did you say he was looking for? Dave Matthews. Sorry, don't know him. Well, I heard he was working round here. He's a dark haired fella, late 30s. Well, sounds like any bloke round here that. Don't ring a bell. What are you waiting for? That's personal. It's personal business. Sorry, can't help you. You and your own here, then? As you can see, yeah? You haven't taken on a mechanic lately? Well, yeah. As a matter of fact, he did. Mm hmm oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, young lad, about 18. Good mechanic as well, actually, but... found himself something better, you know, so... If that's all you wanted, I've got a lot to be getting on with it. Yeah, right. Sorry to have told you. No trouble, mate. At least I hope not. Norman, you are either on my team or you are not. And there's no half measures here. I need you in this one, right? So please yourself that if you cannot help me, I in all conscience cannot recommend you for a merit rise in my annual reports at the head office, can I? Oh, go on, then. You've twisted my arm. Oh, good. Glad to see I can rely upon your better nature. Good grief. Have you shifted them goalposts like I told you? Oh, yes, goalposts have been moved. Now, I was puzzled for a moment, but I think I understand. Hey, let me see. What the hell are you doing? You were trying to catch me out, weren't you? 
deliberately testing my knowledge on school fire regulations. No smoking in classroom, corridor, or any enclosed area. You do, Lally. Go on, admit it. You set a trap for me on fire regulations. Bag of the fire regulations. Oh, come on, come on. I know you're joking, but what about these children? They might think you meant it. Yeah, mental. I don't think I've ever felt saner in my life. Ah. It's the uh, the loft. I want to do something with the roof space. Have you done anything like that before? Yeah, sure I have. How much money do you want to spend? Well, as little as possible, but I do want, you know. Oh, what a job. Yeah, I knew you'd say that. Well, uh, let's take a look. You tell me what you want and I'll let you have a quote. Well, assuming the price is right, when could you do it? Well, this job I'm doing over the road should be finished by weekend, so I could start whenever you want. Oh, good. OK, you see, I want to put an observatory in. You what? You know, an observatory, set up my telescope. Oh, like Juddle Bank on in your roof space. <laughs> no problem. Hey, Rackle, get your man a pint here. He looks like he's had a hard day's graft, yeah, mate. Yeah, have. Cheers. Not seen Doug hanging around this afternoon, have you? Oh, hasn't he turned up? Oh, he turned up this morning, yeah. And I went for my dinner, I left him hard at it, it got back and he'd vanished. I haven't seen him since. But I've had this guy hanging round asking for a Dave Matthews. Who? Huh? Well, that's what I thought. Then it struck me, Dave Matthews, Doug Murray. Same initials, innit? So they are, yeah. Anyway, cheers. Didn't let on to this guy. Just says I don't know any Dave Matthews. And he started giving me a description. It's definitely Doug he's after. So what does he want, this fellow, then? Oh, I don't know. Just said it's personal. Well, I'll tell you what, Kev. Your man looking for Dougie sounds to me like he's somebody else's husband, so he does. Yeah, that's what I thought. Because no doubt about it, he likes the ladies, doesn't he? Mm, he's a smart fella too, remembers the golden rule. Never give them your own name. So he hasn't been seen since then? No, and we pulled out at work as well. Look, I don't care what Doug does in his own time, and I don't care what name he does it under. But once he goes missing in my time, well, he's no good to me. So, uh, what we're talking about, lay and strengthen flooring and then use your roof light. Oh, is that tricky? Yeah, a lot of it's done right. Like you don't want a dormer. No, no, I want it flush with the roof, and I won't be able to open it. No problem. Is it a standard roof light? Oh, I should have the finest observatory in the street. Which of the neighbours is it you're interested in there? No, no, I'll be looking at the stars. Hi. Hello. Oh, what are you doing here? It's a job for your landlord. If the price is right. Uh, well, I'll do me some tonight and uh, drop in a quote tomorrow. Drop it in when I'm here and you'll get a cup of tea. On sympathy. You're on. See you then. See you now. Bye. Good lad, Kelly. Get Neil to do your observatory. I didn't do it to please you, you know. I just happened to bump into him. Yeah, you fancy him, don't you? None of your business. I'm entitled to fancy who I like. Unlike you, you're only allowed to fancy your fiance. Which reminds me, have you told her about the observatory yet? Because I'd love to be a fly on the wall when you do. What do you mean? Oh, come on, Curly. There's Kimberly hoarding money for the poshest honeymoon wedding and marital love nest since Fergie's, and there's you frittering good money where the mysteries of the universe. To a girl like Kimberly, you've got your priorities all wrong, my lad. Right, David's asleep. The other two are fighting it, but they won't be long. Oh, don't worry, Gail, I'll keep an ear open for them. Well, you two look like you've got enough to occupy yourself. Oh, we have. Oh, I wonder if a pint might just lubricate me brain. I could just pop down to their homes with you just for one. Oh, no. That's not fair on Carmel. Oh, I don't <laughs> mind. You go if you want to, man. No, he's stopping here. You keep his nose to the grindstone, Carmel. You are going to sail through these exams, aren't you? No, oh, I'm not. Yes, you are. Because me and Carmel are going to make sure we do. Right. <laughs> I'm off to meet yeah, Alma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on, enjoy yourselves. Yeah, we will. Bye. 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 Oh, you know, I knew this would oh. start. I'll see Sean. Yeah? Yeah. Mama, I want you. Carmel's coming! Hello. Hi, Kim. Hey, let me take your coat. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'll just shut the door. Oh, sorry. Drawing, are you? Designs, the kind of designs. You two don't mind me, just carry on as if I'm not here. Well, I suppose I can go to the Rovers if you want. No, no, I don't want to go to the Rovers. Oh, well, shall we have a session on the rug? Pardon? You know very well we're making a rug. I don't want to go to the Rovers because Reg Holsworth will be there. 
driving people crazy with his plans for this quiz night. He's already blackmailed me into being the captain. Captain? Well, that's quite a compliment. No, it isn't. It's what they call a poison chalice. If we lose, I'll get the blame, according to Reg. We are in a tetchy mood, aren't we? We'll do an hour on the rug. It's great therapy. Auntie Elaine's sleeping again, thanks to rug making. No, I'm not in a mood. Sometimes, Curly, I think you're not into home making at all. Oh, he is. Tell Kimberly about your plans for the house, Curly. No, oh, she... What plans? Uh, no, no, it's nothing. It's nothing, really, nothing. Oh, it's too modest. He's had a build around today, getting an estimate. Have you? Well, come on, tell me all about it. Well, it's just, uh, I was thinking about, you know, the attic. I thought I might get it, um converted, you know, and make the attic space into a... Mm -hmm. into a... a usable room. Oh, Curly, that's wonderful. Well, it'll add a lot of value to the house, won't it? And it'll give us a third bedroom. So when the existing one's a nursery... A nursery? We'll still have a guest room. And when we've got children, well, we want to move. Well, so they've got a garden to run around in. But till we do. Oh, Norman, you are a little homemaker after all. Come here while I give you a cuddle. Oh, come here. You know, Mike's miles away, Martin's working. I mean, why is some talent here chatting us off, eh? Oh, your prayers are being answered. Here it comes now. Oh, no, it's a judgment. Evening, Reg. Good evening, ladies. It's a pleasure to see you both. And in one moment, I shall have a tiny request to make. But if you'll excuse me now, poule un moment. <laughs> French, no? He's going to get us for his quiz now. Oh, no, he is not, you know. Half of your <laughs> finest lager, please, Mrs Gilroy. Can you partake of a libation? I'll have a small, large gin with you, Reg. All right. Um, did you find time to pass on my message to Miss Wilson, you? No, I didn't. Raquel, Rambo wants to ask you something. Oh, yeah. Raquel, you know that I'm in charge of the uh, quiz arrangement. Well, I need to get a team together, and I was going to ask you, Raquel. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I will. Right. Oh, that's great, Mr. Hilsworth. Oh, thanks. Right, now, uh, what I want? I mean, they think I'm some kind of a bimbo, people round here. Well, I went to school, same as them. I watch educational telly, you know, Wheel of Fortune, so forth. Yeah. And I better know a lot more than them has called me a bimbo. Yeah. Um, well, what, what, what I mainly wanted, Raquel, what I mainly wanted... See, you have, um, stature and, uh, poise. You know, probably your work as a model. Oh. So, what I wanted you to be was a sort of, um... Bimbo. No, no, you'll be working for me. Do you know, I'm sick of people thinking that I'm only capable of standing around looking decorative. No, no, look, I won't be in the quiz myself. There's no way that we will be decorative. Far from it. I'll drink to that. No, just think about it, will you, Raquel? For me, please. And I'll come back to you. All right, excuse me. <clears throat> right. I'll get straight to the point, ladies. Um, will you be in one of my quizzes? Oh, how many have it? Well, two to start with. You see, there is a problem between you and me. I'm getting a lot of volunteers who I wouldn't want on my side in a game of conkers, never mind a quiz. So, <clears throat> how to short, uh, well, sort wheat from chaff. <laughs> Answer. <laughs> Eliminator. Oh, you wouldn't want us. We bit chaff. Mm. No, no, you ladies. Brains home to a sharpness on the anvil of commerce. <laughs> oh, no, you know, besides our husbands wouldn't like it. Your husbands? Mm. I took you ladies for liberated women. Oh, no, no, that's all a front, isn't it? It's our husbands. They make us pretend to be liberated. No. Oh. Keep smiling to yourself, Derek. Do I? Yeah. Well, if it's something amusing or a joke, perhaps I could share it with you. Oh, no, it's no joke. No, if I keep smiling, it's because I'm actually looking forward to going to work tomorrow. Oh, that's wonderful. I knew you'd settle in. I crossed the Rubicon today, Mavis. I went on to the offensive against pots. Oh, Derek, now, do be careful. Oh, I've got superior brain power, Mavis. I fancy I can surpass him in cunning. I've already begun my campaign. I intend to do to that man what superpowers do to irritating small countries. Destabilise him. My brain against his. There can only be one outcome. Oh, oh dear. Well, you picked the right subject, I'll give you that. Hey? Some of the best liars in the world, astronomers. 
Oh, very funny. Wasn't it Copernicus who discovered that the world wasn't the centre of the universe and dared not tell his bosses? Come on, Edge. Oh, I know he was a professional and you're only an amateur. But on the evidence of last night's cop-out, I'd say you were in for a very starry future. I was going to tell her, right? It not matter to me whether you tell her or not. It just seems a very funny way to treat somebody you're going to live with for the rest of your life. Look, I, I know Kimberly, and last night wasn't a good time to tell her anything. OK, I'll get the message. I'll keep my nose out. Yeah, why don't you? I will. Good idea. Mind you, you might be better off taking a tip from old Copernicus. Oh, what's that, then? He made sure the truth wasn't made public till after his death. <sighs> Just your paper, Jim. Thanks, Rita. Take it to bed with me, help me get to sleep. It must be really difficult trying to sleep in the day. Ah, well, it's all right if you get into a routine. You know, I once knew a fellow who did 22 years on nights, you know. Oh, goodness me, well, I hope he wasn't married. Oh, well, I have to tell you, it was one of the most successful marriages I ever came across. Well, I can't have seen anything of his wife. Exactly, Mavis. <laughs> oh, God! No, no, the funny thing is, it's absolutely true, oh. honestly. Oh, all right, Jim. Oh. All right, You come for this. Uh, to be honest, Rita, no. I've come to tell you, I might not be able to get to your car till tomorrow at the earliest. Oh, come on. It's been booked in for a week and I need it tomorrow. I know, but I'm sorry. Well, Doug's not turned in. I'm on my own. What am I supposed to do now? Well, you could always take it somewhere else. Oh, right. get charged there for brake pipes or wherever else they can find. Well, if you want me to do it, it's going to have to wait his place in the queue. Listen, Kevin, if you're really pushed, I don't mind popping across and giving you a hand, you know. You've only just finished the shift, haven't you? Well, I don't sleep properly anyway. <laughs> he must be knackered. No, not at all. Oh, OK. If you're sure, Jim. All right, then. I'd best go and get out of this fancy dress, then, no, eh? No, no rush. Have your breakfast first. I'll uh, give you the bell if he turns up, all right? Fine. And, uh, I'll see you right, don't worry. Good man. Uh, see ya. Well, Rita, looks like I'll be needing that key after all. Thank you. See you now. Come on, Tracy. It's gone half past eight. I don't want you late. There's no one here. I don't have to go to assembly anymore. Oh, since when? Since I got into fifth form. And that's official, is it? Well, not official. Just an unwritten rule, really. Mm. Damn! I beg your pardon? Well, it's these shoes. They're about shot. There is nothing wrong with those shoes. It's just the laces, that's all. It's not just the laces. The soles are wearing down, and they're too small. I am not buying you a pair of those great big bother boots. They're not boots, they're shoes. And lots of kids do wear them for school. Yeah, that's not why you want them, is it? Well, if you got me some, I would wear them for school. Look, if you want them so badly, get them out of your clothes allowance. Do you agree school essentials don't come out of my clothing allowance? Those shoes are not school essentials. So, nice try. Shame you failed. Now get your coat on and get to that assembly. I'm underprivileged, mate. No, you're not. You're just not subtle enough yet, that's all. <laughs> Hello. Hiya. Uh, two packs of chewy and a bottle of pop, please. Sounds like first to work. I'm not kidding. And there's nobody to uh, make me a cup of tea when the need arises. It's not like when I worked for you at number seven, Mrs Sullivan. Well, I don't remember trolling over there with Beth China and Doyleys. I wouldn't think you'd have got much change out of Angie Freeman. Well, then you'd be failing to take into account my enormous capacity of charm, Mrs Wilton. Not that I'm in the habit of uh, demanding things from attractive young ladies. Oh! Do you find Angie Freeman attractive, do you? Mavis, what a thing to say. Oh, well, I wasn't trying to pry. It was merely an, an academic question. Well, I'll try to answer it as academically as I can. You see, the ladies are a bit of a hobby with me, Mrs Wilton. I happen to find them all attractive. I'm married as well as a single. Well, I should imagine that would involve you in a strong element of risk, Mr Mitchell. Always an element of risk with a dangerous hobby, Mrs Wilton. And please, it's Neil. My friends call me Neil. So, have you nearly finished in Rosamond Street, Neil? Well, not far to go now, and then I'm back at number seven, would you believe? Indulging your hobby again, perhaps. Well, you never know your luck, Mrs Wilton. But officially, it's converting the loft. Eh? Hey? Yeah, Curly's having an observatory up there. Somewhere to put his telescope. Oh, astronomy! Yeah, Curly's a bit of a stargazer on the quiet. Well, he's going to a lot of trouble and expense to look at a few stars. Well, I think it's very nice there are still people left in the world with real hobbies. Absolutely. And when he gets bored staring at the stars, he can always point his telescope at your eyes, Mrs Wilton. You see the ears on the back of your hand from that new window I'm putting in. See ya. See ya. Have you stuck it up for winter? I thought I'd find a little corner and hibernate till you'd been and gone. It's me telling Mrs Wilton what a beautiful relationship we are. Nothing personal, but I'd rather things were left just as they are till I've moved out. You're moving out? Kimberly is hardly going to want to lodge around the place when she's dragged him up the aisle. Uh, Kimberly? Kimberly? 
girl is intended. Oh, he's getting married, is he? That's the general idea. Oh, well, I wish him luck. He's going to need it. So how's your problems? Sorted out yet? If you mean I'm about me my wife, yeah. Still, it's not such a bad thing, is it? As long as you're happy. Oh, I'm happy enough. <sighs> Especially when I bump into old friends. And I can see why that Kimberly won't want you around once she gets the ring on her finger. Much too attracted by her. You say the nicest things. <laughs> Only when I mean them. Actually, I'm surprised to see you working for Curly again after all the hassle he gave you over the downstairs windows. Yeah, it's work, isn't it? There's not a lot of it about. Well, it's nice to see you again. Best get on. I'm supposed to be going into work this afternoon. Yeah. Uh, Angie. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, um, I don't, I don't want to seem pushy or anything, but, well, what would you say, you know, if, if I asked you out sometime? Do you mean out? As in the pair of us? <sighs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> what, you mean you, you go? Yeah. <laughs> great. Uh, great. Um, wh what about tonight? Uh, I've got to come round and measure up, so we could pop out after. Fine. <sighs> okay. See, the secret of the great quiz master is his credibility as a man of intellect, plus his ability to recognise the comic moment. <laughs> I mean, take Ma Magnus Magnuson. Oh, yes. Titan of his trade. <sighs> Serious man. Norseman. A man whose ancestors come out to the very earliest recorded myths of time. And yet, a man who can raise a quip and, and a smile at the direst of moments. Oh, yes. Mr. Watts, hmm? have you been listening to me? I've just been to... You were a married man, weren't you? Eh? Married. You were a married man? Yes, yes. What's that got to do with Magnus Magnus? And I failed to see. Unless, of course, you are referring to the elements of chance which plays an indisputable role in both marriage and quiz games. And you've no regrets? <sighs> what? About not being married anymore? What sort of question's that? I just want to know, that's all. Oh, no, no. No regrets of being on my own, really, no. Not at all? <sighs> well, it's a very difficult question to answer that, isn't it? I mean, I will admit I do miss a constant companion. You know, somebody to turn to in times of need and that. <sighs> so it wasn't uh, all bad, then? No, no, no. Very early on, it was... Uh, very good. Well, you know, quite good. <sighs> but then, to say, it was very early on that. And do you think that the fact that uh, you didn't have any children had anything to do with you and Mrs Holdsworth splitting up? Children? Mm, yeah, well, it might have had some direct bearing on our demise as a two, I suppose. So, obviously, it was an issue that uh, she and she had uh, debated on and decided on? Well, not really, no. Oh. So you didn't make a conscious decision not to have children? No, I didn't know, but uh, Mrs. Holes had some very strong ideas about the matter, actually. Oh. So it wasn't mutual, then? No. And you didn't mind? What? The fact it wasn't a conscious decision. Conscious decision? <laughs> Nothing to do with conscious decision, Norman. You never had any choice in the matter, me. After three weeks of married bliss, you wouldn't let me get anywhere near her. <laughs> <laughs> right, look at her. Hey, come on. <laughs> 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 oh, love, don't let this quiz business get you down. I mean, we've weathered this storm like we've weathered the rest. I want no to do with quizzes, Betty. This is a darts and dominoes house, and it always has been. You never know, little Reggie might just surprise you. Oh, yes, he well might. Might just pack the place. We might just sell a lot of beer. We might all end up millionaires. But that's not the point, is it? Well, if that's what the brewery's after, love. I don't care what the brewery's after, Betty. I care what I'm after. This is my pub and my home. I don't take too kindly to some grey-suited adding-up machine waltzing in here and telling me what tune I've got to play on my organ grinder. But if it is a success and it does earn money, they'll get off your back, surely? Maybe. Look, love, you don't have to be around when the quiz is on. There's enough of us here to cope with things, eh, Liz? Yeah. And what about what he dreams up next? How do you mean? You don't honestly think how Mr Wilmore is going to stop at a quiz, do you? He's got about as much interest in quizzes as I have. Well, why is he making you do one? Because it's called harassment, Betty. First off, it's a pub quiz. Then it's a football team. And then it's whatever else he can dream up. Oh, no, Betty. 
This pub quiz is just the thin end of the wedge. What Mr Wilmore really wants is me out. <laughs> Aye, that's her done now. I'll just leave these keys back with Rita and then I'll go and get some kept before me shift. Not going to get much now, eh? Oh, a couple of hours, that'll be me. Thanks for giving up your day, Jim. Been appreciated. Not at all. So you uh, haven't heard from your man then yet? <sighs> no. No reply from that number they give me. Beginning to think he never really existed. Well, I hope he's all right, because uh, he strikes me as a decent enough bloke. Yeah, he is. Good worker as well. Mind you, just don't know how far to take it. What do you mean? Oh, I've got an address there I could check out. I just don't want him thinking I'm going around poking my nose in where it's not wanted. Right, I know what you mean. But on the other hand, if he's in trouble or he's sick or something, I feel those like should help the guy out, you know? Mm. Well, one thing's for sure, if Baldwin finds out he hasn't been turning up, it won't be worth his while coming back at all. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I suppose I should give it a shot, shouldn't I? Well, let us know how you get on anyway, Kev, all right? Yeah, we'll do, and, uh, thanks, Jim. OK, thanks, man. Cheers. All right. See ya. Hey, and today's just between you and me, all right? Hey, no problem. Cheers, mate. See ya. You know. Okay. Oh, hi, oh, Tracy. Oh, hiya. Okay. I uh, wanted to catch you at school, but I just didn't get the time. What's up? Uh, well, it's a bit of a cheat, really, I know, but if you're not doing anything tonight, I wonder if you'd be interested in doing me a big favour. It depends. There's a fiver in it. I'm interested. <laughs> you're messing me, devil. Hey, come on. My mum's got me on a tight budget now, you know. All right, fair enough. So, what is it? Well, it's just that I've arranged to go out with a friend to the pictures, and her babysitter's let her down. I told her that you might step in. So it's a her, is it? Yes, it's a her. Does that bother you? Not at all. I'm just being nosy. So what's she like? You'll find out when I take you around there. Come on, give us a clue. What? So you and your mother can have a good gossip? Yeah. I'll pick you up at seven, OK? All right, I'll see you. All right, bye. Oh, yeah. Washing your hair? I do make the effort sometimes, you know. Have you got a date as well? As well as who? That'd be telling. Come on, has somebody been asking you out? Yeah. Well, I hope he's not a married man. No. He's divorced. Oh, you are joking, I hope. No, he's picking me up at seven. Are you serious? Yeah. You know him, actually. Hey. Oh. Your dad? Yeah. Oh. I'm babysitting for his new girlfriend's kid. Oh, well, I hope he's paying you. Of course he is. Did he, uh, did he mention who she was, this, uh, this new girlfriend? Why are you interested? Oh, just nosy. No, he wouldn't tell me anything. He said he had to wait till I met her. Well, you'd better get your own work done, then. Oh, I'll take it with me. You haven't told me why you're getting all dolled up yet, either. I'm not getting all dolled up. I was washing my hair because it was dirty and I'm meeting a mate in the Rovers later on. Was that all? Oh, what do you want for your money? A pair of shoes. Oh, God, you're not still on about them flipping things, are you? Well, I wouldn't be, but this really mean old woman that I have to live with says I have to come out of my clothing allowance. Look, I'll tell you what. You put up half the money and I'll find the rest. What do you say? Great, Mum, ta. Hey, and in return, I'll give you the lowdown on this new woman. Oh. <laughs> Uh, sorry to trouble you. Looking for a Doug Murray. Oh, sorry, you've got the wrong house. Oh, hang on. This is the address he's given me. Look. I don't care what anybody's given you. This is my house. I live here. I've never heard of a Doug Murray. So how come his car's outside? Well, that's my car if it's any of your business. <laughs> Look, he's been coming to work in that car for the last week. I know these things are my car mechanic. Look, are you going to stop pestering me or do I have to call the police? Look, listen, I don't know what's going on here, but I'm his boss. Look, there's my van. He works for me. Look, I'm a mate just trying to do the guy a good turn. Yeah, well, do me a good turn and go away before I court law.
Come on in, Tracy. Make yourself a home. Thanks. Yes, well, um, through here's the telly. And um, in here's the kitchen. There's um, coffee and tea and some milk over there in the fridge. Uh, plus a couple of cold cans in case you fancy a drink later. Little snack if you're peckish. Great, thanks. Uh, Mark's sulking because he can't go around to his mates. Right. And, um, and we'd both be grateful if you wouldn't mention this to any of your mates at school. He likes to think he's a bit too old to manage without babysitters nowadays. Don't worry, I won't say anything. Great. Well, we'll leave you to it. And we should be back about ten. Are you going for a drink? Well, I don't want to keep you up. I'll be OK. You go and enjoy yourselves. Oh, right. <laughs> right. Thanks, Tracy. Bye. 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 Hey, uh, once I get the floorboard, did you think about some sort of covering, keep the dust down? Oh, can't you treat it with something? I've always fancied the idea of a wooden floor. Right, see, I could sand them down, make a good job of that. All oh, right, and you put plasterboard up to the new window? Yeah, that'd be cheapest. Hey, you could, uh, you could keep one wall brick, treat that, could look nice. Oh, right, so, uh, what's it gonna cost, then? Well, here's a guesstimate. It's about a grand, no more, and that's doing a proper job. No, I want a proper job doing it. Oh, excuse me. Hiya, yeah, come in. Hello, love. Hi. Hi. Ah, Kimberly, this is Neil, the builder I was telling you about. He's doing the loft. Oh, very pleased to meet you. He's just come round to do some measuring so we can order some materials, but he's off now. Oh, well, I'm glad I caught you, because there's a few things I want to know. No, oh, don't worry about that. You ask me. Uh, Neil's in a bit of a rush, aren't you? Well, no, actually, I'm not. I'm you know, just waiting for Angie. Angie? Didn't she mention we were going out? Oh, you and Angie? Yeah. That's why she's getting ready. Oh, isn't that nice, Curly? <laughs> That's wonderful, yeah. Well, then, while you're waiting for you can tell me on exactly what you're planning on doing up there. That's going to make such a difference to the house. <laughs> All right, then. Here's one for you, and you'll never get this one. Right. <coughs> Who said on his deathbed either that wallpaper goes or I do? Well, I don't know. I mean, how's anybody supposed to know that? Oh, come on, Armand. It's easy. Great British writer. Um, no count. Oscar Wilde. How did you know that? Natural genius, love. That's how I knew that. <laughs> Well, can't wait to see what you know that one. What's that, Martin? Who said on his deathbed either that wallpaper goes or I do? I don't know. Well, come on, have a guess. I won't if you don't mind. But if you change the word wallpaper for quizzes, it might just prove to be my swan song. Yes, Deirdre, really love. Gin and tonic, please, Bet. You're looking very nice tonight. Are you off out somewhere? No, I'm just having a drink. Do me a favour, will you? Don't mention the word quizzes. Quizzes. See? You've not been in here five minutes. Already you're at it. Ooh, well, essentials, uh, obviously some of the walk, mm -hmm. a bit of electricity for your plugs and your light, and then a window for your natural light. You see, it's all very simple, really. <laughs> I wonder where Angie's got to. Oh, a woman's privileged to keep a man waiting. Yeah, but you don't want to be hanging around, do you? Kimberly, why don't you nip upstairs and see how long she'll be? Because I'm discussing the loft conversion with Neil, aren't I? Oh, be fair. The man does it every day of his working life. He doesn't be talking about loft conversions while he's waiting to take Angie out. Oh, I don't mind, really. Hiya. Oh, uh, you look nice. Yeah, you look stunning, right, you two? Don't dawdle off you go before the evening's over. We are both adults, Curly. We can stay out after 12 if we like. <laughs> have you met Kimberly? Yeah, yeah, we were just discussing the loft conversion. Yes, Neil was just telling me about the floor and the electricity. And the light, don't forget the light. We'll need lots of light in there, won't we? Well, we don't want anyone feeling claustrophobic, because there's nothing worse. I don't think you'll feel claustrophobic in there, Kimberly. In fact, that'll be the least of your worries. Once you get your eye to that telescope, the whole universe is going to open up in front of you. Telescope? Yeah, it's going to be a crack in the little observatory up there. Observatory? Well, that's what I'm here for, isn't it? Oh, isn't it? <laughs> Can I get you another one? Ah, oh, no, thanks, Bet. I'll make do with that one for now. Shout when you're ready, love. Right, love. She's waiting for someone. Oh? And they've not turned up. Is that what she said? She didn't need to, I can tell. Years of experience working behind this bar. Yeah, well, you do know your customers, Bet. And they know that. That's why they come in here. Not for flaming quizzes. Hi, Bet. Hi, all right. Hi, yeah. Hi, just out, right. please. Right. You're not with your mate tonight, then, Kevin? Mate? Yeah, Doug. No, I uh, don't think he'll be in tonight. Oh. Yeah, I think he must have gone away somewhere. Well, he didn't turn in work this afternoon anyway. It's all right for some, isn't it? Yeah, it certainly is. There you are, Kev. Oh, lovely. Cheers, Liz. 
Cheers. And you know. Oh, cheers, thanks. She's been stood up. Hey? Deirdre. Well, maybe she just fancied half an hour away from everything. I mean, I sometimes sling my coat on and come out just because I fancy a change from the same four walls. Ah, but you don't wash your hair and put your makeup on first, do you, love? Give me my coat! No. Not until you sit down and listen to what I have to say. I want to go! Give it me! Look, I, I was going to tell you tonight. You've got to believe that. Tonight? Don't you think tonight's a bit late, considering half the street know before I do? We're supposed to be getting married in April, and you discuss our future with a lodger and a builder before you discuss it with me. I was going to discuss it with you. I bet they're having a right laugh now, those two. No, I'm sure they're not. What do you think it makes me look like? I mean, what are they going to think of me? They won't be thinking anything. I saw the way that Neil looked at me. Now you're just being daft now. I'm not being daft. I could see it in his face. He felt sorry for me. Poor little Kimberly, who can't be trusted with the truth. And Angie, she was having a right laugh at my expense. She was. Um, I don't think she was. Yes, she was. Well, that's it as far as I'm concerned. Oh, come on, you don't mean this. Don't I? Just watch me then. Well, where are you going? As far away from you as possible. You can have your rotten telescope and your rotten stars and that rotten room. Because if you can't trust me with the truth, then there's just no future in it for either of us. Hang on! Hang on! Ah! What the hell's up? Are we on fire or something? Oh, I do apologise, Mrs. Gilroy, for interrupting your beauty sleep. I didn't realise you were still in bed. <laughs> Where the hell did you think I'd be at this time? Doing a fan dance on the Red Wreck? <laughs> mea culpa, Mr. Gilroy, mea culpa. I'm afraid my excitement to the future events uh, must excuse my rather precipitous behaviour. Do you speak English at all? Or shall I fetch an interpreter? Have they come? Has the, uh, has the brewery sent them? Okay. The question's for tonight's quiz. Only you say I wrote and asked for one of their sets so we could avoid any suggestion of collusion or impropriety. <sighs> what? Yes. As quizmaster, I have to accept full responsibility for the safe keeping, you see. Could you have a look? Is that it? Yes, yes. I'll just uh, ascertain if I may. All right. Oops. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's them. Good. I'll get yeah. back to bed. Do you know I? I admire your rather calm for Sarah, Mr. Gilroy, but I'm not deceived. Pardon? No, I know how important tonight is for you. And us middle management, we are under tremendous pressure from top, aren't we? To achieve new heights. But have no fear, I shan't let you down. And I will call around later to fine-tune the arrangements. And I think I can promise you, Mrs. Gilroy, a night to remember. To go with the morning, I'd rather forget. And if I may say so, it's a rather fetching dressing gown. Yeah, I know I said it'll be ready today, Well, To be honest, we're a bit short-handed here. Yeah, OK, I'll do my best. That's all I can say. OK, then. Thanks very much. Bye. No sign of doggy, then? No sight in the sound. Went round to his house, his car was there, but the woman says she don't even know who he is. Oh, his lady friend covering up for him or what? Don't know. To be honest, Jim, I don't care. He's dropped me right in it. Well, listen, I don't have to be at work till tonight, so I mean, I could help you out at dinner time, if you want. I'd be great at that, Jim, if you could. No problem. I mean, it beats baby sitting in an empty office block, I can tell you. So where do you want me to start? Just look at that. My eyes look like a flipping angora rabbits. I'll kill Reg Olsworth. Well, I heard someone knocking, but I just fell asleep again. Lucky you. I didn't have time to make a brew. Wanted to iron my dress before tonight. Mr. Oldsworth asked me to keep score for him. He wants me to work something eye-catching, you know. Well, mind you leave something to the imagination. We've not got a licence for one of them exotic quiz shows. Oh, like them Italian ones, you mean, where contestants take the clothes off? Oh, I don't think it'll be like that somehow. But I do think if you've got it, flaunt it. And I've got it, I suppose. It's just a pity my Wayne won't see me. 
It's his training night. Fit again, is it? Well, it's only light training. Then he has physio. Massage, you know. The young woman who does it, actually. Mm, so I heard. Yeah. Oils them and massages them and that. It's medical, though, you know, proper. Anyway, she's leaving soon. She's got a job in London working for tired executives, apparently. Oh, well. If I get the elbow from here, I might just apply for her job. I could fancy that. They'd never sack you, surely. Hmm. Breweries can do what they like with managers nowadays, cock. They have them jumping through hoops. Quiz nights, pool competitions, karaoke. Do you know, if you'd have fetched a karaoke machine in here when Annie Walker was around, you'd have ended up wearing it. You worried, aren't you? Don't fret, I'm sure tonight will be a big success. Well, if it is, they'll want more, won't they? If it bombs, it'll be another nail in my coffin. I'm jiggered either way. Well, surely the residence committee can do something about it. Well, I don't care they can, Mrs. Rogan. There's no law against building an observatory in your lot, as far as I know. There must be. Huge, great telescopes stuck out through the roof. I mean, well, it's bound to be an eyesore, if nothing else. What about that fellow that had a shark's bottom sticking out of his roof, maybe? You know, I mean, it were in papers. He went to court, but he won. That's ridiculous. Ah, but it didn't spoil the intrinsic beauty of the place, according to Judge. Oh, don't suppose he had to live there. The point is, it'd take more than a little telescope to spoil the intrinsic beauty of Coronation Street, wouldn't it? Especially with Duckworth cladding. Anyhow, it'll only be poking through at night, Mrs. Wilton. Uh, you know, it'll be no use during daytime. Mr. Sutton, you can see into neighbours' windows day or night. Any malpractice of that sort, Mrs. Wilton, I shall take immediate action. Now, uh, don't worry. Just keep me informed. Honestly, to think there's nothing you can do about a thing like that. Well, the sooner we have privacy laws in this country, the better. Do you know, I'm sure Curly only did it to look at heavenly bodies. I'm sure he didn't want to look at your Derek in his Rupert Burr boxer shorts. How do you know about those? Davis. If you want secrecy, you'll have to start hanging your washing out at night. See, I've decided not to have a battle of the sexes, Chris. Yes. Man against woman. The age-old struggle should have a little free song for the competition. Don't you think? Well, in my experience, it always leads to trouble. Not with a firm hand on the wheel. I take it you, uh, you will be enlisting the lovely Kimberly to our cause, will you? Uh, no, no, uh, Kimberly's not around. Uh, I mean, she's at her mother's going through wedding plans. All right. Well, we'll be locking horns with Mrs. Taylor again. Beware if young Kimberly inherits her chromosome. I can stand up for myself, you know. Ooh! Uh, Mr. Oldsworth! Yeah. What is it, Mrs. Dulworth? Can't you see? I'm busy here. I could be in your quiz team, couldn't I? Yeah. I could, couldn't I? I mean, I'm a woman. Yes, granted. In order to have a fair contest, I'm actually seeking a female of a certain intellectual capacity. Brainy, you mean? Well, why? Our Jack's on there, eh? Yes, but your Jack is a certain expert in the uh, sporting arena, I believe. Yeah, he's only good at losing on horses, him, though. Whereas me, I'm an expert of royal family. Mm. I am. I've gone right into it, you know. Really? And why's that? Well, I'm not liberty to say. But there's no I don't know about, I'm honest. I mean, ask me some. Go on, ask me. Right, I will. Who was... An Anne. Uh, um, Harry. Yeah. Oh, no, no, that's... Uh, other one. Edward and Andrew. They're, they're Queen's kiddies, aren't they? Yes, all right, all right. Oh, well, right. they're Windsors. Yeah. And it's Charles that's got William and Harry. Mm. Well, you see... I mean, I might have got it wrong. Yes, 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 I think you have made your point, Mrs. Dutworth. Right, I shall expect you at 8 o'clock sharp at the Rover's return. Oh. Mm. Enter. Uh, I'm not disturbing you, am I, boss? Not half as much as these accounts. Why are things not going so well? Not according to the brewery. We've been sailing along quite nicely all these years. Not exactly knocking spots off Disneyland, but keeping afloat. And suddenly, they want us to up our target figures. Oh, that's what all this quiz likes about, is it? Eh? Selling more ale? It'll more likely drive folk away. I popped into Flying Horse last week, cos they got one on, you know, just to check it out. I opened my mouth to speak, and somebody said, Shut it, we've got a quiz on. Yeah, I sat there for about an hour like Lot's wife while two teams answered questions. Then when they'd finished, they turned the jukebox up so loud, I couldn't hear myself when I did speak. Do you know they've had to train their staff to lip-read? Well, were it packed out, you know? No, no, not so you'd notice. Ah, you see, well, well, they're not the sporting type over there, are they? The more you smash your glass head button type. Jacko. Yeah? Can you want some? Oh, you, you told me to tell your if Rita popped in. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, Ta. Ta, I want to see her. You coming to a quiz tonight, Mr Sugden? Well, certainly I'm not. I'll be at home with my book. Yeah. I don't read much, me. Except magazines and that. Never read a book in my life. It's too many words. Makes me echo all fussy. Hello. Ta. All right. Hi, Ray. Hello. You, uh, you're coming in tonight, aren't you? Well, actually, I thought not. I couldn't stand the idea of Reg Holdsworth throwing his weight about. Only I could do with a bit of moral support. Oh. I've got a notion Randy Reg sees me as tonight's quiz night star prize. Well, I'm sure you can tie a knot in his aspirations. Anyway. Yes, I know. But at my age, I'm not looking to do time for GBH. Would a vodka after hours tempt you? Go on. There we are. Good as new. Ready for a pint of pint now? You coming? No, I promised Steve a driving lesson. God help us. Then I must go home and try and get some sleep. Yeah, well, thanks for helping out today, Jim. And I'll uh, box it off later, OK? Yeah. Listen, Kevin, I was just wondering whether I could help you out a bit more regular, like when I'm free. I mean, well, to be quite honest with you, this security lark only pays peanuts and, well, you know, Christmas coming up and all that kind of crack. You're more than welcome to help out, Jim. Till we get someone full time. Hey, good man. I'll see you later, all right? Yeah, all right. Cheers, Jim. Yeah. Thanks again. So what's going on? Sorry, Kevin. I can't explain. Over a pint. That'd be good. So, I had this guy around the galley asking questions about Dave Matthews. Yeah, the bailiffs. Thanks for telling them now. I don't want thanks. I just want an explanation why you dropped me in it. Long story. Yeah, well, it's what I'm here for. My real name's Dave Matthews. I haven't been working abroad, like I told you. So it's all been a pack of lies, has it? Have you ever chased a dream, Kevin? I have. About five years ago, when it was all booming down in London, I said to myself, Dave, old son, you deserve some of that. So I moved down there, got a loan, opened this swank garage, classic cars. It was like printing money, Kevin. Believe me, they all wanted them. Not round here. And I had all the trimmings. Girlfriend, blonde, long legs, looked like Jerry Hall. Spent like it as well. But who cared? The good times were never going to end and I was dynamite Dave. So I borrowed more, remortgaged the house. You can guess the rest. You lost it all in the crash. It's amazing how fast things can disappear, you know. I sometimes used to look at my garage, my big house. I couldn't believe they were mine. They weren't. The bank owned them. They didn't waste any time letting me know either. They took a lot, did they? What they left, she took. She wasn't such a bimbo after all. But I still owed a fortune. So I ran. Left Dave Matthews behind. Only they tracked you down to her, didn't they? Turned up at my sister's yesterday after the car. I own it. It's paid for, but they want it. Your sister's? Is that where I went round and got the door slammed in my face? Yeah, sorry about that. I told her to say nothing to nobody, you know. It's like being a criminal, Kevin, and all I did was try to earn a living. So why didn't you just give him the car? Because it's all I've got left. It's part of me. I restored it. And they wouldn't pay me debts, no way. I'd, I'd be paying them off for the rest of my life. That's why I need this job. It's like that guy in high noon, you know. You can't run forever. But if I can just pay him just a little bit each week, it, it just might keep me out of jail. I'm a good mechanic, Kevin. I need this job. So I'll do an old set and load more flannel. You don't. All I can do is ask you to trust me. There we go. Safe and sound, so how did it do? Yeah, well, you shattered my nerves, that's a fact. You know there's a speed limit in town? Yeah, well, I was always in control, wasn't I? Yeah, well, look, you're not going to pass your test unless you abide by the rules. And I wouldn't bother wearing them either, you know. I mean, your man will think he's sitting next to Mad Max, so he will. Come on. Are you turning up then, Dougie? Bad Penny, that's me. Yeah, well, I'll see you over there, OK? Right.
Look, he's so many full story and well the top and bottom of it is I've said I'll give him another chance. Must have been a good story then. Yeah well. Happen and tell you himself sometime. Hold me breath. Anyway. You'll not be needing me anymore, eh? That's fair play, Kev. I just hope he doesn't drop you in it again, that's all. Right. One, two, three. Testing, testing. <clears throat> hey, no! Uh, the hand is needed! Is this all right, Mr. Earlsworth? Yes, yes, that's uh, wonderful, that Raquel. Marvellous, yes. Um, can I give you a hand out, my dear? I can manage, thanks. Oi, right, do you, want, do you want me to turn these lights on for you now or what? Uh, well, just a moment, just a moment. I'm trying to imagine the whole thing. Um, right, what I want? The two Deems chairs arranged towards the banner in a chevron. In a what? A chevron, sort of V-shape, like flying ducks. And I want the uh, quiz master table and chair right in the middle. Have you got that? Right, uh, Mrs Gilroy, Mrs Gilroy. Oh, ducks flew in a line. Yeah. Do you want folks, what? Well, I What's up with you now? Well, you're just about to have the grand opening, so to speak. I thought you'd like to be the first oh, yes. to witness it. Oh, I can't wait. I know, it's exciting, isn't it? I've often thought I should be in show business. Is that a fact? Yes. The smell of the grease paint, the roar of the crowd, a bit of the barn in me. Yes, I'm a real showman. In fact, if I hadn't been enticed by the blandishments of the retail trade, I think I would. Hey, <laughs> don't we switch the lights on for you now? I think so, Jack. Are we are ready. My little piece de resistance. Voila. <laughs> oh. Oh, very Las Vegas. Yes. What did I promise you, Mrs. Gilroy? Did I not ever do it? And who knows? After three, tonight. Right. Yes. Well, I have several other little adventures in embryo. This could be the best start of a real partnership. One second. I want a second. Me first. No, no. Yeah, all right, all right, you two. We'll have to save a piece for your mummy. Yeah, I may, don't forget. What's this? I'm being saved? Oh, great cake. Oh! Yummy. <laughs> <laughs> Me ma used to make it for me when I was little. I'll give you the recipe. So, all set for the humiliation tonight, then, are we? What? Oh, the quiz. Well, what else? Eh? Remember, this is women, eh? What a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd be so popular. Oh, why is that? Eh? Us girls are not as daft as we cabbage looking, are we, Carmel? Oh, oh, I'm not very clever. If it wasn't for Martin helping me out, I'd have failed the course by now. Well, there you go. You see, see what you're up against, eh? Super student, that's me. <laughs> can I go to the quiz? Can I? How can you go to the quiz? It's in a pub. It's not fair. Well, you can't. Listen, if you promise me to go to bed on time, we can have our own quiz at home, OK? Yeah. Kind of quiz. Aha, uh -huh. wait and see. Just look at that skylight. It's facing right into our bedroom. Yeah. Look at the only redress we've got is to get thicker curtains. Well, we could do with a change, I dare say. Do you know I'm looking forward to this quiz? Make a change from polishing floors to polishing up the old brain cells. <laughs> <laughs> I think Holdsworth's made a mistake, though, not making me team captain. Still, after tonight, I'm sure he'll realise the error of his ways. <laughs> Hi. Hi. You're out? Yeah, yeah, I'm uh, just going out for a meal. With Maggie, actually. Ah, is, uh, is that the one Tracy babies out for me tonight? Yeah, yeah. She uh, filled you in with all the details. Well, no. Yeah, I know. Is it um, serious then? Too early to say. I just take one day at a time these days. Right. Anyway, I better dash. I've been roped into the pub quiz. I'm going to be late. Oh, best of luck. Oh, I think I'm just making up numbers. Well, don't put yourself down, you very bright lady. Save your flattery for her. <laughs> right. Could I have my two teams of contestants in position, please, now? All the Jews and beginners, please. All the Jews and beginners. Come on, come on. Hey, listen, his name arrived. Yeah, he's in the lock, clustering away. I'm surprised he didn't offer to hold his crown. Hey, you in? Hiya. Hiya, Adrian. 
you know, that Red Jonesworth, he should have been a ringmaster in a circus. Well, I'd pay to see him put his head in Lion's mouth. Yeah, we'd both starve it beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, Rita, that's all I need. Right, I'll see you later. <laughs> Good evening, Mrs. Gilroy. I thought I'd come along and see how your first quiz went. You're looking forward to it? Oh, tremendous. Hello, good evening, and welcome to the Rovers Return Quiz Contest. To find a team to enter, the Newton and Ridley Super Quiz uh, Challenge Trophy. Oh. <laughs> Testing, testing. Oh, Mike's dead. Yeah, I don't even know he was ill. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, these things happen in show business, don't they? <laughs> but the show must go on, as they say. Yes, no, all right. The, uh, the rules are, in actual fact, very simple. Have you got a rule sheet there? Well, I haven't got it, no. Um, well, there are two halves, and the first four rounds in each half, of course, are team rounds. Now, conferring is allowed, apart from individual questions, and only the captains of each team, et voila, et voila, can answer. And all decisions, uh, as Quizmaster, are, of course, final and mine. Right. right about, can't we answer? No, only in the individual round, I think. Well, what does that mean? Yes, well, everything will make itself clear, Mrs Duckworth, if you allow me to continue. Oh, I'm confused already, oh, mate. Oh, 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 yes. Um, and our score this evening will be kept by the lovely and the ravishing Raquel. Yay! 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 Is the aeroplane of the German fighter ace, the Red Baron? Well, I see it's red, isn't it? No, 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 it's too easy. It's, um, it's a trick question. No, it's red. It's red. Oh, no, it's a catch question. Come on, what colour is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's red. White. Red Baron. Hey, no, it's red. I'll have to hear you. It's to match the clouds. It's red. Your answer, gentlemen, oh, please. All right, all right, all right. Lads, 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 lads. White. Sorry, the answer is, of course, oh, red. Oh, <laughs> Why? Hey, shut up, you! You're on our side. <laughs> one... Smell that. Smells like red wine. <laughs> yeah. But notice that delicate sort of feminine flavour. The mark of a good clarinet. Really? Louis the Fourteenth's favourite wine. He called it the nectar of the gods. And to think, I just called it plunk. Do I detect a note of ridicule? No, no, honestly, it's, it's fascinating. And why would I ridicule you? Well, boy from the back streets on about wine. My Uncle Albert would have called me a snob. And yet, he could tell the difference between a dozen brown ales. Thanks, Thank you. Well, we're all different, Ken. With me, it's flowers. Do you know my dream? to tour the Bordeaux area in the spring. Stopping at all the little chateaux, sampling their wine. Sounds like fun. Why not come along? The flowers will be gorgeous then. I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead, aren't I? You get nothing in this world standing still, Ken. Two points to the ladies. Oh, oh, well, well. The contest is hotting up. Gentlemen, your next question. Right, come on, come on. What is ESP? Resource won the derby. <laughs> oh, Sorry, ESP is extra sensory perception. No, no, no point. I got, I got, I got. Just got a captain. No, exactly. He shouldn't have called out. Well, that's your fault. ESP were a resource. No, you should ask us another Let's question. Hey, get off! You might know that one. We knew the last one. Yeah, yeah. Yes, well, we, we did. did. Gentlemen, ladies, please, can we have a bit of order? Well, I think we should stick to the rules. <coughs> right. Yes. right. So yeah. we should ask us another question. You should have answered through your captain. We yes, tried. The rules. Yeah, but Red shouldn't have accepted Jack's answer. Right, yes, right, yes, 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 no, yes, Gentlemen, ladies. Rules oh. are rules, Martin. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We should, we should be asked another question. Yeah. Look, can we have a ruling on this? Yes, come on. Yes, if we can find a rule, then. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not playing. Yeah, well, you oh, forfeit no. the game, then, don't you? Oh, oh, no, 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 yeah, you can't no, play no, it. Oh, we can't play it. She knows. You forfeit the game.
Mommy? Oh, Another one, yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Bye. So for you, one for me. Just look at this. Do I really need telling I am spent up? They sent you one of these a month, you know. You know why? Rub your flaming nose in it. Hmm. You could have left that on the side, couldn't you? Should be thankful you get any mail. Well, I would be thankful if I got mail like that. What's going on? It's from Mum and Dad. And you would rather a letter from our telly than that lot? <laughs> Today I would, yeah. Oh, Jack, a birthday card. It must be a birthday, why didn't you say? Yeah, well, it's not as it bothers her, is it? It's our, it's our telly. Look at it. No. He's sent now to here, you know. He's, he's not remembered his wife's birthday. Yeah, well, you know he takes after, don't you? Yeah, well, it is a bit different. He's not exactly busy in there, is he? How do you know he's forgotten, eh? There is a second post, you know. And then there's that special parcel post, isn't there? Yeah, I bet that's what he's doing. He's sending her a present by parcel. Oh. What's it gonna be, a mailbag? No, he's forgotten because he's no good. So what's this then? A present for the future Mrs Watts? This is it. My six inch reflector telescope with motor. What does it need a motor for? You're not gonna ride around on it, are you? To follow the movement of the stars, to tune into the music of the spheres. Oh, I like them. Pity the future Mrs Watts can't stand them. Will you stop calling her that? Kimberly will learn to love this telescope because she loves me. And this telescope is a part of me. A very big part, as a matter of fact. So it's a love me, love my six inch motorised reflector thing, then, is it? Yes, it is. Hiya. Oh, hi. oh it's not Terry's birthday, is it? It's not to be rotten having a birthday in jail. Well, no, it's not Terry's birthday, actually. It's mine. Oh, smashing. Did you get anything nice? Got some money from my mum and dad. What about Terry? Well, Terry ain't got any money, has he? No. Oh, he sent me a card, though. Beautiful, big card. Made it himself. Oh, that's yeah. nice. So, what are you going to spend your money on? Oh, I'll probably get some new clothes for this little one. You can't spend your birthday money on a baby. No, you can't. No, get yourself a new frock. A new do. <laughs> what for? I never go anywhere. Well, you'll have to go out tonight, won't you? You know there's a law against stopping in on your birthday. Anyway, it's Jack's night off. He can babysit. You never know. Might start with a new frock, end with a new fella. I don't want a new fella. No, of course you don't. But you are going to go out, aren't you? Well, I haven't really got anyone to go out with. Well, unless, uh, you wouldn't come with me, would you? Oh, I can't. I'm oh. working. But listen, come in Rovers later, in your new outfit, and I'll buy you a drink, OK? Hey, I've just had a thought. If you do buy new clothes, that'll be your birthday suit, won't it? You go over the Rovers in your birthday suit, I'll buy you a drink. Thank you, I don't know how Lisa copes. Well, you've just been away now. I'm sure Alma missed you and you missed Alma. Well, just imagine. If you were locked away and she could only ever see you across a table in a crowded room. Well, absence makes the heart grow fonder. In fact, absence is probably Terry Duckworth's best feature. Listen, before you rush off, where did this come from? Babysitting money. I got it myself. I thought you were saving up for them shoes. Well, I wasn't expecting it to be this regular, was I? They're like a pair of teenagers. They'd be out every night if they could. I'm making a packet. So, your dad's really serious about this woman, then, is he? Well, they go house hunting every weekend and she wants to have all his children. Oh, well, she can have you for a start. Fun, Mum. They're having fun. You go out of that door, turn left and it starts. It stops as soon as you get back in here. I have my share of fun. I just don't feel the need to get involved with anybody right now. That's the trouble with your generation. You can't imagine a relationship between a man and a woman that isn't serious or involved. I got invited out for a drink last week, as a matter of fact. Oh, yeah. You nearly went for a drink with Doug. Big laughs. Get a life, Mum. Kimberly. Kimberly. I'm busy. Thinking of buying a dog? And if I was, why should I discuss it with you? Do you discuss things with me? Or do you just go ahead and take the roof off our marital home without so much as a buy or leave? How can you have a marital home if you're not married? Oh, I see. Well, those sentiments speak volumes. Oh, Kimberly, look. Hey, uh, 
really? You know, if you're going to buy a girl a box of chocolates, what sort would you get her? I wouldn't bother asking Norman. He hasn't got the slightest idea of how to treat a lady. Not now, Vera, I'm busy. Look, Kimberly, why don't you come round tonight? I I've got a surprise, something exciting. A surprise? For me? Yeah, something wonderful, something we can share. Oh, what is it? I can't tell you that. You'll have to come round. Please say you'll come round, please. Of course I will. Oh, I'll take it all back about him now. Oh. Oh. <laughs> now then, Mr. Watts. Still a place of work, you know, not your boudoir. Mrs. Duckworth, kind of curb your voyeuristic appetites and get to frozen. I am on my break, you know. You've had your hair done, haven't you? Oh, didn't think anyone would notice. Ah, I look smashing. Is it for a special occasion or just to cheer yourself up? Just to cheer myself up, you know. When Terry gets out, that'll be my next special occasion. Oh, well, you know what my Tracy had said to that, don't you? Get a life. Did she say that to you? She did. And one day, he will say the same thing to you. And do you know what the worst part of it is? Thinking they might be right. It's not the big occasions I miss. It's knowing that I won't just bump into him, you know. Knowing that he won't be waiting for me when I get home. Yeah, that must be hard. But you should get out and have some fun all the same, you know, love. I mean, fellas have fun without women. Why shouldn't women have fun without fellas? I'm sure Terry wouldn't mind. Well, it's not that. And even with fellas, why does it always have to be serious and involved? Why can't you just see a fella for fun? No, I wasn't talking about other blokes. I'm taking a notice of me, love. I'm talking to myself, really. You should get out, you know. I bet Vera would love to babysit. Well, I was thinking of asking her tonight, actually. Not that I've got anyone to go out with, but... Well, I can buy myself a drink in the Rovers, can't I? I mean, Emily Bishop can do that. Ah, you can't have a hairdo like that and show it to nobody but Jack Duckworth. If I see you in there, I might buy you one myself. Does that mean you'll be in the Rovers tonight, then? Why? No, I was just thinking if I happened to bump into you, would you let me buy you a drink? I'll see you later, Deirdre. Yeah. I owe you an explanation. You don't owe me anything. Except you did promise me a drink, as I recall. So you will be in the Rovers? I'm often in the Rovers, that's all I'm saying. But if you were in there tonight, you might let me buy you a drink. I might. Surprise! Oh, Vera. How did you know? We saw that card that your mother sent this morning. Why didn't you tell us you'd have day birth? <coughs> I am to know how it's here now, No. I just thought they were from Terry, that's all. I mean, I know they couldn't be, I just... Oh, come on. <coughs> hey, listen, I'll tell you what, you know, tonight... Well, well, we'll watch a nice weepy video together, eh? Box of chocolates on one side and tissues on the other. Eh? What do you think? Yeah, that'd be lovely. Aww. <laughs> I mean, I did think about offering to babysit, but, but then you'd have no bit to go out with, would you? No, I haven't. Box of tissues is just what I need. <laughs> Sublimation, you know. What is? I read about it in a magazine. It's eating chocolate when what you really want is a man. No, love, that's when you're 16. When you grow up, you realise that what you really wanted all along was the chocolate. The men are just there to buy it for you. I'm just cutting out the middle, man. Give us a bet. Oh, no way, young lady. Not having you sublimating in the middle of the living room. Why are you all dressed up? I'm not all dressed up. I'm just a bit smart, that's all. You're all dressed up. What's going on? What's going on? I just thought I might go in the Rovers later on, that's all. <laughs> well, it's got to be for you. I mean, I haven't got a life. Something's going on. I know you said you'd probably be in the Rovers, but uh, I thought you might fancy a change. I've got the car outside. Oh, well, uh, I'm not dressed or anything. Well, neither am I. I just know this nice little pub in Cheshire, you know. Good bar snacks, log fire. Just a change, that's all. Well, I could do with a change. 
Okay. Great. Right. I'll see you later, Tracy. Um, will you be needing this when you get back? Ah, no, love. You can have that. See ya. Bye. It's the tracking. It's got nothing to do with the tracking, it's the tape. Well, how can it be the tape? Look, if I were to put my copy of The Great Escape on there now, you'd see Steve McQueen on the screen without sort of the wobble. Look, Lisa's husband's in prison, isn't he? Last thing she wants to see is The Great Escape. Well, I never said you should watch it. I said we should put it on and make sure whether it is the tape or the tracking that's making it go like that. Well, it's sure you would pressing the right button. Mm. I could tell you could do it if he were here. Yeah, well, I'll tell you he isn't here, is he? Well, he would do if he were here, make yeah. a better job than you're making out of it. Won't he, Lisa? Yeah, well, if eh? he was here, she wouldn't be sat there, would she? But am I invisible or something? I beg your pardon. Don't talk about me as if I'm not here. I am here. Oh, well, no, you're here, love. It's nothing to do with either of you, whether he remembers me birthday or not, all right? He's in prison. Last thing he wants to think about is what date it is. Anyone can see that. How's he supposed to know what date it is when every day's the same? Well, we know that, love, don't we? I mean... There you are. It's the tape. It wants rewinding. Oh, well done, Jack. <laughs> Hello, love. Where are you going? I'm going out. <clears throat> uh, well, it, it's fixed video now. I just want to go out. All oh, right. Yeah, of course you do, love. Uh, me and our Jack will babysit, won't we, Jack? Oh, yes, of course we will, yes. Yeah. And if he wakes up, well, you're on it, Rovers, aren't you? Well, I haven't got anywhere else to go, have I? And you didn't even notice that I'd changed my hair. Oh, I'm sorry, love. Oh, I, I did notice, love. I, I just didn't like saying anything, you see. Oh, shut up, yo. Poor thing. Still, it's nice to wear her sticking up for our Terry, isn't it? I mean, she must still love him. Simon, she's only had her share of the chocolates. Well, now I know why you've been so hard to pin down. You've been moonlighting as James Bond. Do you like it, then? Just drive slowly, will you, so the neighbours can see me going off in it. Yeah, my girlfriend loved this car. It was her idea, in fact. Enjoy it while it's here. I shan't have it much longer. You're not selling it, are you? Not exactly. Look, the reason I've been hard to pin down is I'm in trouble. Not legal trouble, at least not criminally legal trouble. Debt. Oh, well, I know a bit about that. Not on this scale, you don't. Anyway, I don't want to talk about it anymore. It's my problem, not yours. I just felt I owed you an explanation, that's all. I keep telling you, you don't owe me anything. Hey, there aren't many can say I don't owe them. You've got a life, then. And you decided to go out. You look lovely. Ta. Not that anyone will notice. See ya. ta -da, love. Angie, you'll have a game of darts with me, won't you? No. Oh, come on. Supposed to keep your lonely neighbours company during these cold winter months. I'll tell you what, if you've not brought your milk in by 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, I'll get Percy to break your door down. Thank you. Steve, you my Varas? Uh, no, no, I've only come in to tell him, so it's great. Have you tried the Samaritans? I suppose we have so good at times like this. Probably be busy. Hmm? Right, look, Angie, Borden's been asking a load of questions about you earlier on, and I don't know what he's up to. What but, sort of questions? Well, I don't know. It's just that I won't be able to do any more favours, that's all. <laughs> Hi. I don't often see you in here. Is it a special occasion? Oh, no, no, not really. Look, can I get you a drink? Um... No, no, you're, you're all right, thanks. Hiya. Hey, hiya. New hairdo. That's very nice. Oh, at least somebody noticed it. I suppose that means you'll be dashing off somewhere madly gay a million miles from this place? Oh, depends, really. <laughs> Now, you're not going to make a play darts with you, are you? Not on a birthday. Raquel, is it really your birthday? No. Well, yeah, it is. I don't really celebrate birthdays, though. Well, listen, I'm going for a meal in a minute, if you... Can... Oh, no, no. You can buy me half a lager, but not a meal. No, it's not a meal, meal. It's just a Chinese place I go to every now and then. It's a takeaway, really, only uh, you just don't take it away, that's all. No, I, I couldn't. Oh, come on, I'm going to go there anyway. I hate eating by myself. You get Martin and Gail, if you like, for a foursome, or... Angie, get a crowd together? Oh, no. No, I'll come. I'll come just with you, if that's OK. Yeah, of course it's OK. Should have said. I've had my hair done. <laughs> I just know you're going to love this. It'll bring us closer together, closer than ever. Well, what is it? Oh, you'll see, you'll see. Don't you want a cup of tea first? Oh, Curly, I'm all excited now. Well, what about a, a glass of wine? I've got some red. Curly, where's my surprise? Well, it's... Well, it's upstairs. Up how many stairs? 
What do you mean? Is it upstairs on the next floor, or is it upstairs in that attic? Well, it's in the attic. It's that telescope, isn't it? You dragged me here to look through your telescope. You, you brought me out here to play with that telescope. Not play, no. And you. Oh. Look, you'll feel differently when you see it. You'll feel differently about me. And you. I don't know why I come. And you. Look, when you step in there and see it, you'll understand. You'll understand that I'm not just another trainee supermarket manager. You'll see my dreams. Well, dream on, Norman Watts. Or, or should I say, 40 Watts? Didn't buy it then. If you want me, I'll be in the attic. I don't even know what I'm eating here. <laughs> seaweed. You're joking. No, it's fried seaweed. Have a look in your menu. Oh. <laughs> well, it's really nice. I'll have to get Vera to get some in. Mm. <laughs> what have you got? I don't know what it is. Don't usually have the meal for two. Of course you do. I bet you bring a different girl here every week. No, I usually bring them in pairs. So it's usually the meal for three. Once had a meal for four. Shut up and eat your seaweed. But you're not like the others. You're married. Oh, so are you, strictly speaking. Huh. You'd have to be very strict, though. Downright cruel, in fact. You know, this time last year it was my 21st. Yeah? My dad threw this big do in a nightclub for me. And he had one of his friends going round fortune telling, you know, palm reading and all that. What did it say on your palm then? Oh, um, marriage, babies. Never mentioned prison though. Yeah. But you're not the one who went to prison though, are you? Aren't I? Well, I'm married to someone who isn't there. I've got a baby and I've got no money. I'm just as trapped as Terry is, really. When they sentenced him, they sentenced me too. Still be great when he gets out, eh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he loves me, I know that. I'm the only thing that keeps him going, really. He thinks about me all the time. Oh, you should have seen the card he got me. It's beautiful. Of course he loves you. I should be grateful, really. At least I don't have to worry about other women. I know I'm in my husband's thoughts every waking minute. And there's not many people who can say that. No, there certainly aren't. Yeah, it's a special kind of love, really. Sort of intense. It'd have to be, wouldn't it, to survive? And it will survive. That's why. Someone gave me this little card when he first went away. <clears throat> and it's a picture of a prisoner looking out of his cell window. And underneath it says, With you in my heart, I see not the bars. With you in my heart, I see only the stars. <laughs> is that how Terry is? Yeah, that's how Terry is. Looking at the stars. Hiya. Did it work? Yeah, yeah. It's brilliant. So what's the first one? Well, what is the point of looking at the soul of the universe? got no one to share it with. Well, let's have a dig, though. Blimey, Curly, is that the moon? Yep. Oh. God, it's like you could reach out and touch it. It's like I can see mountains and black things. They're shadows. Shadows of the mountains. A quarter of a million miles away. It's amazing. And you've got all this going round in your head when you're stacking toilet rolls for Reg. Well, I suppose I have. Makes you feel better. You see, you could be the greatest person in the world. Or the biggest failure. But out there, it doesn't even register. It makes being Reg Holdsworth assistant a little more bearable. I don't know. It's a mystery to me. What is? Why they called you 40 watts at school. It wasn't because I was dim. It was down to the shape of my head. Well, why didn't they call you 100 watts or 150 watts? Because they couldn't count. 150, that's what I'm going to call you from now on. 
because I think you're perfect. Our police, I mean, it's even sadder for her, isn't it? Well, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go down to that Rovers. I am. I'm going to buy her a drink, show her that somebody loves her. I will bring us a carry out, Pat, will you, love? Uh, get no. off, you deaf thing! Listen, you. You listen out for the baby. Or I'll be carrying you out in a little box, right? Oh. Oh. Well, I'd better be off. Vera's going to be wondering where I am. Well, have a pudding. Oh, I couldn't. I've ordered. Happy birthday to you. We'll go and then blow them out. Oh, you shouldn't have. Why not? You just shouldn't, that's all. It's a surprise. It costs nothing. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to be ungrateful. It's just that... Terry didn't send me a card. He didn't remember my birthday at all, as a matter of fact. Oh, I see. I've been sticking up for him all day, but... I just keep thinking, what if he doesn't love me? Of course he loves you. How could he not love you? Well, here I am, trapped. I can't go anywhere, cos I haven't got any money. And I've got a baby. And I've got Vera watching me every move. And I could cope with it all, it's just... If he loved me, but how do I know if he loves me or not? Right, Raquel, how are you? Where's Ali? So I went to bed, didn't you know? Oh, well, Lisa's gone. Gone? Gone where? Well, Dad's took her for a meal, you know, for her birthday. Des? Yeah, well, I told her if she got herself a new loop, she'd get herself a new bloke before the night were through, and she did. <laughs> You know, it was gone half eleven when she got in last night. Well, I know it well, because I looked at the alarm clock when Vera. I heard the door go. Vera, you start going on the turn. You know what's going to happen, don't you? She's going to pack her bags and her and Tommy are going to go back to Blackpool. Well, what do you expect me to do, eh? Turn a blind eye while she goes for a Chinese meal without Des Barnes. You know where that'll lead to, don't you? Well, you say you do. Well, I do. And you do and all, if you're honest. Paying for a meal. Do you think he's doing that out of goodness of his heart? Well, haven't he did? Oh. Look, Vera, they have different attitudes than us. They're a different generation. Men don't have different attitudes. They have the same attitudes they've always had. And you know what that means, don't you? Vera, all right, now, if it were me and I were taking a bird out, you might say I had what you might call ulterior motives. Mm. Well, I'd call it plain as day motives. That's what I'd call it. Okay, I'm not denying it. But they are a different generation. I mean, look at young Angie. She lives with Curly, lives with him, and they never lay a finger on each other. Anyway, hush, 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 hush. Listen, I'll believe if she tells me off her own back what she were up to. Well, give her a chance, eh? Yeah, give her a chance. Shut up. Morning. Morning, love. Oh, look at you. It's taking me. It was in my everywhere. <clears throat> so, did you have a nice time last night, then? Yeah, OK. You just had a couple of drinks in Rovers, did you? Yeah. And uh, you didn't go on anywhere, like? No, just, uh, just stayed in the Rovers. <laughs> hey, what were you saying about different generation, different attitudes? <laughs> now, now, Lily, now. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See you. Anyway, time I was creeping like snail unwillingly to school. It is unwillingly, isn't it, Derek? I was quoting Shakespeare, maybe. Yes, I know you were, and it was very apt. But I don't think you're happy in this job, are you? You know, you were moaning and groaning in your sleep last night, you're throwing yourself all over the bed. Was I? Yes. Thank you. It's this Harry Potts, isn't it? Oh, from what you say, he sounds a really nasty man. Well, he is, but... You know, I don't think it's his fault. I think it's something to do with the job of being a caretaker. All the isolation and the feeling the world's against you. I mean, after a while, it must make any man stubborn and self-opinionated and off-hand with people. Have you got my magazine? Oh, yes, I think it's somewhere. I'll be making tracks, maybe. Oh. Uh, will you just excuse me a minute, please, Mr. I don't Smith. seem to have any choice, do I? Uh, 
Well, you have nothing to prove, you know. No, I know. Well, I mean, if this job's so terrible, why don't you just give it up? I've never said it was so terrible, have I? But we've managed before. We will again. No, no. I think we're getting all this out of proportion. I can cope with the Harry Potters of this world. But don't you worry. I don't like to see you so unhappy. And I'm not. Oh. And now I'm going. Bye-bye. <laughs> Is he still caretaking? Yes, he is. You know, I never thought he'd be his cup of tea. But he's sticking at it, I admire him for that. I'll take my cap off to him. Oh, you do that, Mr. Sugton, because he deserves it. <laughs> if I had a cap, I'd take it off to him as well. By the way, <clears throat> thought of offering you the captain, sir. What of? Of the uh, Rovers Pub Quiz team? <sighs> League match next week. Time we got the squad together. Oh, no, leave me out, will you? Go on, Norman. Captain, six months' time, you can be stood on that bar holding gate. Rough it. You say I don't want to. Well, don't be selfish. Think of Kimberly. What's I going to do with her? I think how proud she'll be. Women like to see the men in a position of power, you know. In fact, they do say it's something of an aphrodisiac. <laughs> mm, well, Kimberly's got little or no interest in anything I do. What are you talking about? You? She's engaged to you. She thinks about you night and day. She fantasises about you stood on that bar holding a trophy. Oh, yeah. What about last night? Oh, yes. What? Well, well, she wouldn't come up to the loft to see my new telescope. Never mind, look through it. She wouldn't even see it. <coughs> uh, morning, Mr. Dowling. Morning. Morning, Vera. Don't breathe the word to her about that quiz night. That's one we don't want anywhere near. I don't want to be anywhere near it. Now, don't keep going on like that. I'm relying on you, aren't I? Just put your mind to thinking who's still got what we could call a brain in that pub. And failing that, boring tendency for accumulating facts. The deepest ocean, the highest mountain, tip first man on the moon. Neil Armstrong, 1969. You see? You were made for this, you. Perfect. <laughs> right. Well, I'll tell you what, Dougie, that's what I call a motor car. Yeah, you'd think so if you'd seen what I started with. Spent three years of my life on that. I'm not surprised you keep her under wraps. Yeah, well, that's various reasons for doing that, as it happens. Oh, so this is where you get to. Look at this, eh? She follows me everywhere. I can't get away from her, even if I wanted to. Well, I have to when you don't come up. Well, I just happened to be passing by here and these two kind gentlemen offered me a cup of coffee. Came begging. <laughs> well, if you'd been standing about in a building site all night, I'll tell you, you'd be glad of the company. Never mind, it won't be forever. Actually, it was. You know, around about two o'clock in the morning, you get the distinct impression exactly what eternity is going to be like. Very boring, isn't it? Dead boring. Tell you what, we'll be glad when this job's finished. So, are you going to go home and go to bed now? Well, I reckon I might struggle on a wee bit longer, see if I can manage a pint down the rovers, you know. All right. Well, I'll see you later then, Tra. Yeah. See you, Liz. Now, if that was my wife, I'd keep her under wraps. Oh, I'll tell you what. She's lewd until I can find something better to trade her in for. Yeah, the woman I had. Well, you see what I'm left with. Fancy bleeding cow, that's what I've got. Bit of a crisis last night. Really? You know the art room, do you? Oh, yes. I've often admired the displays on the walls in there. Have you? Only well, my cleaners described it as a tip. Refused to touch it. <laughs> kind of a criticism, I suppose. <laughs> You'd think so if you'd heard them. Anyway, I told them not to worry. You'd clean it up this dinner time. Oh, well, thank you. Any time. I do have to say, Councillor, I think it's very unfair that every emergency that happens around here always seems to fall onto my shoulders. Oh? Yes. I mean, I'm supposed to be the assistant caretaker, which I suppose is meant to mean that I'm meant to be assisting you and not doing every job that comes along when you're engaged with other things. Well? Yes. Do I take it this is some kind of protest? Well, I... Yes, I think it is. Then I suggest you make it through the proper channels, which is on paper to your union representative. I'm not in a union. Then it's time you joined. I've got application forms here. Oh, yes, I am the union representative. Did I not mention? But can he drive? Well, you know, Steve, look, he can do anything he puts his mind to. Yeah, but can he drive well enough to pass his test? Well, as long as he remembers he's on the public roads and not a racing circuit. 
And uh, when he does pass, what's he going to drive? Ah, good question. Well, look, he's at that age. I mean, he wants a licence even if he can't use it. Yeah, well, roads are packed enough. I mean, if it were me, I'd just say, well, he can't have a, you know, he can't drive a car until at least right. 35. Right, well, I'm falling asleep, Percy. It's nothing personal. I've been up all night. See you later, love. Bye, love. Night, sleep tight. Yeah, yeah, you know, they want to cancel these tests altogether. I mean, it just said, sorry, but roads are that full. We're not going to let anybody else on them. Now then, I want your honest opinion. This quiz team, do you think we should have one? No. Well, you might get a few drinkers in that you wouldn't get in otherwise. Oh, well, then, yeah, we should. Yeah, but then again, it might drive a few out. They just can't stand that sort of thing. Yeah. See, so I don't know. No, neither do I. Right, thank you. I'm glad I asked. Uh, Any time, boss. You see, I've seen... Now then, Percy, what about you? Do you want a quiz team? Oh, right. let's see, we had one once before, didn't we? Now, let's see who was on it. Um, no, 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 it's all no, right. No, 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 you've got me thinking now. Uh, we, we had a match against the White Swan. Now, there were me, there were uh, Ken Barlow, there were Mrs... Oh, Mr Matthews, I'm Mr Allott, bailiff to the county court. Oh, not again. I've had all this. This is my associate, Mr Phillips. Now, I do believe you've been served with the execution warrant stating that the court has the right to reclaim the vehicle, which is here on the premises. Oh, come on, leave me that, eh? You've taken everything else. I wish I could. Unfortunately, I don't have the choice. All I can do is carry out the court's decisions. Now, if you have the keys... Oi! What's going on? I'm a bailiff of the county court, and I've come to take possession of this car. Bailiffs? Authorised by the county court to reclaim this vehicle on behalf of this gentleman's creditors. Right, well, get it claimed and get it off of here. Well, we need the keys. Give him the keys. Now, come on, Kevin, I want to know what's going on here. <laughs> Not to do with me. Cool, sis, to do with you. Bailiffs coming around collecting cars, that sort of thing can put us out of business. Thank you very much. I do hope we don't have to trouble you again. Yeah, so do I. You got anything to say? No, do you'd want to hear. So you lost your car, did you? Yeah. Yeah, well, I've got news for you. You've also lost your job. Go and up it. Get finished. That car shouldn't have been there from the start. It was only here a couple of days. It shouldn't have been there at all. Bailiffs repossessing cars. I mean, how's that going to look? What sort of rumours is that going to start? I thought you had more sense than that. I, I did, honest. All right, I'm sorry about that. But I still don't see why you had to go and fire the guy. Oh, you don't? Shall I tell you? Yeah. Because I don't like being made a fool of. I don't like someone coming to me and saying, yeah, Mr. Boring, I want to work for you. Yeah, I'll do a good job and then pulling a stroke like that. Well, he's already lost his car. Don't you think that was enough? He lost his car because he owes people money. He lost his job because he took advantage. All right, so now you want to know who the real losers are? You, me, we're both losers. We're the real losers. <laughs> How'd you make that out? Because he was a damn good mechanic. Too good for this place. And I tell you what, you won't find anyone else like him. Not for what you're paying, no chance. I don't want another one like him. I want one that's honest. <sighs> he is honest. It's just that things have gone wrong for him. I don't know, he's, he's got debts. Thousands from what he was saying. But I'll tell you something, Mr Baldwin. There was only one person benefiting from those debts, and that was you. <laughs> Me? Yes, you. Because those debts meant you had an experienced mechanic working for peanuts. Only now you've gone and fired him. Well, fine, you're the boss. But to be honest, I don't think it's the cleverest move you've ever done. Yeah. Well, in that case, uh, you better give him his job back. You mean that? Yeah. You have persuaded me with your eloquence. Anyway, uh, I don't want to go interviewing people and all that hassle, you know. So where's he gone? Well, I don't know. I know I'm not the one going running after him. 
<laughs> I'll have another pint in there, please, love. Well, you're thirsty. I'm drinking to forget, and don't ask me what, because it'll only remind me. All oh, right, I won't. You better make that too, Raquel. I'll get these. It sacked you as well, has he? No, and he hasn't sacked you either. Was well, there something wrong with me ears, then? Look, he just said that in the heat of the moment, didn't he? As soon as you're gone, he changed his mind. It's just the kind of boss I need, that is, yes. Look, if you must know, I put my neck on the block to get you your job back. So before I pay for this, do you want it or not? Pay for the pint first, then I'll tell you. No, oh, it's daft little things like this quiz night business. But I just want to turn round to somebody and say, you see to it, I can't be bothered. And when I do, there's nobody there. Because he's in Southampton. How's Jim? I saw him earlier, he was looking whacked. No, oh, he's been working all night. I don't know how he stops on his feet. Well, you look after him. You don't half leave a space when they're gone. Mind you, if you have an abscess long enough, you'd miss it, wouldn't you? <laughs> now then. One small Englishman. One large Scotch. Nearly right. Ah, so I take it as business as usual this afternoon, eh, fellas? As usual, yeah. Now, listen, I know it's none of my business, but I understand you owe some people a lot of money. That's what they keep telling me, yeah. So declare yourself bankrupt. No, I mean it. It's the only way to clear all your debts, start again and come out smelling the roses. But like I said, nothing to do with me. Keep the change, we don't. Oh, cheers, mate. He's on another planet, him. Yeah, I used to. Tracy, I'm just here picking up Mark. Um, listen, you know you said you were after some extra cash. Yeah, why do you want some more babysitting doing? Well, I dare say I will, yeah. But uh, as well as that, I could use some help in the shop on Saturday. Just say, uh, between now and Christmas. Would you be interested? What's serving on? Well, a bit of that. Um, help making up the orders and looking after the flowers. A bit of everything, really. Well, yeah, I would. Good. Hello, you. Look who's here. Hiya. Hiya. Well, uh, do you want to mention it to your mum? And uh, you could start next Saturday if she's no objections. See you later, Derek. Oh, now, look, just a minute. What? You don't usually leave at this time. What about the cleaners? Did you see to them, they'll not bite you. I'm not frightened of them biting me. They shouldn't be my responsibility. Then how are you going to learn? How are you ever going to learn if I don't leave you to get on with it every now and again? You're always leaving me to get on with it. Shows what faith I have in you. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you very much. Who did that? Come on, I want to know. What sort of a day have you had then, dear? Terrible, I think. I only understood about half of it. Which bit did you not understand? Well, for starters, I had Vera going on at me to invite Lisa to join me and Kimberly if you ever went out. And I thought Lisa had enough problems of her own. So would I. And will Kimberly be joining us this evening? Yes. You reckon you'll tempt her to have a look at your telescope? I shan't even try. If she doesn't want to look at my telescope, she doesn't have to. In fact, I wouldn't care less if we stayed married in this house for 20 years and she never set foot in the attic. Oh, Curly. I wouldn't. It'll be like Mrs. Rochester. Hey? Jane Eyre, Mrs. Rochester. Terrible secret kept in the attic. Only with you, it'll be a telescope. Ah, oh, do you remember when we stood this right, sir? No. Oh, well, we did every night. Or rather, I did. I don't know where you were. Well, I always am out working. Man's role, innit? To be out slaving while his women folk are at home, muddled by the fire. <laughs> Listen to him. <laughs> Vera. What? Don't forget what was there. Oh, I know. Don't keep reminding me. Is that all of eight? Bye. Hey, it were a rotten flat, I know. Above a laundrette, full of cockroaches. So we got through, you know. You do if you stick together. Oh, he's putting on weight, you know. Twelve and a half pounds. With all that sir, he's got on his mind, you can understand him forgetting your birthday. Yeah, well, I'm not bothered about that now, Vera. That's gone, that has. Well, why don't you write to him? Write him a nice letter, you know, to cheer him up. Let him know that you're still thinking about him. Yeah, mate. Right. Who's ready for his bath, then? Oh. Yes, he is. You see, Arta is missing all this, isn't he? All these precious moments you should be sharing. Yeah, well, he'd probably be missing them anyway, Vera. If he weren't in prison, he'd probably be like your Jack was. Always out somewhere. 
don't be like that, Lisa. Look, I know he's done you wrong, but, well, don't think bad of him. He's your husband, you know. Are you going to do your rug? Not tonight, no, I don't feel like it. No, I suppose it's the sort of thing you've got to be in the mood for, really. Uh, here we are. Thanks. Anyway, I'm sure Curly would rather be spending time with his £1,200 telescope. You are. And don't say it wasn't, because I've seen it. Or at least one that's identical to it in that shop in town. Sinclair's, yeah? Yes, that's where I got it. Yeah, I passed it at lunchtime, weren't I? I just looked in the window and there it was. Six inch, you said? Yes, six inch. Costing £1,200? Curly, how could you? Right, I'm off. All that money I was supposed to be saving to get married. Things to do. I can't believe it, I just can't. What must have been going through your tiny mind to have spent all that money like that? Well, for one thing, it wasn't £1,200. Oh, yes, it was, because I went in and asked to make sure. No, you see, I've got it on easy terms over two years. Oh, I see, so it's going to cost more than £1,200 then. Well, I'm not really sure. Yes, it will, because Daddy says... I that... don't care what Daddy says. I don't care what it costs. It's my flaming money anyway. Oh, oh no, no, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean that. I see. No, look, love, I didn't mean it, honest. So that's how it's going to be, is it? You'll have your money and I'll have mine. Except, of course, you won't have any at all because you'll have spent it all on telescopes. I'm only buying the one. What type of marriage is it going to be, this? When all we're ever going to do is argue about money. Look, look I'll tell you what, why don't you just come upstairs and have a look at it? No! I don't ever want to set eyes on that thing for as long as I live! Fair enough! Now, apparently he had a business of his own, right? It all went wrong, and now he owns thousands, according to Kevin. Oh, poor fella. Yeah, large culture uh, of gin and tonic when he got him. Right. Well, you don't know, really, do you? It may have been his own fault. Well, I don't care. You just might show a bit more sympathy. Oh, I did. I told him to declare himself bankrupt. Oh, Mike. What? Well, that is awful. No, it's not. It's very good advice. Well, it's like saying to somebody with a broken arm, you may as well just jump off a cliff and break all your other bones as well. No, you don't understand. You declare yourself bankrupt, right? They wipe all your debts and you can start again. Well, you can start again if you jump off a cliff, can't you? But you may not feel much like it. No. Oh, hello. Oh, evening. Hi, you, you don't, no, you right. don't understand. A pint of your best bitter, please, oh, barmaid. Right. And then if I could speak to the landlady. With Beth. May we? If you could just tell her her quiz master has arrived to discuss next week's agenda. <laughs> right, there we go. Yeah, I'll have oh, to right, keep the change. Oh, Sit down over there. I mean, when I turned round to look at the blessed sign, someone had sprayed paint all over it. Oh, not Harry Potts. No, no. Normally I'm willing to believe anything of him, but no, it was some passing vandal. Oh, dear. You see, most jobs. Even if you don't enjoy the actual work, you've got the companionship of colleagues to help make the day bearable. Mm. I haven't even got that. Well, if you don't mind me saying so, Derek, I think it's high time you stood up to Harry Potts. Let him see what you're made of. Oh, I did that, yes. But well, what happened? Nothing. No, I think... I think I am going to resign. I mean, after all, what, why am I doing this? Why do I make such a martyr of myself? Well, I did say. I'm going to be a martyr no longer. Ha! Do, do you know that's a weight off my mind? Well, you can't believe it. Well, if it'll stop you tossing and turning in bed at night. Well, it will, I promise you. And I tell you what, we'll have another drink to celebrate. Oh, well, if that's what you feel like. Well, I feel as though I've been carrying around a heavy weight and I've just realised all I have to do is... is let go. That's all. Just... Let go. Me quiz master to discuss the agenda for next week. Oh no, Les, no. <laughs> I can't. Where is he? Um... Oh no. Right, and a sweet sherry. Yeah. Now then, Reg, what's all this about next week? This time, Mon Cherry, and the very best of us, the creme de la creme of this year hostelry will be put to the test. The knowledge of life and the university itself, <laughs> subject to the most rigorous of scrutiny. Cancelled. You won't. Sorry, did I not tell you I couldn't face another fiasco like the last one? Well, you won't have to. No, I know, because we're not going to have one. No, no, we, 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 we could win the league, you see. That would be a feather in your cap. I don't suit feathers. Oh, but you wouldn't have to do anything. I would organise. I'd be responsible. No, I'm telling you, that's it. No more quizzes. Oh, but... No! Oh. Don't worry now. I didn't know myself until a minute ago. Well, I'll tell them tomorrow. But what if they say you've no choice, you've got to do it? Well, then we'll have a row. At least that'll be more entertaining than a flaming quiz night. 
It's 2.30, don't you? Thanks, sir. Not for yourself, Jack. Oh, that's nice of you. Ah, thank you. I'm celebrating, you see. Oh, well, I'll celebrate with you, then. <laughs> At least I would have done. Hey, you. Come here. Vera, I am serving. Listen, I've just found the prison. What do you mean? What do you mean, what do I mean? I'm just telling you, I phoned him to see if I can see out to as soon as possible. What have you said to Lisa? I haven't said out to Lisa, and I'm not going to say out to Lisa. That's why I've asked if I can see him. And did they say you could? Well, they said they didn't see any reason why not. Oh, Jack, I've just got to do some. I can't stand back and see. We'll see that marriage go to wall. I can't, and, and I'm not going to. Right, so it's just a uh, loaf and a bottle of milk. Oh, aye, and some washing up liquid. All right, I'll take um, him out with me. Ah, oh, Tyler. Come on, sweetie. Back in a bit. See you in a minute, Molly. Oh. Hello. I still think you're wasting your time. Well, you would, you. Well, what are you going to tell him? You're going to tell him his wife's running about with other fellas, are you? Hey, that will cheer him up. Oh, no, you? I'm going to remind him of his husbandly duties. What duties? What duties can he do out about? He's locked up in there for the next big year. He can remember to send her cards, can't he? And letters, let her know that he still thinks about her. Mind you, you won't know, you've never done it yourself. No, I've never been in prison, either. You don't even know whether they're going to let you in to see him. Oh, well, I'll wait till the post comes, and if I don't hear her, well, I'll, I'll just give him another ring. Hi, Morning, Deidre. Hi. Oh, hi. Um, how was...? Oh, yeah, it was OK. Yeah, any word from Terry? No, but I'm going to go and visit him on Friday. Oh, that's good. Well, I suppose it's good, is it? Yeah, I'll let you know when I've been. Uh, listen, I didn't say anything to Jack and Vera about us going to that meeting with him I just didn't want them to jump to the wrong conclusion. Well, they won't hear about it from me. Oh, thanks. Well, if they did, I'd tell them how much I enjoyed it. Oh, no, don't say that. <laughs> right, so, um, it's just this. Right. How's little Tommy going on? Oh, it's fine, except you can't fill him up. He's no sooner finished one feed, but he wants another one, don't you? <laughs> How is he then? Is he all right? Oh, yeah, it's fine. Right, that's every day. Uh, 137, please, love. 137. Great time. Lovely, thank you. Well, Mavis, today marks the end of another chapter. Another page turned in the never-ending story. What's he on about? Oh, Derek's going to offer his resignation. Oh, dear. No, not oh, dear, Rita. Oh, wonderful. It'll mean my dignity will be restored. I shall be a man again and not just a, a whipping boy to Councillor Potts. Oh, Councillor Potts, you don't like him, do you? He hates him. You wouldn't believe the pleasure he gets out of humiliating me, Rita. Treating me like a lackey, always at his beck and call. Oh, you don't want that. I do not. Get enough of that at home. And, Derek, you are sure that you actually want to resign? Positive. I've never been more positive of anything in all my life. <laughs> Why? Do you think I shouldn't? Well, it's not up to me. It's whatever makes you happy. Resigning. That's what'll make me happy. <laughs> right, well, here goes. Mm. <laughs> I'll see you tonight. All right. Bye. Well, good luck. Bye. Ian, why does he need good luck if he's resigning? Oh, not for now, but he'll want it afterwards, won't he? Uh, morning. 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 Oh, morning. morning. Now, these adverts you've got in your window, you know, for flats and bed sitters and that. Maybe it's his department. Maybe it's his department. Yeah. Well, what about them? Well, you know, are they still available? Or have they been in there a while or what? Oh, they're available as far as we know, otherwise they'd have been taken down. Oh, yes. We're oh. very strict about that, aren't we, Mavis? Yes, we are. Very strict. Uh -huh. Thanks. I'd better be away on my search, so. Right, let's see if we can find a penthouse that'll suit, eh? I don't think it'll be penthouses I'd be looking for. Oh, you're sure nice girl. No, you know, he's done this before, said he was going to resign. Then he comes home saying he's changed his mind and he's going to soldier on. Oh, come on, Mavis. It is a job after oh, all. No, it isn't, Reed. It's not a job. It's a torture. It's a torture for him and it's a torture for me as well. Thinking about him having to suffer that every day. Well, she said she never wanted to see the flaming thing again as long as she lived, and I said, fair enough. Fair enough? Yeah. And Kimberly, she just accepted that? No, no choice. So you stood by your telescope. Well, good for you, Kimberly. Well, it might be for the best, you know, in the long run. Establish a few ground rules. I mean, all right, we're going to get married and we're going to live in this house. That doesn't mean we have to stop being individuals with our own rights, our own personal lives. Like a sort of federal Europe. Yeah. I mean, just because I'm interested in astronomy and Kimberly isn't, well, I mean, no doubt she'll have some interest that won't involve me. 
Well, I admire you, Curly, but, uh, I don't know, I still can't see Kimberly as the sort of woman you can say fair enough to and get away with it. Yeah, well, I, I think I, I know her rather better than you. I should hope so. I'm not planning on marrying her. Well, if you could come back at 11 o'clock, she might be free for five minutes then. Yes, I'll do that. Thank you. Though normally all caretaking matters are dealt with through council and pots. Well, no, this isn't... Well, yes, it is about caretaking, but I, I do need to see Mrs Jeffers personally. Well, if you could come back at break. Uh, yes, thank you. I'll have a word with your wife about you. About what? I saw you chatting up secretaries. I'm not chatting up anybody. No, so what were you doing? It, it, it was a... A private matter. Private, eh? Yes. Well, if you finished with your private matter, do you think you might get on with shifting them leaves? I was waiting for the rain to stop. Frightened of getting wet now? I'm not frightened of getting wet. It's just very difficult gathering up leaves in the rain. That's what we're paid for, doing what's difficult, not chatting up secretaries. Go on, get out there. It's all right. That's the spirit. Girls, got a cup of tea on, have we? So, are we not having the uh, pub quiz night tonight, then? No. No, you're probably right. I think it scares for me. Especially them that's frightened of looking stupid. I mean, then all you've got left, then, is a lot of brain boxes that won't soap in case it spoils their chances. Is it? I shall put that to the brewery. Oh, no. uh, yeah. What? Yeah. What? Oh, sorry, Bert. Uh, I know you're not open yet. I just wanted to pick weird with my husband. Feel free. <laughs> Hey, they're not in. Oh, so rang them. Guess what? I can go this aft. And you're going, are you? Well, of course I'm going. We'll go to all this trouble and not go. What's the matter with you? There's now the matter with me, Vera. I just think you're skating on thin ice. What about Lisa? Does she know you're going? No, she doesn't. And she won't find out neither. I'll say I've got to go into work. They rang up. They're short staffed. Just thought you'd like to know. Thanks. Bet. You can have him back now. Oh, Tal. She lives in a different world than me, you know. Yeah? Oh. Same house, different world. You see, she thinks that all you've got to do is give folk a little bit of good advice and then they'll all be nice and kind to one another and everybody will live happy ever after. And you don't think it works like that? I know that for a fact, especially with our Teddy. Now, if you want him to be nice and kind, it's not good advice you need. It's a brain transplant. Jacko. What? Tell her. Right. Oh. Oh, you seem to have got caught in the rain. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm afraid I'm making a bit of a mess. No, no, don't worry about that. As long as you haven't caught pneumonia. No, no, I don't think so. <laughs> Though you may wish it was that when you hear that I've come to offer my resignation. Oh, no, really? Really, yes. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. I should never have accepted the job. I'm not really suitable and I never will be. Well, I, I thought you were settling in rather well. Yes, yeah, so did I at first, but... Uh, Let's say it's a clash of personalities. Ha. Ah. I thought it might resolve itself, but... Uh... With Councillor Potts? Yes. You have my sympathy. I've had a few clashes with him myself. I mean, he's made it perfectly obvious he'd be far happier yes, working with somebody never, else. Never mind about him. Now, what about you? I mean, how did you find the job, apart from Councillor Potts? Oh, well, yes. I mean, if it wasn't for that man, I, I, I wouldn't have dreamt of... I... I shouldn't be saying all that. Yes, of course you should. I'd be saying the same in your shoes. The man is bone idle, full of his own self-importance and a bully. And we'd all be a sight better off without him. Between you and me, Mr Wilton, many is the attempt I have made to get rid of our councillor Potts. But, well, when it comes to friends in high places, he has more than most. Actually, I... I was rather hoping... Well, I mean, if you'd been staying. Yes? Well, I was hoping that you might have been able to supply me with some ammunition. Ammunition? Information I could use to get rid of him. Oh. It's very difficult for me, stuck in here, to keep track of where he is and what he's doing. And I suspect he's seldom where he should be, and I suspect he does very little. But you see, suspecting isn't enough. I need chapter and verse if I'm to take it to the authorities. Yes, of course. That is why I didn't want his nephew to get the job. I wanted someone who might stand up to him. Someone I could trust. Oh, I see. I suppose what I'm saying... If you could only put up with things for a while and keep me informed as to what he's up to, and then perhaps, well, we could get him to resign. Yeah. I, I know it all sounds terribly underhand, as if I'm asking you to be some sort of spy, but all I can say is I believe you would be acting in the best interest of this school and everybody in it. 
So what you would like is for me to deliver some kind of memorandum on Councillor Potts, which would be for your eyes only. <laughs> oh dear, we are sounding rather MI5, aren't we? <sighs> Actually, it's all terribly irregular. Oh, no, let's face it, it's downright diabolical. I mean, I could get shot if anyone got so much as a sniff of what we've been talking about. They won't. Rest assured, Mrs. Jeffers, as far as I'm concerned, this conversation has never taken place. Oh, no, it hasn't? No. And uh, including the bit about you wanting to resign, that hasn't taken place either, has it? Oh, definitely. No, you can count on me. I shall keep an eye on the man and I shall bring you all the ammunition you need. Two ninety, mate. Oh, cheers. Is that when you serve? Oh, you're yeah, a double lager, please. No, hang on a minute. I'll get that. What you have? Half a lager. Right. Thanks very much. So how are you, then? See, you're going to have to talk to him now. Yeah, only for a couple of minutes, I'll though. tell you when your time's up, can't no. no, I'm fine, thanks. Can't grumble. Can you? Great. I only regret is I didn't marry Alma years ago. I'm very glad to hear it. No, I mean it. I mean, being married, I can come into a place like this, talk to you, and no one takes any notice. I'm safe. Safe? You won't be safe till they're pushing you around in a wheelchair. Even then I shall have to keep me distance. So tell me about you then. Anyone new on the horizon? No. Nobody? I find it hard to believe. Well, it's true. I'm not sure I want anybody either. I've got a nice big bed all to myself and life's a lot simpler than it's been for a long time. There we go, man. Cheers. 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 Have you been, have you? No, I'm just going. Only I'm a bit early. I thought I'd have half a larger. Well, if that's all right with you. Look, I'll buy it, you. In fact, I'll buy you half a dozen. Just change your mind and stop it on, Vera. Well, I'll buy my own, then. So weird what you're worrying over. I'm only going to tell him how he's missed his wife's birthday and how well our Tom is. I mean, what's wrong with that? Leaves all swept up. They are, yes. Good. Oh, well, anybody falls on Brett's the neck, it's not our fault. And what were you seeing Mrs. Jeffers about? Oh, yes. There's very little goes on in this place I don't get to know. Put in for a rise, were you? No. Oh, it was some complication over the, uh, the tax man. It's all sorted now. I see. Well, that you let me know next time. Any dealings with her ladyship, they're through me. All right. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realise there was protocol to be observed. Well, there is. Anyway, listen. I shall be away for most of the afternoon, so you're in charge. I should be back around 4.30. 4.30, eh? And you're off now? I am, aye. No problem, is there? No, no problem at all. Oh, and uh, minibus needs cleaning out. Apparently some of them got a little bit travel sick. All right. Fine, yes. What is it? Oh, hi, love. How are you? Never mind me. Is that what it's on me? There's no wrong with him, is there? Oh, no, of course not. No, he's as right as Ray. <laughs> so what is it, then? Why do you want to see me? Well, let me ask you a question. What date was it last Monday? Last Monday? Yes, yeah, 16th of November. Does it ring any bells? Look, Mum, what are you on about? Look, all I know is that all of a sudden I've got you coming on a special visit. So what is it that's so flipping urgent? Tell me, will you? Lisa's birthday, 16th of November. You forgot! And is that it? Is that what all this is about? Well, that's enough, isn't it? Forgetting your wife's birthday. I don't care. She's not locked up in here, is she? No, Mum, don't you ever do that again, right? I thought you'd have been glad to see me. Oh, this mum, you've no idea. Look at you. You forgot her birthday. Does that matter? I mean, does it matter that much that you've got to come running in here scaring me after death? Yes, it does matter. It matters a lot to her. She thinks you don't care about her. If you can forget her birthday, you can get you even wed to her. Look, I've got a lot on my mind, all right? No, it's not all right. It isn't all right, I'll tell you. I'll send her a card. Look, just put yourself in her shoes. I should be so lucky. Look, she's a young girl, isn't she? Yeah. And like all young girls, she wants to go out sometimes and have a bit of fun. 
And there's always them hanging around waiting to give somebody a good time, you know. Even them that's lost the wives, that's walked out on them, that's ready to walk out with somebody else's. Who? 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 Well, I don't know anybody but fellas. On the wrong doorstep. Curly. Is that rat messing about? No, my... not Curly. He's got a girlfriend of his own, haven't he? No, I'm on about well, somebody on their own, you know, whose wife's left him. That's ready to go out with somebody else's wife. Who's that bloke that lives across the street? What? Barnes. Des Barnes? No, I listen, I'm not saying there's not going on. Des Barnes. No, I, all I'm saying is that, well, it's a temptation, isn't it? I, I mean, if she thinks she don't care about her, well, she won't care about you either, will she? So he's been sniffing around, has he? Well, it's just that he's been on his own and she's been on her own as well. Right. And you don't help, do you? Not on letting her know that you still care for her. I see what you mean. Oh, I'm sorry, love, that I, I got you thinking things. It's just that, well, I thought it were right to come and tell you these things. Of course you did. So you're not mad at me, then? No. <laughs> oh, thank goodness for that. Your dad said... You know what your dad's like? He said I shouldn't come at all. No, I'm, I'm glad you did. And it is my fault, yeah. And I'll make sure it, it don't happen again. OK. I've seen four, no, five of these flats, as they call them. Though, goodness knows, Gail, you wouldn't use some of them to house a donkey. Mm. As bad as that. I don't know how they've cheek to ask money for these places. I don't, honestly. Don't you worry about it. You're welcome to stay with us as long as you like. Even if it's until you're qualified and you're a hospital matron. They don't have matrons anymore. They don't have much in the way of flats, either, from what I've been seeing. What about... What about what? Well, my flat's upstairs. I mean, it's standing empty. And I'm not thinking of getting a divorce. Well, not yet a while, so... Shall I ask her? Hmm. Uh, come on. Alma's just reminded me that uh, she's got a flat upstairs that's not doing anything. Oh, yeah, and it's ever so nice, so... Would you like to have a look? I appreciate it. I, I really do. It, it's just I think I've probably seen enough for one day, you know? How many is it for? Just the one. Uh, well, I was hoping to find somewhere would take three or four of us from the nurse's home. Oh. Oh, I didn't realise that. Yeah. Oh, well. Is there if you change your mind? Thanks. No? So you haven't resigned? Well, no. Oh, Derek! Mavis, I haven't resigned because Mrs. Jeffers has asked me to act as undercover agent in disclosing the activities of Harry Potts. Well, don't look at me. He's your husband. I have to be her eyes and ears. Well, hasn't she got eyes and ears of her own? Not in this case, no. Oh. no not as she would like to have. Well, I don't understand it. You went in today saying that you were going to resign. Well, I know. And now you come back and say that the headmistress has recruited you as a spy. She has. Not licensed to kill, are you, Derry? <laughs> Unfortunately, no. No, I wouldn't have to look far for a victim if I were. Well, I think it sounds ridiculous. No, I'll explain it all to you later, Mavis. I'll go and make a start on tea, shall I? Hey, hang on. Wouldn't you like to nip out the back door, just in case you've been followed? <laughs> I'm a frock upstairs and fit if you want a disguise. I don't think that'll be necessary, Rita, but thank you. Come on. Spying for the headmistress. Well, you said you wanted him happy, and he is. Hey, he said he was glad to see him, eh? And he said it's not going to happen again. And what happens when Lisa goes to see him and mentions that you've been in? Yeah, but he's not going to do. I've told him Lisa doesn't know about it, and we both agreed. Well, she shouldn't find out. So, you see, I'm not as daft as you think. You couldn't be. Come on, let's get some tea. I've done something else, I know. It's going to make it all right. What, but you'll have to wait. What? No, 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 no. You'll have to wait till tomorrow. Fear that. No, I told you, you'll have to wait. Ah, oh, Ta, I love. The potatoes are just about ready. Oh, well, I'll see you to them, love. Eh? I'll read in your horoscope this morning. Mm -hmm. Something really nice has been right on for you, Miss Brown. Oh, yeah, I believe that when I see it. Well, they must be right sometime, mustn't they? Or else they wouldn't be allowed to publish it. Eh? Fancy pine, Curly? 
No, no, it's a bit early yet. And anyway, I've got all this to get through. Kimberly not been in touch yet? No, not today, no. Why don't you give her a ring? I might. I'll see how I get on. It's what she'll be expecting, day after you've had a row. We've not had a row, I keep telling you. We've just had a difference of opinion. And so what if we don't speak to each other for the next 24 hours? It's not the end of the world. Might be the end of summer, though. Well, that's up to her. Do you know I always had you down as a hot-blooded type? I'm going to have to revise my opinion. Well, maybe you should. Ha! She's here. You can stop sweating now. You Kim. don't she's know who it is. I do. I'm psychic. Hello, Kimberly. Come in. Thank you. Hi. Right. I'm off. And that's not personal, because I was going out anyway. Won't I, Kelly? Yeah. Right. See you later. Bye. I bet she wasn't going out, was she? Not till I arrived. <sighs> yes, she was. Well, I don't believe you. Look, why don't you have a seat, eh, and I'll make her some coffee? Only if you're having one. Well, we could go out if you want. No, I think we'd better stay here. At least until I've said what I've got to say. And what's that? Oh, no, you have your coffee first. There you are, my little stocking top. One pound ten p. Thank you. Can I give you some money? Are you not open for business? I'm always open for business, darling, especially when someone's waiting to give me some money. Any reduction for cash? No. Nope. Uh, well, there you go. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, and we're straight. We are. Hey, right, well, what's all this he made of then? It's money I owe him for using his machinery. No, it's money you owe me for using my machinery and being found out. True. Yeah, tell me, how did you come out of this, eh? Did you make anything? Oh, just the odd couple of hundred. A couple of... I should have charged you more. You should. Half under the tomato. Please. He's a cool customer. Yeah, not a bad designer as well from what I've seen. Supposing he finds out about you spying on him. He won't. He might, and then that's only going to make things worse than ever. The first thing you'll know about it is when he's presented with the facts and asked for his resignation. And I hope I'm there to see his face. Oh, you're beginning to sound really malicious. Oh, I am. What he's made me. Malicious, cunning and devious. And I'm going to enjoy every minute of it. 140, please, Derek. Thank you, Bet. Oh. Well, that's what she said. She said she was looking for a place big enough to take three or four. Well, she won this morning. This morning it was definitely one for herself. Well, I don't know. Uh, hiya, all right. Um, yes. Hiya. Uh, do you want another one? No, I'm all right with this, thanks. Set them up again, will you, Jake? Right, right. Um, I was here first. Yeah, but I'll give bigger tips. I'll get it. What <laughs> Listen, we might be able to do each other a bit uh, good. Oh, yeah. I could always do it with a clever designer. We should get together, you know, and have a chat. Just so long as you don't try ripping me off. Me rip you? Look, you made 200 quid. All you gave me was 20. Yeah, well, I like it that way around. There you go, mate. Well, I haven't got time to talk tonight. We'll have a chat tomorrow if you're in, all right? Sorry. Take one yourself, Jack. Which was all that what you had done on the loft? I don't know, a few hundred. More than a few? And then it was £1,200 on that telescope? I bet you've spent over £2,000, haven't you, Curly? £2,000 and you never even mentioned it to me at a time when we're supposed to be saving up to get married. I suppose I should have mentioned it. Mentioned it? I should have talked to you about I it. I suppose you should, so why didn't you? Well, I didn't think you'd be interested. I mean, look what you said last time. You didn't even want to look at the telescope. Well, now I do. Come on, then. We'll in go. its box and on its way back to the shop where you bought it. Oh, come on, Kimberly. No, the money on the loft's gone. We can't get that back. But you said you got the telescope on easy terms. So if we send it back now, at least we'll save some of it. No. I'm sorry, but it's my money and I can decide what I spend it on. Not if you're marrying me, you can't. So you'd better decide, hadn't you, Curly? What's more important, our marriage or that stupid toy you've got up in the loft? Let me know when you've decided. Oh, how can you face that first thing on the morning? Especially when your beloved fiancé has given you an ultimatum the night before. Life goes on. So, having slept on it, what's your decision? Which are you going to part with, Kimberly or the telescope? Neither. I thought that was the choice, her or it. <sighs> Look, she's a woman, right? She likes to create little dramas. Curly? Bacon and eggs, all sexism, I can cope with one or the other first thing on the morning, not both. All I'm saying is women like to create a little row. It gives them a chance to let off steam. Don't kid yourself you understand women. I understand Kimberly. That girl is crying out for some, for some reassurance, and I will give it to her tonight when we make it up. Are you sure you want to? Eh? Well, it's just the way you talk about her sometimes. I just wonder if this whole telescope thing wasn't intended just to provoke Kimberly. How do you mean? Get her so fed up, she'd break off the engagement. Now, only a woman could think of that. Men aren't that devious. 
So you do want to marry her? Well, yeah, of course. I mean, we're engaged, that not Pass the sauce, will you? Uh, I hope you've got a tight hold of him. Of course I have, woman. Well, we don't want you dropping him. Look, give all wet to him. The lad's all right. The lad won't drop you, will he? <laughs> if you get jiggling him up and down like that, you're going to bring his breakfast. See, it, would you buzz off to work and let them as a cook with kids get on with it, eh? I'll have you be waiting for you, won't you? <laughs> no, she's on early turn, love. So what are you hanging about for them? I'm not hanging about, am I? I just can't think where I put my car keys. Mm. Yeah, by the phone. Come on, I'll see you. All right, love. Give us a kiss, love. Get away, woman. Not you, I tell me. Bless him. <laughs> Look at this sommy lad. You've got your woolly gloves. Uh, gloves, yes. And because this weather's so treacherous. And if that Harry Potts has you working outside... Don't worry, Mavis. I'm well equipped physically and mentally to cope with anything that Potts can hurt at me. And I tell you this, I'm a good deal happier knowing I'm not the only one determined to get him out of that school. Do you know, Derek, it sounds to me like this councillor Potts and uh, the headmistress, what's she called? Mrs Jeffers. Yeah. Very capable woman. Yeah. Good judge of character. Well, it sounds to me like them two are fighting a war and you're in the middle, which is just where people get hurt. Oh, Rita, I'm so glad you've said that, because that's what I think. And I've told him and told him, but he won't listen to because me. Because I'm well aware of the situation. It's politics, I know it is, but I'm an old hand at vicious jungle fighting. I've worked in offices half my life. So don't worry. Mm. I'll see you tonight. Yeah, mm. see you, Director R. Vicious jungle fighting, eh? Tarzan of the playground. See you, love. Where them from? Me. Oh. oh, they're from Terry. Oh. oh, so he didn't forget me birthday after all. Oh, look, Tom, look at these lovely flowers your daddy got for us. Isn't that nice? To Lisa, all my love and happy birthday from your loving husband, Terry. Oh, that's beautiful. <clears throat> I mean, can we put off doing them freezers any longer? That, that is what I am wondering. Well, they definitely need doing. Yeah, but it's fine the time, isn't it? I mean, it's not on while the cafe's open, is it? No, it's not. But if that health fella drops in, which sod's law being what it is, he's bound to do, then we are lumbered. Can't we get Phyllis in to give him a good clean out? Well, we could. I mean, I like old Phyllis, but we'll only finish up doing it ourselves all over again just to make sure it's been done properly. Yeah, you're right. OK, I give in. We'll do them tonight if you game. We could come in over the weekend. Oh, no, the weekend's sacred. I need the weekend to recover. No, we'll tackle them tonight, as soon as we lock that door. I'll ring Carmel, tell her I'll be late. I didn't think you'd get through to her at the nursing school. No, she's at home today. I heard her say this morning. She's no studies all day, so she's going to catch up on some reading. went off to college about 20 minutes ago. Is something wrong? We've got to have a blitz on the freezers. We desperately need cleaning out. Well, we can't do it while we're serving people. So, we have to do it when we close. Yeah, well, we're thinking of doing it tonight. Which means I'm going to be late home. Oh, thanks, Carmel. That's great. Thanks a lot. I'll see you later. Bye. No problem. Carmel's going to give the kids the tea. And she'll probably feed Martin as well, I shouldn't wonder. That little earth mother is Carmel.
Hey, Maggie, it's me. <laughs> no, no special reason, just had a sudden urge to hear your voice. Well, if you really want a reason, uh, what about tonight? I was thinking that we might go out. Morning. Uh, morning. Uh, no, 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 somebody's just. You've got serious problems. Oh, uh, not that I'm aware of. Illumination, intermittent flicker, that was the message relayed to me. Ah. I think I'd better ring you back. Bye for now. What? Oh, like a steadying hand. <laughs> Don't we all, Ken? Ah, thanks. Uh, well, you seem to have really taken to this job, Derek. Settled in very nicely. Settled isn't the word I'd choose. <laughs> I'm like you, I like precision. The mot juste. Settled, no. Challenged, yes. And well motivated. Oh, my word, yes. Good, good. <laughs> Between you and me, Ken, this is the biggest challenge of my life. <laughs> Would you mind passing me one of those tubes? Have a seat. Make yourself comfortable. I wouldn't normally drop into a house of ours in the middle of lunchtime. I don't like taking the manager away from the bar. That's OK. We're not busy. No. That I noticed. Which brings me straight to the point of this visit. The quiz night. I thought it might be. I thought we had a clear understanding. The Rovers returned. We'll be putting a team in to the Newton and Ridley Quiz League. Well, it didn't work out. You saw the trial run we had. <laughs> yes, I did. It was a right shambles. And whose fault was that? Well, Reg Holdsworth calls himself a manager. In my opinion, he couldn't manage a bag of cockles. And you put him in charge? Well, he volunteered. And they do say one volunteer is worth ten press men, don't they? He was your choice. Which means the fact that he made a mess of it comes back to you. The thing is... We're not really a quiz type of pub. Some are, I know that. And in some pubs it works well. But I never thought we had the kind of customers who'd take to it. I don't remember you saying any of this when I first put the scheme to you. Oh? Well, I did actually, Mr Wilmore. But I don't like being negative, so I thought we should give it a go. And anyway, you didn't ask my opinion, did you? You just said quiz night, get on with it. It's a means to an end. The point is to increase trade. Pull in a few customers on an otherwise slack night. Yes, and I'm all for that. If a quiz night isn't the answer, find something that is. Times are tough, Mrs Gilroy, or perhaps you hadn't noticed. And I'll tell you something else. I have a dozen young couples just bursting for the chance to manage a pub like this. See you later, Jack. Uh, mind how you go, son. See yes, you lovely. Hey, now, where's that rather tasty assistant of yours at present, huh? Doug, under the car. Well, at least I hope he is, why? Is he still chasing Deirdre? Oh, you know more about that than me, won't you? I mean, after all, you work with Deirdre. Yeah, you work with him? Yeah, but men don't talk, do they? Oh, don't give me that. They do if they're getting somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it. Well, it's uh, nearly two o'clock. It's a working district, is this? In a finish, it all comes down to your figures. Now, I know you've been connected with the Rovers for a good many years, but frankly, when your husband packed it in, I had my doubts about whether you could manage a place like this on your own. But I gave you six months to prove me wrong. Up to now, you're not doing very well. Now, you've a couple of months to prove me wrong. If you can't, I'm going to have to make some changes. Think about it. Hi, love. Oh, hi, Jason. Have a good day. Dead boring. No. You should try standing in a shop. I am going to. Got myself a weekend job in a flower shop starting on Friday. Florista? Well, that beats humping bags of potatoes, doesn't it? <laughs> How'd you manage to get a job like that? Oh, it's the usual thing, Audrey. It's who you know. The uh, shop owner, Mrs Redman, as she called, is uh, Ken's lady friend. Oh, is she? Oh. What's she? Well, I wouldn't know, never having met her. You'll have to ask Tracy. Oh, come on, Tracy, now tell us all about her. Well, my dad's here now. Why don't you ask him? What's that? Uh, hi, Ken. No, um... Was it, I was just wondering if you got the correct time. It couldn't be family, could he, this Wilmore fella? 
Well, not unless his mum were a Newton or a Ridley before she married his dad. And that's giving the fella the benefit of the doubt, assuming he ever had a father. Yeah, but the brewery's always thought highly of you, surely. They're all gone, Reet. The old brigade. Cecil Newton's in the Isle of Man, I think, growing roses. I don't know what happened to Miss Ridley after she retired. Yeah. They're all accountants now. Or whiz kids like this Wilmore. Well, that's the way things are now, everywhere. It wasn't so bad until Alec went and sold them the tenancy. But now, if this Wilmore wants to get shut of me, there's not a lot I can do. It won't come to that bit. I hope not, kid. Because if I lose my job, I lose my home as well, don't I? Anyway, I best get back and think about opening up. I'll be across later. Good. Be glad to see you. Frollo. Hello! Where's my Tommy day? Hiya. Oh, flowers. Who are them from? Terry. They came this morning just after you'd gone for work. Trust now, Terry. So he didn't forget my birthday after all. See, I told you, didn't I? Yeah. Well, I suppose it'd be awkward for him, wouldn't it, being in prison, trying to organise flowers to be sent? Yes, it would be a bit awkward for him. You see, that's why I told you they won't come in time, would yeah. they? But it just goes to show you, it's the world of you, you know. I know. He loves us, your daddy, doesn't he? <laughs> yes, he does. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm going to bath him in the proper bath tonight. I I'll am. just go up and run it. Oh, All do you right. want to give me a hand? Yeah, I'll come on. OK. Uh, just give me a minute, you know. Oh, right Whoa, come on, ah. <laughs> So, yeah? You played a good one there, sir, if you... What are you on about? Come on, dear. Oh, Terry didn't send them flowers, powder or pinches. Nothing, no doubt about them. Shut up. It was you, wasn't it? Yes, it was me. You let on to leave, so I'll swing for you, I will. I mean it. Oh, nay, I won't tell her. I'm just glad to see the little lass happy for once. She's happy, isn't she? And she's gonna stay in that way, no. All right. Oh, you know, I don't know about you, but I'm jiggered. I don't think I can face doing them freezers tonight. Well, won't get any easier tomorrow night. The voice of reason. Oh, come on. Sooner we get started, sooner we get finished. If you've got any more of them sensible flats you'd remark to me, would you get them served? Because they drive me mad. I'll tell you what. We'll look forward to finishing. Look forward to something nice afterwards. Like meeting Mike for drinking the Rovers. Oh, no, no. I think I'm better than that. Getting home, getting into a hot bath, getting Martin to scrub me back for me. Well, not bad, not bad. Mm. But first, the scrubbing's all ours. Oh, it was every question she asked me, Carmel. My mind just went blank. I think I've one of those days. <sighs> I start wondering if I'm cut out for nursing. Ah, you are, Martin. You'll be a great nurse. <laughs> yeah, well, I wish I had the confidence you've got. You don't need confidence. You've got the vocation and the ability. <laughs> yeah, well, you tell the course tutors that, will you? <laughs> When's tea? I don't know. Where's your mum? She's not on yet. Is she? Oh, I'm starving. Now I come to think of it, I think Gail said she might be late home tonight. Oh, fantastic. I suppose that means I've got to start putting some tea on. I'll do it, Martin. You sit down and have a rest. Uh, I thought you had plans to go out this evening. Yeah, but I'm in no hurry. Come on, Sarah Louise, you can help me make the tea while Daddy has a rest. Oh. Go on, let me sort me to it. Look who's come to see you, Kimberly. You'll have had your tea, Norman, I dare say. Yes, yes, thank you, Mrs. Taylor. Hello, Kimberly. Hello. Well, Daddy, uh, I expect the young people have got plenty to talk about, so we'll leave them to it while we do the washing up. Oh, you going to give me a hug with it tonight, Mummy? <laughs> Oh, you're kissing me, Oh. <laughs> oh, come on, Kimberly. I'm sorry we fell out, and I know it's all my fault. Yes, it was. It was all your fault. I know, I've just admitted it. And are you going to get rid of that telescope? <sighs> We've been through all this. I can't sell it. Well, I could, but I'd only get a fraction of what I paid for it. Oh, I see. Well, it doesn't matter anyway. It wasn't really just the telescope. That was just symbolic of the way you go on. No, no. I don't deserve you, really. No, you don't. 
Because you do exactly what you want, when you want and how you want. You're a very self-centred person. Me? Self-centred? And if you really loved me, you wouldn't be. I do love you. You might think you do, Norman, but you don't really. You don't think about us, you and me together. You behave as if there's only you that has to be considered. Oh, come on, that's not fair. I'm not blaming you, Norman. But it tells me that you're not really ready for getting married. Not to me, anyway. Because if you did consider us, well, you'd be different to what you are. Of course I want to get married. That's the reason I'm here. I think you'd better find somebody else, Norman. I don't want to keep nagging you into being something that you're not. And if we were right for each other, there'd be no cause for change. I want us to finish. Cheers, sweetheart. Keep the change. Oh, thanks, mate. Listen, uh, had a bite this morning. Another T-shirt. Fancy doing the design. Who's it for? Weatherfield Tire and Exhaust Company. Oh, wow. This is it. Prestige design job of the decade, that. Come on. They need a thousand to start. Interested? I am, and I'm not. Now, what's that supposed to be? I'm not interested in a one-off upfront design fee. I want to be on a percentage right the way down the line. Now, hang on. That could be a percentage to nothing. I mean, you're taking a risk. Money up front is a lot safer. You've got nothing to lose. You are a clever designer. You stick to that. You think I'm a clever designer now? I can be a whole lot cleverer when I stand to benefit from it. I'm sorry about that little moan I had at you today. Ah, feel free. You have a moan any time you feel like it. No. You've enough problems of your own. I meant to ask you, how's the battle over Ted's war going? I couldn't tell you. I just told solicitors to get on with it, and the less I hear about it, the better. I just want it sorted. No, oh, Derek, looking around. There's Rita, she's lost her husband. There's Beth, abandoned by her husband, or he abandoned her. I don't know which. Oh, I think I'm lucky, cos I've got you. <laughs> yes, I'm very lucky. Yes. Well, you're lucky too, of course. Oh, I don't think I'm lucky, Mavis. Yes, you are, Terry, because you've got me. Oh, yes, of course. Yes, mm. indeed. You are late. Oh, my, we've never stopped since breakfast, have we, no, Gail? Well, never mind that, innkeeper. Yeah. Two large drinks for these lovely uh, ladies. No, just a small oh, yeah. one. Not no, stopping. make them large ones. And do the same again for me and Angie, will you? Right, mate. I want you to meet my new pup. From now on, it's going to be Baldwin and Freeman. T-shirt suppliers to the world. Oh, Carmel. That was great. Uh... I hope Dance doesn't spoil. Well, that's her own look out, isn't it? I don't know where the hell she's got to. Oh, well, she did say she might be late. I think they were going to do some cleaning. Mm. Matt, come on, Sarah Louise. It's time you were in bed. I'm not having my bath. Oh, blimey, love. Come on, I've got loads of work to do. I've got an assignment to finish. That's how you bath in the morning, won't you? No, I want the bath now. Oh. Well, I suppose that's the assignment up the swanning. Come I'll on. I'll give her a bath, Martin. You get on with your work. Uh, you're going out tonight. I know you are. That doesn't matter. It's nothing special. Come on, Sarah Louise. Up the stairs we go. While Daddy does his work. We've got to help Daddy, haven't we? Yeah. Norman's going now. Going? But he's only just arrived. Oh, you are, Father. I'll say good night then. I'm afraid it's not good night, Mr. Taylor. It's, uh, it's goodbye. Goodbye, Mrs. Taylor. Goodbye? Good night, but Norman. Kim Little. Goodbye. Kimberly, what's going on? I, I, I think I've had a bit of a tiff. Actually, Dad, we've finished. I've told Norman it's all over. Don't talk so silly. You go after Norman this minute and bring him back here at once. No, I've finished with him. No, you have not. You're getting married in the spring. We've told everybody. Well, we'll have to tell everybody. It's off, won't we? So they don't spend any money on any presents. Randolph, speak to her. I think your mommy's a bit upset. You, you've been hasty, you know. I mean, I mean, he's a nice boy, is Norman. You've been on holiday with him. You've let him have his way with you. Now, I know that, Kimberly. He's no. got to marry you. No, Mother. I wouldn't marry him if he went down on bended knees. He doesn't love me. <gasps> You're talking like a silly romantic girl. You're talking rubbish. You and Norman are getting married as arranged, and that's an end of it. He's very fond of you, is Norman. I, I know that for a fact. Oh, yeah, he likes me. 
but he likes going to the pub of an evening. He likes fish and chips, but it isn't enough. You might think it is, but I don't. It's my life and I'll decide what to do with it. Kimberly, you're just talking rubbish. No, Mother. I'm not spending the rest of my life with somebody unless he wants me more than he wants anything in the world. Right. Would anybody fancy a cup of tea? Oh. Hiya. Ah, just about to send out the search parties. Where have you been? Around the cafe a couple of times. Went to the Rovers. Oh, I've been boozing in the Rovers ever since six o'clock. Of course we haven't. <laughs> been cleaning out the freezers. Called into the Rovers with Alma on my way home. Just had the one. Uh, I can't tell you. Oh, yeah, she said you might be a bit late. Oh, silly girl. I told her we were cleaning out the freezer. I was going to be late. Don't go blaming Carmel. She's been feeding the kids. She's been bathing them, putting them to bed. Well, she didn't have to. You could have done that. Yeah, but I've had all this work to do, Anna. And like I say, don't go blaming Carmel. I mean, she's not a skivvy, you know, girl. She's not a servant. She's supposed to be going out with her pals tonight. Hello, Gail. Your supper's all ready. It just needs heating <sighs> through. Oh, thanks, Carmel. Uh, are the kids in bed? I'll go up and say goodnight. Ah, uh, they're asleep. I was just reading Sarah Louise a bit of a story, and when I got to the end, she was fast off. Oh. Yeah. Carmel, I didn't know you wanted to go out tonight. You should have told me. Sure, that doesn't matter in the least. I've been just as happy stopping in. Where's this go? Typical man. In that cupboard there. Well, how about finishing that jigsaw tonight? Nah, we'll watch a video. Then I'll get you a video. You have to ask Mum. She don't like me watching videos. I'm not surprised. I can imagine the sort of stuff you like watching. Ghosties and ghoulies and four-legged beasties and things that go bump in the night. There you go. Well, get off me. What? You went on as though I'd been missing for months. One drink, that's all I had. Well, if you'd have got your message right in the first there place. There was nothing wrong with my message. I definitely told Carmen we'd be late because we're cleaning out the Okay, all right, so we got lost in translation. Nicky helped with the washing up. <laughs> and he's with his ball in the back. <laughs> oh, smashy Carmel. Well, you can't persuade him to clean his bedroom, can you? He looks like a bomb zitty. <laughs> Don't you think you should chip yourself, Martin? You have us late for class. Come on, right. say bye bye to your mum. Uh, that essay of yours is really good. Yeah. Yeah. I read it last night. Oh, oh, yeah. Thanks very much. You won't forget to tell Sally, will you, that Dave's got the snuffles? I don't <laughs> When you've time. Because I can always take him to the doctors if he has. Well, I might condescend to give you the benefits of my experience. Yes, Martin, Carmel. Martin, what? Did you hear any of that? Yes, David snuffling. Tell Sally. Sorry, Gail. My fault for waffling on. Michael's forever telling me I could talk the legs off a caterpillar. <laughs> so, right. right. Right, I'm off. Give us a kiss, Jean. Right. And pick us up early. Right, I'll pick you up then, eh? Early. Right. Ta-da. Ta right, I'll get myself organised. I have time for a cup of tea first. Uh, don't go away. I've got the kettle on. Hey, Sarah, have you noticed how people keep bossing me around lately? Gee, born slave me, you know. Right, I'm just going to nip to Alf Roberts for a few bits. Vera, what can I get Terry that's a bit special, you know? Well, he can't have much, can he? Mm -hmm. Well, just take him yourself, love, and that little lad. Right, if Tommy cries, you'll see to him, wouldn't you? Right, yeah. come, it's a bit damp out there, girls. OK, yeah. back in a bit, then. Hey, get out there some soap, cos he's running short. Right, so... How do you know? I, he's well, always short yeah. of soap, love. He wore use it by the tongue when he lived here. <laughs> right, OK, so... <laughs> he nearly blew it, then. Blew what? Blew what, she says. Your little conspiracy, your little secret visits to prison, not to mention flowers that she thinks she got from her husband. Look, I'm trying to keep them two together, and I will if you remember to get your big mouth shut. My big mouth? What about your big... What about Terry's? She's seen him this afternoon. He is bound to say the flowers weren't from him. No, he won't. Think about it, Vera. Suppose he does. She's got to ask him first, hasn't she? Oh, that... I don't believe I'm hearing this. I don't know. Look, look, I'll, I'll say it slow for you. She says, thanks for the flowers, Terry. He says, what flowers? You see, there you go, looking on the black side. What other side is there? Well, look, if she asks him and he says that he didn't send the flowers, well, she'll know the flowers come from somebody else, won't she? Yes. Well, then I'll have to admit that the flowers came from me. Great. Well, I don't know why I'll just say that I definitely remember him mentioning flowers. When? When what? When did Terry mention flowers? 
Was it on his last weekend off? Was it at Bingo the other night when you saw him? Or was it when you visited him in prison without little Lisa knowing? Well, it won't come to that, will it? I wish you'd shut up about it. Anyway, it's the thought oh, that counts, innit? God. Where are you going now? Feed me pigeons. Well, you, you fed him once? Have I? I'll go and feed him again. See ya. Hiya. Oh, hi. You're out bright and early. Well, I'm going to go off to see Terry today. He can take Tom with me. Oh, great. Well, great as it can be, I suppose. Oh, I'm really looking forward to it. You know, he sent me flowers yesterday. Did he? How yeah. did he manage that, then? Well, Terry has his way. Yeah. You have to make concessions for birthdays. Hey, you've had your birthday. Yeah, I know, but better late than never. That's Terry all over. Yeah. I'll see you. Yeah, see you later, Lisa. Hey, have a good visit. I will. Enter. Draymond are ready for the off. They're just waiting for your signature. Have you counted everything? Yeah, spot on. Did we take our little shoes and socks off? Look, if you don't believe me, check it yourself. I intend to. Be out in a minute. I'll tell them. What do we have to do to get them off me back? What, the Draymond? The brewery. We're still not flogging enough ale, according to them. Come on, Jack. You're a drinking man. Have you no bright ideas? Apart from what you're thinking, I mean. Oh, what was I thinking? Topless barmaids. Oh, I weren't thinking that, but I'm just worth it. No, <laughs> Jack. Your next suggestion's not a bad one, though. What was that? Happy hour. Happy hour? You know, buy one, get two. Sounds great, that. When do we start? When I've decided. And preferably when the pub's on. Give us them. Oh. Getting late. You can't mope here all day. Here you go. Oh, it's not like a rejection, is it? It's not as if Kimberly's giving you the elbow because there's anything wrong with you. Just a breakdown in communication, that's all. Drink your coffee. The telescope was just an excuse. She's a homemaker, Curly. That means pooling your money and having a discussion about how you spend it. I bet she couldn't buy a bag of plums without talking about it first. Don't tell me. I've had a lucky escape. No. She's not like me, is she? Or any other woman, for that matter. Oh, there are women like a course around. No, there ain't. She was very hurt, Curly. So am I. You told me once that fate brought you together. I can't see a telescope spoiling all that, can you? <sighs> Don't be funny. I'm trying to be constructive. Sympathy's no good to anyone. <coughs> well, go on, it might be Kimberly. I said, don't be funny. Double seven three nine. Yes, hang on, I'll get him. It's for you. Guess who? <clears throat> Hello. Hello, Kimberly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. Yeah, okay. Then. Bye, bye, bye. Well. She's calling around tonight. Thought she might. Just to pick up a few of her things. I thought the rug was at her place. Well, it is, but there's a few more bits. Bits? Could send a man then, couldn't you? My mum's car's broke. What I mean is, Kimberly's coming here herself. What does that tell you? It tells me I have to start getting her stuff together. There's a couple of CDs and uh, an umbrella in the kitchen, I think. God, your hard work. She's coming to see you, you nit. Fake, Curly. You can't avoid it. Do you make any coffee? It's looking at you. Two pints, two twenty. Cheers, Get a spare five minutes this afternoon. I'll take you through your highway code, eh? No, my test ain't till Monday, is it, sir? Oh, that's ages away, is it? Oh, huh? It's all up here, mate. Yeah. Cheers, anyway. Two eighty change, Kev. You believe him or what, bet? Talk cop. He's got a driving test Monday. He's already passed. I don't know why you're bothering going in for it. Why don't you just phone it in? He do that now. So what's wrong with being so confident, eh? Because anything can happen, can't it, eh? You can be driving along a road, a dog will run out of an entry straight in front of your car. What do you do? Both feet are down. On the dog? <laughs> <laughs> On the pedals, emergency stop. Oh, just like that, eh? Yeah. I'll tell you what, why don't you put your money where your mouth is, eh? Ooh, 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 that's gonna be worth a fiver, hasn't it? I'll make it a tenner if you like. Oh, yeah, confident, yeah. I bet you hang on to the money, will you? Come on, get your money out. Hey. Hang on, Jacko. Yeah. Vera passed first time, didn't she? What? A driving test. Oh, I yeah. Oh, <laughs> coward. Pint, please, Jack. All right, all right, coming up, Kev. Yeah. You got a minute? 
What happened to you then? I told you. Business. Look, I don't want to pry it, Doug, but if Baldwin had come round... Yeah, I know. I'm sorry, but I didn't like saying till I'd been. I saw a debt counsellor down the citizen's advice. Huh? When did you arrange that? I just went on spec, didn't I? It's getting to me, Kev. All these people on me back after money, you know. So what did they say? What Baldwin said, really. Cut me losses. Declare myself bankrupt. There you go, lad. Cheers, Jack. Oh, yeah, and I'll get that. You're in enough trouble, you are. Uh, Cheers, Jack. Right, I'll bring you change back. So is that what you're going to do? Declare yourself bankrupt? Well, Baldwin's no mug as far as finance is concerned, is he? I mean, it's got to be worth thinking about. At least I'll be able to sleep at night. There you are, Kev. Well, what about the people you all wanted to know? They're not going to get much kick, are they? You all right, Maeve? Yes, thanks. That was delicious. <laughs> I saw Lisa earlier on getting into a taxi with the baby. Is it... Um... Visiting day. Oh, it must be very difficult for the poor girl seeing Terry under those circumstances. Uh, I mean, it must make conversation difficult. Because she can't paint too rosy a picture of life on the outside. What's he got to talk about? No, usually. Man, he might find something today, though. I'm ready to see you, love. Good journey. Well, traffic was bad. It seemed to take forever. Go on, then. Give your dad a big cuddle. Hiya, chump. <laughs> hey, he's growing, isn't he? You have this boy working out, or what? Oh, he's working me to a shadow. I know that much. Shiv over. Yeah. This day's your life. I wish I could be out there sharing him with you. <laughs> well, yesterday was nice. Oh, Tom. Yesterday was nice. What happened yesterday? As if you didn't know. I don't. Well, go on. Well, it was a bit late, but that's you all over, isn't it? My present for my birthday. Present? The flowers. Well, you did send them, didn't you? Said so on the card. I sent them then, didn't I? Hey, I hope you didn't help your mummy arrange no soppy flowers. Now, well, that's no job for a growing lad, is it, eh? <laughs> Let's feel them muscles again. Come here. Come here, go on. Hey. <laughs> So, you still missing me, then? What do you think? I like to think you are. I know I am. It's at night when they bang us up that my mind starts wandering. You know, what happens if, you know... But if what? Someone starts taking advantage. <laughs> You're talking daft. I've seen it. I've seen it happen. And I've seen what it can do to a bloke when it does happen. Well, take advantage of what? Of you. Young, attractive, on your own. Terry, I live with your mum and dad. I'm not saying you would. Well, I trust you. I'd go right off my box if I didn't. I love you. Have you got that, Terry Duckworth? Yeah. <laughs> well, I love you now, I come to think of it. Well, I sent you the flowers, didn't I? You belong to me, right? Both of you. You keep lifting them weights. Keep eating that porridge. Fine, love. So Christmassy, aren't they? Mm. I thought you said she was nervous. Well, her mother said that. Uh, Deirdre doesn't mind, does she? Of course not, no. Why should she? My dear, there's no price on this one. Oh dear, the ticket must have fallen off. They're 350. Right, well, if you wrap it, I'll sort out the money. Fine, I'll be with you in a sec. Thanks, Ken. She's just what I need. I don't suppose you care to stay? I could do with a hand trimming the mistletoe. <laughs> I've got marking to do, I'm afraid. I'll check with you later. Well, if you've got any more like Tracy, you can send them along. Uh, gifted, isn't she? Runs in the family. Uh, well, no offence, but I don't want Deirdre. I'll bear that in mind. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Hey, out 
just like waiting to hear how your visit went. How did it go, eh? It's all right. Ah. Oh, well, go on, then. It's all right, I've said. Uh, what did our Terry have to say, then? About what? Yeah. Ooh, about anything. Well, he couldn't say much about the flowers, could he? He didn't send them. Well, you've got to understand that, Terry, love. Oh, I'm beginning to. It's you I don't understand, Vera. Well, I knew he'd be upset about not being able to send you out for your birthday. I mean, he couldn't send flowers from where he is, could he? You sent them, didn't you? I thought so. Well, you should have saved your money. You might have saved me some disappointment. Well, I am his mother, you know. Yeah, and I'm his wife. The difference is I can't make excuses for him. Well, don't overdo it. She'll think you're desperate. What, play it cool, you mean? Play it like you always play it. Hey? Before, when you've broken up with Kimberly. I don't make a habit of breaking up, you oh, know. Oh, come off it. She sulks, you get round her and bingo. So, we make it up. What's wrong with that? Kiss and make up. So? Well, that's why some people do it, isn't it? Break up so they can make up for the passion, you know. Passion? Well, a bit difficult with a girl like Kimberly, I admit, but you never know your luck. Oh, she's here. Right, don't forget, I want a full report in the morning. Get lost. Your pictures, then. Come on. <clears throat> Hello, Kimberly. Hi, Abba. Come to collect my things. Right, I'm off. Hi, Kimberly. Hi. Let's see you an umbrella. <clears throat> well, I've, uh, I've not been in long. I've not had a chance to uh, sort anything out. I told you this morning. I know, I know. Listen, have a seat while I'm looking. Well, I can't stop long. No, no. I know you can't. No. Right, then. Umbrella. Kitchen. And when it's bath time, I lend you some of my bubbles. Lots yeah. and lots of bubbles. Is Mum home yet? Martin's gone for her. You won't forget to ask her, will you? No, no, I won't forget. Nikki and me are going to watch a video, Indiana Jones. I'm not sure it's suitable for a gentle little lady such as yourself. Hi, everybody! <laughs> Sweetheart. All right. Hi, Carmel. Right, Everything all right? Yeah, well, David's tucked up and asleep, but I still to bath. Oh, Sarah. I'll do that. Oh, I'll ask her. Uh, check with Sally, and David's breathing's fine. Oh, smashing. Anything else? Not a lot. Um, Martin's promised to read my essay when he's got time. You've not forgotten No, anything. no, a promise is a promise. Carmel. We've got some free space tomorrow. I'll do it then, eh? What is it, Nicky? Oh, go easy on the criticism. It's only in work. Carmel. <laughs> I'll think about it. Hang on a minute. Go on. I'm asking you, Mum. Uh, what's he on about? Uh, I think I know. Um, look, Nicky, we'll play your video later on. When your mum's had a cup of tea, we'll, we'll all sit ourselves no, down. No, Carmel. Well, it's only Indiana Jones. Oh, Mum. No video. Not tonight. Uh, what's up? I decide what goes on in this house, Martin. Your bedroom's a tip, Nicky. Go tidy it up and then maybe we'll talk about videos. <laughs> Thanks. Might as well go to bed. Uh, Nicky! Oh, great. Can I have my bath now? In a minute, darling. I want Carol to do and go to bed from the bubbles. It, is that OK, Dan? <sighs> yes, of course it is. Come on, Sarah and Louise. Bubble time. Mm. I'm sorry, Martin. I'm sick of coming in the house and feeling like a visitor. She organises everything. Yeah, but she's only trying to take yeah, the I pressure just want off. I'm saying what goes on. I say, you've just had your say then, didn't you? There you are. I think that's the lot. There's uh, some extra wool in there as well, you know, for the rug. Thanks. Well, I suppose I'd better go then. Sit down, Kimberly, will you? We can't just end it like that. You think I'm here to make up, don't you? Well, well, no. It's just that, well, fate brought us back together again and, and fate should decree... I've unpicked the rug. Hey? It was a mistake. Oh, I don't know. The design was a bit formal, but... I've known for ages that you weren't for me, Curly. I just didn't know how to get out of it, that's all. I came tonight to make it clear to you that I meant it, so that you wouldn't entertain any false hopes. I'm sorry. Oh, come on, Kimberly. I'm not the same person. I'm not that silly, stupid girl that went to that dating agency. Yeah, but that was just fate, I was saying. No, it was you. You taught me confidence to believe in myself. Dead selfish, I know. No, 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 it was me that was being selfish with the telescope and But where are you going? Goodbye, Curly. Oh, come on, Kim. Kim. Please don't take this the wrong way. And please don't hate me for it. 
But I know I've got a future. Thanks, Curly. I'll always be grateful. Ah, just about giving you two up. Oh, for you. Oh, thank you. Are you coming through? Uh -huh. So, went well then, did it? It's great, Mum. I got the hang of it dead quick, didn't I, Dad? <laughs> Very impressive. Oh, I was thinking about you. All that cold water and compost. <laughs> you stopping for a drink? No, I must get back. I'll leave Tracy to give you the details. It'll only take a minute to put the kettle on. Oh, really? I'll see myself out. All right. Thanks, Dad. My pleasure. Bye. Bye, Ken. Oh, come on, details. Well, she just showed me the ropes and I picked it up dead easy. She promised me two fifty an hour, but she says she's going to raise it to three. Great, but uh, give me all those details after, love. What about him and the flower seller? Definitely something there, I'd say. How do you mean? I can't explain. Anyway, you'd have to be a florist to understand. Tracy! Don't you think you'd better put them flowers in water? I'll put you in water in a minute. Hey, come on, details. Mmm. This is good, do you know that? Original, is it? It was just a question. No, it wasn't. It was an insult. No. I don't want you opening your big trap, right? My big trap? About what we've talked about, not till I've decided, right? Yes, Vera. Half a lot. Yeah, you know, I, I like it. It sort of uh, grabs me. Right, well, I'll finish it. How soon can I sell you the customer? Find me a pint, I'll tell you. Jack! Yeah. Now, come on. How long will it take you to finish it? All of five minutes. Well, it's not exactly the Sistine Chapel, is it? Jack, a pint for my designer, Ian. A pint? Mm. Hey, Bet, you, you mean happy hour? Know your enemy. That's the thing. They say Monty had a picture of Rommel in his caravan. Oh, I hope you're not suggesting we have one of Harry Potts. Good heavens, oh. no. You know, it is reassuring, isn't it, to think that right will triumph in the end? Well, it hasn't triumphed yet, Mavis. The dossier isn't complete. You know, you can be very menacing. <gasps> like last night. Oh, no. <laughs> Go on. No, no. <laughs> no, I remember thinking you, you looked at me rather strangely. I thought you wanted me to turn the light out. Oh, no, it wasn't that. No, it was just a... Well, it was when you started to write your report and you, your eyes sort of focused on your imagination almost and, and you just... Opened your notepad and unclipped your biro from your pyjama pocket just so slowly and deliberately. Slowly and deliberately. That's how I intend to trap Harry Potts. So I would tell he blew it, did he? I knew he would. I don't think she knows I've been to see him. I thought she were quiet when she come in. Oh, she'll get over it. Now to room I go to her. Just think about her, you know. Oh, I... Right, Annie. Bright okay. and early tomorrow, mate. See you, See you after, yeah. Ta-da. We've been waiting for you. Nothing on me, pal. There's nothing in the shop. We banked the lot. Oh, I don't want anything. We've got something for you, actually. Oh! Oh. A bit of advice. Leave Lisa Duckworth alone. Well, I don't know where all the tea bags go to. We seem to be getting through twice as many these days. <laughs> you want to work here? Not looking at me. This is my first today. Thank you. Oh, true. And you must have been here all of what five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen, we can't interest you in some chocolate digestives while you're here, can we? Special offer. No, thank you. That's something we've managed to cut down on since Derek got his job. How's he going on? Sorry, Derek. Has he settled in his new job, has he? Oh yes, uh, things are fine. <laughs> anyway, I'd best be getting back. Cause Rich will be wondering where I've got to. Bye, Mary. Bye. -bye. Oh, well, look who's come to brighten up our morning. Yes, he has. Oh, I'm glad he's brightening somebody's morning off. You should have seen him earlier. Talk about temper. Oh, I don't believe a word of it. 
Oh, listen, Jack was saying you've been to see Terry. Yeah, I did, Jack. How is he? Oh, he's all right. At least he's sleeping at night. Yeah, well, I mean, it can't be easy for him either, can it? I mean, stuck in that place. Now to think about, apart from where he's missing. Yeah. It's only me. Desmond, are you up yet? Yes, I'm up. If you keep it down, I'd be grateful. We had feels like it's been playing host to the National Clog Dancing Finals. Oh, my God, lad. What have we been up to? Had an argument with the bath. The bath? Yeah, I am. Um, slipped as I was getting out, give myself a bit of a crack. Oh, dear. Have you seen the doctor? I'm all right. Well, you might have concussion or anything. I'm going to phone the doctor and make an appointment. I'm fine, I'm fine, Phyllis, honestly. Looks a sight worse than it is. Only thing that's hurt is me pride. Stupid thing to do. Oh. You're not going to work, I take it? No, not this morning. Come on, love. Sit down now, put kettle on. Come on, love, did you hear me? I haven't gone deaf as well, have you? Sit down here. Come on, Pat. I'll put the kettle on, love. Oh, dear. Here. What have you got? Some milk on there. What's Sarah doing up there? Pushing her teeth. Yeah? You seen that black file of mine? Seen that? Eh? You know that black file I was putting my notes in last night? Oh, in the settee. Yeah. How does she seem to you? Who? Carmel! We got two words out of her this morning. Yeah, well, she had to get off early, didn't she? Yeah, I know. I still reckon I was right, you know. As far as my kids go, what I say goes in this house. Yeah, well, she overstepped the mark and you put her right. You're feeling so guilty about it. You don't think I overreacted? Oh, no, of course I don't. It's just, um, I didn't feel in control of my own kids. My own home. Mm. Something I've been feeling more and more each day. My fault, isn't it? I let her do it. Perhaps it wasn't such a good idea taking her in in the first place. Yeah, well, she won't be in much longer, will she? As soon as she finds a place that's half decent, that's it. She'll be off. And then we'll be left wondering how the heck we're going to manage without her, won't we? Right. Can't hang around here, though, day. Right, go on, Sarah. We're off. Let's get this done, eh? Say bye-bye. Say bye-bye, Daddy. Wave bye-bye. You're not going to wave. <laughs> Well, if you remember you've got a brake as well as an accelerator, you might just do it. No problem. I'll be here when you get back, all right? There's no need. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've heard that before, don't I? Well, look, I thought that clutch job was worked first thing this afternoon. Yeah, I do know. Yeah, so why don't you get back? Because they're going to be, what, a good half hour. Oh, yeah. And how are you going to get back if you just don't happen to swing it? Well, I'll give you a ring, right? Oh, look, you can be back in five minutes and have the job done by the time I've finished. Yeah? I mean, there's no point hanging around here for half an hour, especially when there's no need. Yeah, I suppose you've got a point. So you're going to give us a bell if you need me? Yeah, and look, uh, you might not mind working in a lunch hour, but I'm sure Doug does. Right. You better go yourself as well. All I'll right. see you later. Cheers, see you. And uh, good luck, all right? Cheers. <coughs> no, I'm sorry. No, no. Hello. It's all right for so many. Hey? Do you mind? I'll have you know I've been up since half past six this morning. Uh, and who do you think's making the world a safer place? Well, a pair of you two are living in the land and all, eh? Oh, aye. Join special branch all of a sudden, have you? <laughs> well, I'm looking after that factory. It saves the peelers a job, so they've got all the time in the world to make sure all you lot are sleeping safely in your beds. Yeah, I give us a pack. Come on, set these two up. Might put a smile on their faces. Well, I'll tell you what, Donald, if you're buying, you can bank on it. <laughs> That's very generous. What's brought this on? Yeah, it just happens to be my birthday. Oh, oh, many happy birthdays. Thank you, thank you. It's a birthday that five months ago I never thought I'd see. And if that ain't cause for celebration, I don't know what is. So if you're in tonight, lads, we'll really push boats out. Thanks a bunch. Guess who's working at six o'clock? I'm not even going to be able to have a celebratory drink with my son. Celebrate? Hey, passed his driving test. If he does. Eh? I'm not saying he's not a good driver. He, he just they don't, do they? I mean, lads his age would pass first time. Mm. Well, I'll tell you what, Jacko, and I'll tell you no more. I have a tenner that says he will. A ten? Oh, come on. I've had a five of your Steve. Oh, have you now? Well, that means you're going to be 15 quid later about tonight, then, aren't you? Hey? Right, let's put you down, then. Oh. All right, all right, I'm coming. There we go. There we go. <coughs> Des, what on earth's happened? You wouldn't believe it. What have you done? Look, 
Do you mind if I take the weight off my feet? Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. Come through. Uh, 30 miles an hour, 75 feet. 50 miles an hour, 175 feet. And 70 miles an hour, 315 feet, depending on road conditions. Yeah. I take it the driving will be part of your job. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. McDonald, but I do feel you need a bit more experience under supervision. You mean I failed? I've noted a couple of points that I feel you could give special consideration to. And as a general observation, you could pay a little bit more attention to controlling your speed when you're approaching road junctions and corners. Right, right, OK, um, you've told me that, so can't that be enough? I'm uh, sorry, Mr MacDonald. But I need to drive for my job. I suggest you put in for another test without delay. So you failed me on two piddling points? I'm afraid that's all I can say, Mr MacDonald. Good morning. As I was packing up, I thought it was a raid on the shop. And wasn't it? You made that very clear. Look, I'm sorry, Lisa. I wasn't going to tell you. I told Phyllis I slipped getting out the bath. I just thought you ought to know. I just thought you ought to know what kind of fella you really married. Terry? What's he got to do with it? Seems someone give him the word that we've been seeing a bit of each other. Oh, now, come on. I mean, if you think Terry was behind... I don't this... think. I know. Look, I think that bump on the head's a bit worse than you reckon. If you seriously think... Look, Terry... so how come some goon told me to stay away from Lisa Duckworth? He what? That was the message. Loud and clear. And flaming painful. Now, who do you think was behind it? Yeah, but why? But there's never been anything between us. Okay, we've had a couple of drinks and a meal. Yeah, well, that's more than enough, it seems. If you're stuck in prison with your brain in overdrive. Yeah, but how would he know? Something you must have said in conversation. No, no way. I I've never even mentioned your name to Terry. Not even when you let me use the back garden for Tom. Well, someone must have given him word. But how could they? The only people he ever sees are me and Tom and Jack and Vera. So if you never said anything? No. No, they'd never do a thing like that. Wouldn't they? Not exactly being the blue-eyed boy around here, have I? Oh, now, come on. Look, if you think that either of them would give Terry the idea that you've been... What, sniffing round his missus? It hasn't been like that. That's what Vera thinks, though, isn't it? See the way she dotes on that grandson of hers? What's Tom got to do with it? Look, suppose there was something between me and you. Suppose we were more than just pals. <laughs> but we're not. Vera knows that as much as anyone. Does she? I've already been given the red card once, remember? Suppose she thinks we're getting too close for comfort. Suppose she gets it into her head that you might not wait around for Terry. This is ridiculous. Who do you think stands to lose the most from this? Do you think for one minute Vera could even think about life without that grandson of hers? Get that clutch cable finished, did you? You passed. Well, what did I say? Oh, well done, you little bell to what are you? Right, suppose we better get back to the sweatshop. Hey, where's your piece of paper? Hey. Your certificate. 
When I had pasta, we were waving it round for days. I would have had it framed if I didn't have to send it off on the licence. Um, well, no can do, so. Okay? Hey? Well, it's in the post, innit? As soon as I got it, I sent it off. Hey, you don't hang around, you do, eh? Hey? No way, listen, see you later. Yeah, see you later. Hey, suppose this will cost me a pint later, will it? You can bet on it. <laughs> Housemanhood, so then come on. Ah, oh, bless him. <laughs> Where you off then? Out. If I stop in this house one more minute, I'll explode. What, shall I? Something happened? Yes, Vera, something's happened. Oh, our Jack. What's he been up to now? No, it's not your Jack. In fact, by my reckoning, your Jack's probably the only member of this family who didn't have out to do with it. Well, I'm sorry, love, you, you've lost me now. Des Barnes is in a pretty sorry state just now. There's bounds. Yes, he was set on last night by someone who had a message for him, telling him to keep away from me. Now, who do you think he'd set up a little surprise like that, Vera? Hey, I hope you don't think I said he had all to do with it. I don't think, Vera, I know. And I also know that he wouldn't get the idea there was out between me and Des Barnes without any prompting. So don't come the innocent with me. Hey, I hope you don't think I had all to do with it. Where else would it have come from? Look, you're wrong. And you're wrong about our Terry and all. Oh, yeah. He's just a great big softie, isn't he? Wouldn't hurt a fly. That's why he's inside, isn't it? He's inside because of a miscarriage of justice. He's inside because he does what he always does. Puts his fists into gear before he starts his brain. But you're wrong, Lisa. <laughs> Look, you don't know him like I do. No, Vera, and I never will. Because now I can see him for what he really is. At least I've got that much to thank you oh. for. Lisa! ask you the same question. Come for Sarah Louise. There's a coincidence. What you've come for, huh? That's right, yeah. Sorry, I don't understand. Did Gail not tell you? No, she didn't say anything to me. She'd been thinking of... I told her this morning I'd be finishing work early and I'd collect Sarah Louise on my way home. I had to come home. I were no good to nobody. I had to talk to you. I said to Curly, I said, I've got this thumping migraine. Where's our Jack? Out. Um, have you said out about, you know? No. Oh, thank goodness for that. I suppose I'll have to find out eventually, but there's no point in making things worse than they are. And you still say I'd help to do with you? Look, I won't do all to upset you, or Tom. That's God's honest truth. You must know that, but... But what? Well, I might have just mentioned his name in passing. Mentioned his name in passing? You could have signed his death warrant. What did you say, for God's sake? Look, I had to get through to him how important it was to let you know that he still cared. Well, he does care. Of course he does. You know that. It's just that... Well, he finds it hard to show his feelings. And that, and I did say, well, if he didn't, there'd be plenty of wood. <laughs> like Des, for instance. Well, yes. No, oh, I don't know. Look, if I said Des, it, it would just to, to make a point, you oh, know. Oh, you certainly did that all right. Listen, I felt you needed to know that he was still thinking about you. So that's why you bought the flowers. <sighs> well, yeah, I, I knew you were disappointed. When you realised he'd forgotten your birthday. And yeah, I did say Des, but... Well, it was just to let him see, let him make him understand what he was doing. Hang on a minute. You haven't seen Terry since my birthday. You have seen Terry. Oh, God. What's the point in denying it? Yes, I did. I did go see him. I, I did organise an extra visit, but I did it for you. For all of us, I just couldn't stand thoughts of you both drifting apart. And he never said a word. By God, you lot certainly stick together. I'll give you that much. I 
thought it'd be for the best. It would have been. If all this hadn't have happened, well, well, you'd have never known, would you? No, Vera, I wouldn't. And you and Terry would have gone on manipulating me for the rest of your life, wouldn't you? Oh, God. And that bit goes there. That's right. Mummy don't do jigsaws with me. Oh, Mummy doesn't have much time, does she? But I'm here. I can do jigsaws with you. Me and you will be able to do lots of things together, yeah? Mm. And you put that piece in there. Changing though, I've run out of nap. Oh, thanks, Sally. Oh, here we go. I didn't think you'd be back so soon. Oh, yeah, we've done nearly half a gym so since we came back. Isn't that right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I have done all that. Yeah. Oh, that's very, very good. You know, Rosie can nearly do jigsaws now, a big elephant. Oh, do you know where Mummy keeps David's nappies? Yeah. Be a pet and go and get one, will you? Well, I'd better be off. Oh, Sally, about this afternoon. I'm sorry about the mix-up. Oh, it wasn't your fault. Uh, it was funny Gail didn't say anything to me, but... Yeah, w when you do see Gail, it might be better not to mention it. Oh? She's got a lot in her mind just now. What Gail has? Um, well, this is strictly between you and me, but... Well, Gail and Martin are going through a bit of a difficult patch at the moment. Nothing serious, but what with the hours Gail's been working and, and the pressure Martin's under on his course. Oh, I had no idea. So if you didn't mention this afternoon, it might be for the best. Don't worry, Carmel. I won't say a word. I've made a right piece breakfast of this, haven't I? I was only trying to help you, know, honest I was. What I'm trying to say is that well, if there's anybody to blame, it's not our Terry, you know. It's me. If I hadn't put my big nose in, none of this would have happened. Oh, it was you told him to have Des Barnes done over, was it? You told him to put me in fear of even speaking to another bloke in case something happened to him. Well, who's next then, Vera? Alf Roberts? Percy Sugden? The Milkman? Our Terry's not like that. Your Terry's exactly like that. He isn't. But this is what prison's done to him, isn't it? Locking him up 24 hours a day with villains. Yeah, it's them that's put ideas into his head. Prison's changed nothing, Vera. Your Terry's always been like that. Lash out first, ask questions later. He always has been, he always will be. More fool me for ever thinking it could be different. But you, you're wrong. Marrying you were the best thing that ever happened to him. It gave him responsibility, a wife, a family. Somebody to care about. Oh, Lisa. He'll change, he will. You watch, once he gets out of that place, a free man, into the arms of his wife and his family. Oh, love, you and you and Tom are the best thing that's ever happened to him. To all of us. He's not been in here, have you seen him? There's no, not to talk to him. He's all right, you know. I mean, he's knocking about somewhere. Oh, happen next time he has a bath, I better go over, make sure he comes to no harm. Hey. Hi, lads. Hey, uh, two pints, please, Jack. No, I'm going to get these. Sorry, I can't stretch the champagne like. No, you can get the next one. Champagne? Well, it's what these whiz kid drivers drink now, isn't it? Hey. He's passed. Oh, well done, lad. So yeah. that's what that driving examiner was doing in here this dinner, the one with the bag over his head shaking like a leaf. <laughs> well done, lad. Thank aye, you. Aye, aye. <laughs> Alf? Hey? Same again? Oh, hi, right. Tom. Oh, come on, then. I congratulate you, do you know? Go on, then. Ah, good lad. And, uh, Cheers. whatever bets you're having. Well, if you're twisting my arm, I'll have a G&T with you. Thank you, Steve. Yeah. Not been your day, has it? Yeah. Hey. Fifteen quid up the spout. Don't remind me. Hey, it's something about, about the fiver. Will it, will it be all right weekend, cos I'm a little bit strapped, you see? Forget it. Well, if you insist. Hey, not that I am one to welch on a bet, you know. Well, I'll tell you what, you get this round in and uh, we'll call it quits, yeah? How are you feeling now? Have you thought about what I said about Terry and that? I've thought of nothing else. And you can see it's not all his fault, is it? Yeah, I can. If you want to know, I'm as much to blame as anyone. For letting it go on this long. For turning a blind eye whenever he did out like this in the past. For thinking things might change once we were married. 
once Tom had arrived. For always giving him the benefit of the doubt. Believing in the best of him. Because if I hadn't done that, none of this would have happened, would it? No, you're wrong. I am not wrong, Vera. Terry is what he is. Nothing can change that. In ten years' time, in twenty years' time, he'll still be the same. And I'll be just another prison wife. I mean, that's not going to happen to me. Or Tom. Look, it won't. I swear to God, it oh, won't. Oh, you're dead right, it won't, Vera. Because I'm going. I'm going home to my mum's. Terry can do whatever he wants with his life. It's no concern of mine. Not anymore. 